What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has Ultra Instinct. Summary, a new guardian of the ninja era is born and he is Naruto, the legacy of the legendary Saiyan Goku and like his ancestor, will protect the world from utter destruction. Saiyan Naruto, Powerful Naruto. Chapter 1, Naruto, the legendary Saiyan. Prologue, The Rebirth. A thousands years have passed since the battle with the Shadow Dragons and the Earth's Guardians, the Z Warriors. Ever since that fateful day, the Earth's mightiest protector, Son Goku, fought his last fight and tiredly joined the newly rejuvenated Shenron and left his family behind to rest his tired soul of all the fighting forever joining Shenron taking the Dragon Balls with them so the humans can learn to rely on themselves instead of the magical items. Ever since then Goku's along with Vegeta's family and friends had continued to watch the Earth as its protectors in the steed of their old friend Goku and long later died, but given birth to children to take up the mantle watching the Earth as its protectors. Even Vegeta. The Saiyan Prince, as well as old rival and old friend of Goku's took up the title to keep his friend's legacy alive until his death as well. Since then the blood of the Saiyan race has all, but passed on through the generations growing weaker and weaker, but still compressed and growing stronger through each generation. That's when disaster struck as a terrible apocalypse stuck the earth almost bringing extinction to the human race. They survived though but at the cost of the protectors of the earth's lives when they sacrificed themselves to quell down the apocalypse to a minimum, but it also cost the earth's technology to completely go haywire before forever being lost to the world. As time passed the earth's barren wasteland, soon began to thrive and humans began to appear once more. Time passed and civilizations raised and fell upon the passage of time and war, since then from what humans called upon was heaven's blessing was that a large creature of godly proportions with ten tails came from heaven. This entity was called many things as a guardian protector, savior of earth, but one name stuck with it for thousands of years. The Ju'ubi. The celestial being was a creation made from Kami, since the Kais of old and new had all, but died out and the new gods have taken up the mantle of their old predecessors to watch over the universe, but the earth in particular that watched more sternly, since it was the same world the very warriors that could rival themselves in power grew up and got stronger throughout their lives. This being, the Ju'ubi was created for the sole purpose of protecting humanity and keeping peace of earth. But soon the dark side of humanity turned its ugly head. A group of greedy and power-hungry humans appeared mysteriously and tried to control the entity with an art called, Fuinjutsu only to have it backfire on them and enrage the Juube. That day humans angered the once protector of the earth and soon found out they weren't so powerful without the Juube's help anymore. A man who had been named as the Rikudo Senen appeared before the enraged entity, and tried to calm the beast and negotiate and why it's so angry. But the creature was too far gone to speak to the human. Its anger had slowly been rising over the years of seeing humans and their greed for power, and when those foolish mortals as it called them tried to control him, that drew the line for it and killed all of the humans that got in its way to cleanse the earth. Seeing the beast who enraged O answer, the Rikudo did a sealing only he knew and was said to have been blessed by the Juubi's very own creators to calm the beast. How he did this? He used the power of his eyes and body and sealed the entity within his own body, making him the first of many Jinchuriki to come before him. Years later, the Rikudo was on his deathbed and was already at death's door, so with the last of the incredible man's spirit, he gave his two sons a gift for the future. The youngest he gave his, physical power and body and to the eldest he was given his eyes and spiritual power. After this the Rikudo had named the youngest as his successor, which in turn made the eldest who believed in power could keep the peace of the world turn his back on the youngest and tried to attack him, which in turn led to the two sons rivalry go throughout the ages as with their families passing on the rivalry and legacy of the Rikudo. As the man laid on his deathbed with the last of his strength, he split the Ju'ubi's power into nine parts and sealed each one into a spiritually aware animal of his choosing. One was a sand-colored Tanuki, which in turn became the Aichibi no Shukaku, a purple cat which soon became the Nibi Nekamata. Thirdly was the choosing of a beached sea turtle, which became the Sanbi no Yatsuri. Next was a monkey of legend which in turn became the Nbi. Fifth was a fusion of a horse and a dolphin of the ocean, which the two joined as one becoming the Gobi the five-tailed whale horse. Sixth was the animal of healing as the locals put it, a slug that birthed medically used slugs became the Rakubi six-tailed castropod. Seventh was another fusion of a rhino and a forest beetle, which soon became the Shichibi seven-tailed rhino beetle. Eighth was a fusion of a squid and a ox which turned into the Hachibi eight-tailed ox cephalopod. Finally the last one was his secret daughter, she chose that day to take the last and most strongest of all of the Ju'ubi's power and after much heated debate fused her with the orange fox turning her into the now mythical legend, Kyubi no Kitsune. After the separation of the god like Kennedy and seeing his only child Naoibaiju as he named them, finally died, 
not knowing of the future he brought upon the world. Centuries later, Kanahagakur, today just wasn't Minato Namikaze's day. First off the civilian council was still causing a scene of having more trade relations with other villages to increase their own shops and stores to fill their own pockets while the shinobi council was advising him to make advancements on opposing villages' borders. But he always saw the reluctance of Koharu and Homura so they weren't all there with Donzo Shimura when it came to military relations. Lastly the evils of being the Hokage of a shinobi village. The evil no Hokage or any cage in history has ever been able to face and defeat. The accursed paperwork. But he was joyfully happy also, his wife Kushina was gonna give birth to twins and from what his friend Tsunade said, one was a boy and the other a girl, he couldn't wait to be a father. But something happened, a masked man had come and attacked during Kushina's labor and threatened to kill his two children if he didn't step away from the woman. Doing so started the whole situation he was in now. In front of him was a chained nine-tailed fox growling at him in a bloody rage in its eyes. With his wife Kushina on the ground beside him holding his two children in her arms as they both stared into the crazed eyes of the Kyubi that was once a loving being to Kushina. Damn you Madara, damn you to hell. Kushina yelled as she was told of what the man did and only knew of one person to control the Kyubi in such a way. Minato looked very desperate and broken, he had tried everything to quell Kyubi, but nothing had worked that is until he remembered a particular ceiling. Looking at his children he looked at his daughter, the sleeping babe had the same hair as Kushina only with a few streaks of blonde but blue eyes like his own. Looking at his son, he felt a rush of fatherly pride, the boy had spiky yellow hair like his own, but strangely it seemed to glow at times. His eyes, he, remembered them even now, they were his mother's eyes, but at the same time flashed a sea green before disappearing. He remembered the birth of the two and had gave his son the name Naruto which he meant as Maelstrom, and Kushina named their daughter Mito, whom he named after Tsunade's grandmother. His son was born before her a minute early so Naruto was the older brother of Mito, he smiled seeing his family and children, but his face turned stony remembering what he had to do. With that he got the sobbing Kushina's attention and told him of his plan. Only they nor Kyubi never knew of another entity watching the scene with interest. Realm of Shenrong Watching the scene was a giant green dragon with two glowing red eyes. He watched on with what could be seen as a smile. Ever since the birth of the planet, he had watched on as the earth continued without the dragon balls and how it grew and fell. When the apocalypse fell upon the world, everything and seen how to new gods as they call themselves these days created Ju'ubi, a being he would say had the power to rival a Super Saiyan at best. He snorted in amusement, that thing did its job protecting the earth for a while until those humans tried to control it, something the dragon found amusing since seeing the Ju'ubi crush them like ants and seeing them scream and run in fear was to him an amusing show. That's when he narrowed his eyes, seeing the scene before him and had to think of an idea of what to do because it was quite obvious the male was gonna use something to deal with the QB. But when he looked at the boy the man was staring at, his eyes widened at epic proportions before he started to chuckle before outright laughing. Ha ha ha! Who would have thought their blood was still alive on earth? And in such a condensed matter, if a slight tap into the boy's blood, I can awaken it. He mused thinking of what he could do. That's when he thought of something even though he would bring out his presence once more into the world and give out his location to the other celestial beings it wouldn't matter for if his plan worked there would be a new and stronger guardian for the earth than all the previous combined. Searching within himself he felt it, the presence was still there, but he could feel the Saiyan's presence and smirked. I think it's time, for a rebirth, of a Saiyan and a guardian. He said before his form started to glow gold before disappearing in a flash of light. Back with Minato. I I see. You're gonna seal the QB into Naruto, but what about Konoha they will see him as a monster you should know this. Kushina said, trying to change Minato's idea, but it was unfortunately impossible the man wouldn't budge. I know this but I can at least try. Besides he will have you and Mito in his life. He said trying to reassure her, but even in the deepest reaches of his heart he knew the life Naruto would lead if he did this and it was heart-wrenching to know he would be the one to place the burden on his newly born son. The crying redhead just hung her head low unable to say anything else. Her newly born son was gonna become the next Jinchuriki of the QB, she knew the horrors of being one and it pained her to know she couldn't stop it in her horrible state. As he was about to reach for Naruto, Minato felt a presence overbearing and everything he ever felt before even QB's bloodlust and killing intent was dwarfed by this feeling of power. Looking around he saw everything stopped like time slowed down to a crawl, looking back at Kushina he saw that she was frozen as well but somehow his son was still sleeping like normal. That's when he heard lightning and snapping his head up he saw something that would make the toughest of Hokage's scream like little girls. Above him in the black sky was a green giant dragon, with red glowing eyes and its jaws were wide in a grin, revealing its giant razor-sharp teeth. 
In short the thing made the QB look like a newborn kid. Minato broke out in a cold sweat when the dragon's head started to come closer to him and his family before finally stopping a foot away from him. Shenrong found it quite amusing to see the blonde man nervous, but couldn't blame him seeing something of his stature was sure to scare even the toughest of any being. The gods themselves knew not to anger him unless they wanted to face the wrath of a dragon. Looking at Minato he turned his gaze toward Kushina before resting his eyes upon the blonde babe, Naruto he heard his name was. Closing in he looked down at the sleeping babe and before Minato's shocked eyes a golden orb of light softly floated out of the dragon and into Naruto, and before he could do anything there was a flash of light erupting from Naruto's form until it became clear again. Opening his eyes, Minato saw where his blonde son slept was a spiky black-haired baby with larger than normal arms for a babe. He saw the black-haired boy's eyes open slightly to see him and the dragon, right then Minato saw the change in his son. He still had his father's eyes but were deep blue in color. Looking back at the dragon, what did you just do to my son? Getting a chuckle from the dragon making the area shake and him stumble a bit. Mortal, I have just did a little something that will save this world, and bring about a new guardian for the entire earth, your son. Naruto as you call him is in reality the reincarnation of a being far stronger than any human or by Juo. Hell this being was able to tear the world asunder if he wanted to, but he protected like and cherished it throughout his whole time. And now your son will be reborn as this man, for this world needs a Saiyan once more to protect it from the future dangers that are to come. Shenrong explained, getting a shocked look from Minato, looking back at his son who was curiously looking around as a brown monkey tail twitched a few times from behind him making Minato gape. Looking back he saw the dragon chuckling, I know what's with the tail right? Well let's just say this being wasn't exactly human, but had the heart of one. Now about your little QB problem I can't have you sealing it into this child, so I suggest you seal it into your daughter. Don't worry nothing will happen to her, that I can promise you. He explained. Minato just stood there for a few minutes to reassess the situation before he lowered his head, in defeat no matter how much he thought nothing else would work and he most definitely wouldn't disagree with a dragon this size. So with a heavy heart he began to do the seals for the Shikifujin, as Shenrong started to glow a golden light. Finishing the hand seals he asked one last thing, I'm sorry, Naruto, Mito, Kushina, I love you all before slamming his hands on the ground and shouted Shikifun. With the ceiling announced Shenrong's body rose before shooting into Naruto once more, good thing to because then a figure floated from behind Minato with a twisted grin on its face. It was the Shinigami, entity of death and apprentice of King Yama. Looking around the Shinigami's face turned into a frown before it settled upon the chained down by Juu and broken family before it. Though when its eyes landed upon Naruto's tail form its eyes widened a bit before its grin got even wider. Though it looked down to see the one who summoned him talking with the woman, Minato, what happened to our son? He's, he's, changed. She yelled frantically worrying over what happened to Naruto. Minato just chuckled a bit even in such a situation Kushina was always oblivious to what was going on. Let's just say, Naruto is gonna be someone very important to the world and change has appeared since, well, Naruto is basically the reincarnation of someone very important and let's leave it at that. He 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 Kushina wasn't amused if the glare at him was anything. Minato I swear if what you're saying is some kind of joke, I will do Shinigami's job for it and kill you, she said darkly making him sweat a bit before they both turned to see something very adorable in both their eyes. Mito was giggling while petting the monkey tail that twitched, it slowly somehow reacting to her touch touches her baby face and caressed her face making her burst into giggles once more and smiled at the sight until they were interrupted by the situation at hand. Looking up. They saw the Shinigami with an annoyed look on its face. If you are done mortal, I'd like to get this done with, I have other things to do, you know torture other souls and whatnot. The entity of death gaining sweat drops from both parents. With that Minato gently took hold of Mito while Kushina held Naruto. Seeing what Minato was about to do Kushina just felt so bad about not knowing how to do this another way, and now one of her children had to pay the price for it. She felt awful and disgusted with herself at that moment. But looking down she saw Naruto's blue eyes staring at her own purple ones with curiosity before he reached up placed both hands on her cheeks and smiled. This seemed to lighten her mood a bit even if he changed, a lot he was still Naruto, so grasping his little hands she held them gently as she kissed his forehead. Holding him tightly she made a silent vow to always protect her children from any and all enemies that would try to hurt them. Hearing the sound of a body hitting the floor she slowly looked up to see the QB gone the Shinigami spirit gone as well, with Minato's dead body on the ground with his arms wrapped around Mito's crying form, quickly getting up she got to the little red head and slowly placed the crying baby in her other arm before looking down at Minato's body and smiled sadly, don't worry Minato they will be safe I promise. She assured her late husband, 
not knowing of the painful future that's gonna come for them. Three days later, it's been three days since the attack of QB and the village of Kanahaga Kaur. The civilian and shinobi alike were all mourning for their loss against the QB, but most were mourning for their late Hokage the Yondaime who sacrificed his life to defeat the demon as they were all told. Only the higher-ups in the shinobi rank truly knew what happened and yet even they wouldn't mention anything. Meanwhile at the Sarutobi clan house, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the Kami no Shinobi, student of the Shouen Daime, sensei of the legendary Sanin, and predecessor of the Yondaime was rubbing his temples in frustration. The council was now on his back trying to have the current Jinchuriki Mito killed since he did announce to the council of what happened. Now he was getting pissed real fast of how the whole council, civilians and elders, were acting. That's when he remembered Kushina and the two children and smiled softly at the thought of them. The two little babes were almost inseparable and they slept in the same crib because if they were separated, Naruto and Mito both would cry until they were put back together with each other. Hal Naruto's wail was strong enough to crack a damn window and it seemed to always get louder with each passing hour and even cause several of the Anbu who were watching him, eardrums to bleed, literally, and almost disrupt the sound barrier seal. Though that didn't stop his iron will of protecting the three from the council and told Kushina they were welcome to live within his clan home since the Namikaze compound was all but in ruins during the attack. Remembering the two smiling faces of the two babes as well as the happy form of Kushina with them made the fire in his eyes burn brightly, a fire he had possessed when he was in his prime and then grew into a cold fury. He rose up and snapped his fingers, causing two masked Anbu awaiting their leader's orders. Rat, Bor gather up the council, it is time they learned just who it was that ruled Konoha. He said in an authoritative and murderous tone, that made the two Anbu inwardly flinch, but smile in satisfaction since the true Sondaime. The man who survived three of the great wars, mastered over a thousand jutsu, and the very man who in his prime was the strongest of the other elemental cages in their prime, was coming back. With a quick high, the two disappeared in a shushin. With that, Sarutobi turned around and headed to the Namikaze's room to check up on them. While walking he mildly remembered something about Naruto that made him curious which was the monkey tail attached to his backside and his hair was as black as night and still spiked but not like his father's more like spiked in all directions. He found it amusing of how Naruto looked similar to that of a newborn monkey he'd seen when he visited Monkey King Enma for the first time. Getting to the door, he knocked a few times getting an enter. When walking in he saw something very adorable in his eyes. In front of him was Kushina holding Mito as she played with the taller, but still small baby Naruto. The little redhead was playing with Naruto's tail like it was her favorite pastime in the whole world. Naruto himself looked constipated about something but soon started to cry a bit when Natsume gripped his tail tighter, seeing the imminent danger of one of Naruto's dangerous shouts of hell, he flashed to the little babes and grabbed Mito's hand softly and pulled it away from the now ticking time bomb that was Naruto. Kushina, I'm about to head for another council meeting and after this we will explain on how you wanted to train these two for I know how much you want them to get stronger to protect themselves so after this we will discuss on how you want to train them, alright? He said getting a happy nod from the woman. Thank you Oji-san and these two would probably say the same thing, but I think they're a little busy. She said with a giggle at the end. He smiled at the family of three and headed out to go show the council who truly controls Konoha and got them under control he did, after killing several civilian and beating Donzo literally into the ground and having him sent to the hospital, he reminded those of the council who truly ruled Konoha with an iron fist. After this with the help of his two other teammates Koharu and Homura, he explained to the clan heads of what truly happened and to say some were shocked was like saying Jiraiya had a healthy relationship with women. Biggest understatement of the year is Kushina's best friends Tsume and Mikoto generally asked an audience with her and the two children which he accepted, but no others since even for a Hokage didn't trust those of the Konoha clans that much. Seven years later, after that day Hiruzen, with the help of Kushina helped train the two little children to be shinobi so they could defend themselves and the two children took to training like a fish in water especially Naruto for some reason he trained much more than any child his age should. He always trained day in and day out not stopping till he drops and no one was able to understand. Naruto simply said that it was something calling him to never stop training, always go forth and never stop. What he found very interesting in the shinobi arts was ninjutsu and fuinjutsu, but the one he took to most was surprisingly taijutsu. He had found the art exhilarating to him since you could fight close up with your opponent and not from long or mid range. Since he didn't find any of the current art suitable for him so when Sarutobi realized this he decided to teach Naruto a style he learned from the Monkey King Enma called the Saruken, Monkey Fist, which to his surprise Naruto was able to easily learn the basics. His grandfather figure who is known to him as Oji-san or Gigi as he and his sister Mito likes to call him had one time introduced them both to any kind of weapon they would use and to Mito she chose to wield a katana like her mother, 
as did Naruto but for some reason he felt like there was another weapon that would ALS suit him aside from a sword. That's when he at one time grasped a bow staff and at that moment just knew he had to learn how to use one aside from a blade. It was a good thing Hiruzen was a master bojutsu user and at the day started to teach Naruto the ways of the bojutsu while Kushina taught her daughter and him the ways of using a katana. Speaking of Mito. For a seven-year-old the girl she was quite the hothead just like her mother since anything that pissed her off would make any male in the vicinity flinch holding their groins at a phantom pain as they still remembered that one man that tried to grope Kushina and that same man ended up getting a good beating from both Mito and Naruto. But Mito finished it off by throwing a kunai right in the center of the man's groin destroying any way of him having children. But if there was one thing she loved most was her big brother despite him only being a minute older than her, he stood by her when she needed it. She was very protective of him. But those that tried to hurt her would end up having a beating of their life from the nickname Sarugaki of Konoha because of his monkey tail swinging around his backside. She had grew up by his side for seven years and always knew something about him was different than her or her mother, or their father for that matter, but she never dwelled on it much and just lived happily by her most loved person besides her Ka-san. She too had trained even though it was nowhere near as much as Naruto, but a good amount for one her age and was already at the beginning stages of chakra control exercises and in the steps of Ninken Gen Fu and Jutsu. Kushina tried teaching Naruto chakra control exercises, but for some reason he just had too much energy to try and control it. Basically she was on an early start of becoming a shinobi while her Nissan was training to become something, different. They both physically grew up like the seven-year-olds they were, but somehow Naruto's body was starting to turn more lean and muscular with each passing month of what he called warm-up exercises which included him pulling a full-grown Hinokuni tree around Konoha in seven laps before climbing the Hokage monument with one arm tied together with two giant boulders weighing him down. They checked out why he was able to do such things, but all they found was that Naruto had the strength and durability no human should have while his stamina was off the charts going past even his mother's or Mito's own level. His muscles weren't too buff for a child his age, but they were quite seeable and at times when Mito doesn't think people were watching she would watch how Naruto trained she didn't know why, but just watching him made her feel weird she never told anyone though and kept it to herself. Over the last seven years when they grew up they had met their Kachan's best friends who were the Inuzuka matriarch Tsume Inuzuka and the Uchiha clan's head's wife Mika Uchiha. When the two women met the two little tykes they all but glomped the poor children, or in Naruto's case tortured when they found out about his tale. Ever since then he's been named their pet with the nickname Monkey-kun. Kushina and Natsume never let him live it down either, always bugging him about it. It was the same when they met their dad's two students Kakashi Hitake and Rin Kazama. Mito and Naruto would call Kakashi either Uroinu or Uroni since Kushina told them about how Kakashi read the books their father's old student wrote in public, much to the man's embarrassment. Rin on the other adored them both especially Naruto and his tail. It turned worse when she introduced the black-haired boy to Kurenai Yuhi, Anko Midarashi, Yuga Uzuki, and the young Chunin Hana Inuzuka due to the fact that they would always glomps the poor kid due to the fact that they were attracted to his tail. Right now we find a spiky black-haired boy who wore black shinobi sandals with black cargo pants. He had around his waist a white sash with a black shirt over his chest and strapped to his back was a black pole with gold tips at the end of it that from normal standards was just that a normal black pole, but to those that knew what it truly did, they would know it was a bow staff with a seal making it able to expand and lengthen and also wielded a ninjato that Kakashi gave him. The boy's face still had a little baby fat, but was starting to lose it due to the training he was going through. The boy's eyes were now deep blue and had black eyebrows as well and sticking out from his upper lip were two small canines. He had a small tired smile on his face since he was out panting in the forest of Kanahaga Kaur. Around him were craters and broken trees from his latest training exercise. Wiping the sweat from his brow he inhaled before exhaling. Standing up he heard something from within the woods thanks to his sensitive hearing and looked behind him and saw in the woods a mob of what looked like armed civilians with masked men mixed in with the kanji for, knee, on their blank masks. Narrowing his eyes he took a step back and spoke, What's up guys? Need something? Already knowing the answer. Shut up freak. Today you die and no one is here to help you or save you this time, so get ready to die. Said a civilian. While the others cheered and the root ninja stood by watching for any shinobi to come by the area. I see, and I suppose you think I won't fight back then? He said getting a arrogant smirk from dumbass number one. Of course the freak has to learn from its betters who's in charge around here so stay down and let your masters whip you like the obedient dog you are. Getting a roar of approval from the crowd. Naruto's eyes turned dark and dangerous, eyes that shouldn't be on a seven year old boy like him and spoke while getting into stance, like hell I will, now come get me you pathetic bastards. 
he said getting angry yells from the civilians and with that they charged in intent to kill the monkey demon. Too bad they never stood a chance against a trained child in the arts of a shinobi. Quickly pulling out his bow staff he started dancing around the civilians knocking them out with a hit by the back of their heads or punches to the stomach. With his incredible strength his punches at full blast could punch a hole through the toughest of metal even steel. So to a civilian and him lowering the punches to a minimum they felt like they got tackled by a bull. Few minutes later Naruto found himself surrounded by groaning or unconscious civilians, but then a second later he found the Rudonbu surrounding him on all sides. Letting out an irritated sigh, he scratched his head in frustration. There was just no way he could fight these guys he knew of the Anbu, but these guys were from what Gigi said mindless drones that wouldn't stop till their objectives are accomplished and him still a Janon leveled shinobi who wasn't nowhere near the level to fight them. Feeling a little desperate he jumped off into the woods with the root following. A few minutes later Mito came running into the area with a happy expression on her face to see her niece and only to see groaning and beat up civilians, she was getting worried until she found something that made her heart stop. Naruto's bow staff and Ninjato were lying on the ground near his belongings the only thing that was missing the picture they took together with Kasan. She started to tear up fearing the worst and grabbed his staff and pack, I gotta find Kasan and Gigi, Nisan may be in danger. She said jumping off into the woods, hurry kid I sense something wrong here, hurry. QB told her container, over the last few years the two had finally met after one stressful training day and immediately bonded seeing as the big bad QB wasn't as evil as people spoke of. Only Kushina and Naruto knew of QB speaking with Mito and didn't really care all that much since Mito was still family to them hell Naruto was excited and asked if QB could see them or other random questions which made the three females giggle at how cute he was when he was like that. Nodding her head in agreement the little girl sped off trying to find her Kasan as fast as she could. Too bad she wouldn't get them in time. With Naruto, the black haired boy had a a few cuts all over his body and had a few kunai and shuriken lodged in his small frame. Following him were four Rudonbu that were on his tail, he thought about where he was going, but didn't care as long as he could get away from these guys before they could kill him. Looking ahead he saw the forest sending so with a mighty jump he shot off ahead of the Anbu and out of the forest, only to come upon a cliff separating him from going any further looking around he remembered the place being called the Valley of the End something he read in a textbook once. Ironic he would come here in his situation. Hearing a thunderous sound he looked up to see storm clouds rolling in, hearing multiple thuds he looked over his shoulder to see the four Rudonbu behind him with their ninjato drawn. You have nowhere to go now demon, just surrender and Donzo Sama can finally have his weapon. Said drone number one in an emotionless tone. Naruto worked an eyebrow. Donzo? He shook his head and looked at the situation he was in, looking at the root before slowly looking down of the cliff he saw the raging river from the brewing up storm. Nervously sweating he had two choices to go with, even for a seven year old he could tell when he's near a life or death situation and now he needed to find a way to escape. Looking over the cliff once more in the slowly advancing route, Naruto closed his eyes slowly channeling his breathing to calm himself, putting his hand into his pocket he pulled out a picture he cherished more than anyone would know. It was a picture of the two most important people in his life. Kushina and Mito with him holding Natsume on his shoulders and Kushina kneeling beside them with a smile on her face with her cheek on his own. He saw Mito's victory sign of what she said that day, on top of the world. With a peace sign. Smiling sadly, he remembered his problem and placed the picture back into his pocket. Sorry, Kachan, Mito-chan. Looks like I won't be able to see you two again. With tears falling from his eyes he steeled his seven-year-old resolve and turned toward the cliff ignoring the shout of the Anbu for him to stop he ran as fast as he could and with a strike of lightning he jumped off the cliff and fell into the raging river below. The root all rushed at the cliff only to curse seeing their objective commit suicide. The four shushed back to Konoha to relay their failure on the capture of Naruto to their master who won't be pleased. With Naruto, the monkey-tailed boy was trying to swim up from the river to get air, but he just kept getting pulled back down by the currents and without seeing it. His head hit a rock making his eyes go blurry and him succumbing to unconsciousness. Sarutobi clan house. As Hiruzen was finishing up on his last batch of paperwork on political issues with Kumo and Kushina was planning for her children's next training plan, they heard a loud bang and rushed off to see what the commotion was. Imagine their surprise to see a panting Mito with Naruto's pack and bow staff. Seeing the staff Hershen and Kushina got worried and even worse when they saw the red-headed child crying. Rushing to her child Kushina tried to calm her down only to freeze from a few jumbled words Natsume kept mumbling as she cried into her Kasan's chest. She heard a few things ranging from stupid Baka villagers and hurting Nisan, but the most fearful one was I can't find him, I can't find Naru Nisan. Getting a gasp from both Hiruzen and Kushina, a look of fury formed into his eyes and the old man suddenly leapt out the window and yelled, Anbu! I want five search teams to look for Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Look all over high no Kuni borders. 
I want him found hurry. He said getting nods from them all, since Haruzin son Arto as a grandson as Mito was seen as a granddaughter. So to hear one of his surrogate family members was missing had him angry and infuriated with those that tried to attack him one more. He swore when he got a hold of the idiot villagers that attacked his grandson in all but blood, he would make them wish that that the god of death had devoured their souls. Kushina though was trembling as his shaky hands were over her face while her eyes were wide in horror. Her only son, the one that at times reminded her of Minato so much, and was what brought joy to her and Mito was missing. First Minato, now Naruto. She grabbed Mito and pulled her into a hug trying to hold back her tears. She felt Mito stiffen before wailing into her shoulder. She felt horrible now. All she had focused on was their training and now not watching out for her children one of them disappeared off Kami knows where. She finally let the tears fall and joined Mito as they cried for their lost family. It made it all the worse for Mito since being almost a newborn at the same time as Naruto she had a sort of link to him whether it was spiritual or physical she knew of when he was in trouble. And right then as she cried in her Kosan's arms she felt a disturbance within her when her heart ached for her Nissan. That's when she finally got to the worst conclusion her seven-year-old mind could comprehend. I have felt it. NN Nissan, is gone, Hess, gone, Hess gone. She yelled, shocking the sobbing Kushina even more before she finally broke down with her Musume. They stayed there in each other's arms crying for their supposed dead Sochi slash Nissan. Naruto's mindscape, groaning, Naruto was rubbing his head in phantom pain while trying to open his eyes. When he did so all he saw is a blue sky and the glowing sun. Leaning up a bit he looked around himself to see grassy fields and mountains as far as the eye end of the shinobi eye could see. He looked around and saw a three-story house from what looked like it and another small cabin beside it. Somehow he felt like he knew this place, but didn't know from where. Hey there! The cheerful voice made the Namikaze jump back in surprise and turned around quickly only to see something quite shocking. Before him was two figures the first one got his attention immediately, it was a giant dragon. On epic proportions, its body was in the sky itself appearing in and out of the sky, the whole length of the body was full of green scales and spikes running down its back. Looking at its face he saw two giant glowing red eyes staring into his own with what seemed curiosity. After staring at the dragon before him in shock he turned his gaze at the second person standing beside the dragon. And strangely the person was a man. The his hair was a bit spikier in other directions while his skin was a dark tan, showing the man was outside quite a lot. He also noticed the muscles on him and realized that he trained extremely. That's when shockingly enough he saw the monkey tail twitching behind the kid. Seeing the guy wearing a blue gi t-shirt and white belt with sand yellow martial arts pants and Japanese type martial arts shoes, Naruto was seeing the striking similarities he had with this guy minus the hairstyle and for some reason felt an odd yet similar connection with this man, like he has known him his entire life. Shenrong sensing Naruto's confusion spoke up. Boy, we have something to talk about. He got a strained nod from the seven-year-old Naruto and an amused chuckle from the tanned man. With that Shenrong introduced himself as the dragon of the Dragon Balls and Watcher of the Universe, telling Naruto the true story of how old the Earth truly was, explaining of the humans that lived years and years before the Shinobi era started. He also told him of what the Dragon Balls were, what they were created for, and their true purpose. Despite being only seven years old, he completely agreed with the celestial being. Humans were sinful beings but had to say they had the bright side as well to enjoy their lives to the fullest. It's true humans are beings capable of both evil and good, but without the other there would be no balance, just like yin and yang. So I say taking the dragon balls away from them was the first step to the true evolutionary chain for them. He said getting a small smile from the man beside the dragon and a grin from Shenrong. You're very intelligent for someone your age, and yes I agree with you. That is why there needs to be a protector to keep this balance from going out of control. Now there is something else I have called you here for. You're probably wondering where we are and it's simple, this is your mindscape, your inner world and this person beside me is basically your. Though the dragon never got to finish when the dark skinned man jumped from where he was and flashed in front of Naruto shocking him with his speed and held out his hand. Hiya. My name's Son Goku and it's finally nice to meet you, Naruto Uzumaki. He finished with a big grin and hand held out. Blinking a few times, Naruto smirks before grasping the older man's hand with his own. Nice to meet you Goku. So Shenrong-sama care to explain what's going on? He said only to get a bonk on the head from Goku making Naruto blink, rubbing his head before looking at the grinning Saiyan. Nah, I'll start explaining this time because if he did it would take hours or even days since the old dragon would just explain every little detail. Goku remarked, earning a growl from said dragon. Now Naruto, I'll cut to the chase. You know my name, but I may look like I'm in my prime to you. 
but in reality I'm older than the new gods as they call themselves, he said and then scratching the back of his sheepishly while Naruto just stood there gaping. To think that before him was a man who could be the same age as Kakashi but was in reality an older being than Kami and the other gods? He tried his best to not faint and just dumbly nodded, seeing he still had his attention Goku continued. Now you are mostly wondering why we look so alike, well to put it bluntly. You're my reincarnation ever since Mr. Big and Green here saw the Saiyan blood that had condensed over the years finally erupt in you transforming you into a full Saiyan like myself. He said getting a confused look from Naruto. Seeing this Goku sighed and placed his hand on Naruto's forehead, I don't feel like explaining to you about Saiyan so I'll transplant it into your mind the knowledge of what they were. Before Naruto could retort a glowing aura came from Goku and flowed into Naruto making his own form glow the same. That's when a sudden rush of information rammed into his mind and everything about the Scions was practically programmed in his mind, everything even about the truffles and the war between them and the Saiyans, the legend of the Super Saiyan, and finally how the race was all, but killed by an alien called Frieza. He grit his teeth in anger as he saw people like him murdered, but smiled softly since they died fighting at least. That's when he closed his eyes and thought now I know where I got my love of fighting and competition from. I see you understand what the Saiyans were, they were once a powerful race, the strongest in the universe, but they were all killed including my own blood father Bardock by that madman Frieza, good thing Trunks finished him off. Which made Naruto calm down a bit. Looking up at the boy in front of him, he reminisced of what he heard and had to smile. I always knew I was different I just didn't know how much, but now that I know the truth, it's finally good to meet a fellow Saiyan. Which in turn got grinned from Goku. Yeah, but we have things to discuss you see Naruto since we are to be reunited we have to become one. But in order to do this you must reach the requirements both mentally and physically and since you're currently at such a young age we still have a few years for that to happen. He explained which confused Naruto. Then what do we do then? I don't think I should just wait around doing nothing. Naruto stated and got a nod from Goku, that's right and since you're out of Konoha we can take this opportunity to fix this little problem and that is with an old teaching method one of my mentors taught me. Goku said with a fond smile, raising an eyebrow, Naruto got curious. Oh and what would that be? That made Goku turn happy all of a sudden. It will be you traveling all across the elemental countries honing your skills as I did in Shenrong and I here will teach you how to use your abilities correctly and how different they are from what humans nowadays call chakra. During this I will be teaching you of what I learned at your age, that includes every style I've learned and seen and the ways to control your energy or ki as it was called by the users of this energy. First off will be what Master Roshi taught me and that is called the Turtle Hermit way of training and martial arts. Naruto's ears perked up at the word martial arts and Goku saw his reaction and smiled. Martial arts is a way of fighting in close combat or as the shinobi call it taijutsu, but martial arts is more of a basic way of fighting than what the shinobi do. Now first off before we do this, Shenrong here is gonna have to fully awaken your Saiyan blood since only half of it has been awoken, and let me tell you it's gonna hurt, a lot. He warned the young Saiyan, I don't care as long as I can get stronger to fight stronger opponents and protect those important to me, I'll go through anything done to me. Naruto said with his eyes filled with the same determination Goku had when he is a child. Smiling at his longtime descendant he pat his shoulder, good, because I have a feeling trouble is gonna blow its way toward you and you have to be ready for it. Now Shenrong, do it, he said while Naruto nodded with him showing he was ready. Seeing the Shenrong's eyes glowed red and before Naruto knew it he was on the ground as blue lightning covered his body as a blue aura came off him in waves. Seeing this Goku was a bit surprised, whoa he's got more ki, fighting power or latent energy, than I did at his age, and even then I didn't find out about it till later on. But it would seem he was already unintentionally trying to control his power for a while now, incredible. But Goku's face then started to sport a large grin. He'll be the perfect apprentice. Though Goku was cut short of his musings and his eyes widened when he saw Naruto's form start to glow a gold color. Before he and Shenrong knew it, they had to close their eyes from the sudden light erupting within the mindscape. But that didn't stop the sudden skyrocket of Naruto's power rising and the elemental countries alerting many and even the ground itself was trembling from the raw power he was emitting. In Konoha, the two crying Uzumaki suddenly along with the tired yet furious sun Daime felt the strange yet foreign energy along with the tremble that shook the very foundations of Konoha itself. But Kushina and Mito felt the power and knew immediately that is felt closely related to Naruto, but it was much stronger, yet far more primal. Naruni kun, I sense him, Kachan, I sense him, he's out there somewhere, Naruni kun is out there. Mito said happily, while Kushina was sporting a full blown megawatt grin on her face. Her son was alive, and was out there somewhere, but the energy she felt, it was definitely that of what Naruto's felt like, 
but it was much more potent and primal and it honestly sent chills down her spine for some reason. She wondered when she would see Naruto again as did the cheerful Mito. With Goku and Shenron the two stood in shock at what they were seeing. Before them was a changed Naruto. They honestly didn't know how much Naruto would change when he had his other half of his Saiyan blood awakened. But now seeing the results they couldn't but agree it was a good thing. For in front of them stood Naruto, who stood from his normal height of 3 feet 6 inches to a 4 feet 0 inches. His hair was just like Goku's in every way except for it being spikier. His face was the same, but his eyes held a primal urge to fight a good fight and find strong opponents. His muscles were now much more seen since his sudden growth spurt changed his body slightly. His latest attire from the shinobi all black he wore was all, but in torn rags from the sudden transformation and Naruto's monkey tail waved wildly behind him. Goku was more focused on Naruto's energy signature and it was off the charts. Even in his age, he was nowhere near this kind of level, yet the feeling Naruto's aura gave off was a very primal, a feeling only Saiyans would have since he gained the same feeling as he did when he encountered Vegeta, but his rival had the feeling in spades since it was the Saiyan pride and thirst for battle. He would need to change that in Naruto as he didn't want to deal with a second Vegeta, Oh the chaos that would happen if it did. Looking into his new apprentice's eyes he smiled patting him on the shoulder. Well I guess we have a lot of work to do huh? He asked, getting a small grin from Naruto. That we do Goku sensei, that we do. But that's when Naruto's eyes widened comically making Goku wonder what was wrong until he realized that he was fearful of his mother and sister who have been known to have short tempers and violent streaks. Oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit. Kushina-chan and Mito-chan are gonna kill me when I don't come back. Oh Kami the horror. He said in a fearful tone, which Goku suddenly sympathized with him as he still felt the phantom pains of Shishi's frying pan attacks. Ouch, I feel your pain Naruto as my wife was the same. But don't fret we can send a telepathical link to them of what you're doing then we must really get started on your training. Nodding in acceptance, he followed Goku's instructions and placed his hand on Goku's head, while the old Saiyan reached out with his senses until he found the two still in the Sarutobi clan home, alerting Naruto of this and the newly reborn Saiyan began to speak within mentally. Hello. Is this thing on? Hello? Kushina and Mito's ears perked up at the sound they were hearing and looked around only to see no one. Kushina Kachan. Mito chan, can you both hear me? Knowing the voice, the two redheads' eyes bogged out and jumped up in fright as they heard Naruto's voice, looking around frantically. Ah. Ghost. Naruto ni slash Sochi kun's spirit is talking to us. They both shouted, trying to not hear the voice. Naruto and Goku both gained huge sweat drops on the back of their heads and chuckled, before Naruto spoke once more. Ah, uh, Kushina Kachan? Mito chan, it's me, Naruto. Their eyes widened even further and looked up only to see no one. Getting frustrated, they both yelled, If you're really our Naruto ni slash Sochi kun, there, where the hell are you? They both yelled in unison. Naruto suddenly gulped nervously while Goku sang a silent prayer to his descendant for a good future. And to help him avoid the wrath of two female redheads. Well, I'm not totally sure myself, but I want to tell you two something. This latest attack on my person has opened my eyes. Not only am I not safe in Konohai at the moment I'm also risking both of your safety with the shinobi and civilian alike trying to kill me. They wanted to protest but then he spoke up once again. Now I know what you're thinking Mito-chan and stop right now. I know they think I'm some monster and I'm fine with that let them think what they want to. They'll just regret it later on. Besides I don't like to see you cry or you either Kushina Kachan. Too bad Naruto didn't see the blushes upon both the females faces as he said his words. But Goku didn't since he's lived for so long he finally understands a little bit more of the females and had to grin. Naruto had a way with words with women. Kushina and Mito just sat there rethinking what Naruto just said and kept playing it over and over in their minds as heat rushed to both of their faces. Why does Sochi-kun's voice sound, deeper, and the way he said those things? And when did I start calling him Sochi-kun? What happened to just plain Sochi? A flustered Kushina was wondering as her hands were on her face, trying to hide her growing blush. He's mine son for Kami's sake and I shouldn't be thinking about such things about the one you brought into this world. Mito on the other hand was more, open? Hironi Isan was acting much differently than before, but the way he spoke made that strange feeling in her grow much more and suddenly found a strange heat coming upon her face, that's when she heard Kyuubi speak. Damn, Narukun sure knows how to speak with a lady, has got you and Kushina-chan blushing hell even myself. Kyuubi muttered the last part to herself only. Kyu-chan? When did you start calling Nisan Narukun? The redhead asked mentally with a cute yet confused expression on her face, but Kyuubi just blushed trying to hide her embarrassment. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'll tell you later. Kyuubi said quickly before cutting off mental connection leaving behind a confused Mito. That's when they both realized his final words, 
and their eyes grew as wide as dinner plates. So Chikun, don't tell me you're fearing the worst, Naruto not coming back to protect Natsume and herself from Konoha's villagers. Hearing this Naruto sighed, but spoke honestly. Yes that was my first option of not returning, but I've been persuaded to do something different. I'm gonna travel the elemental countries and try to hone my skills and get stronger. That way when I come back I'll be able to protect not only myself, but my family as well, until then we won't hear from each other for a long time. He answered solemnly. Hearing this, the two, three counting QB, felt their hearts wrench and asking the question on their minds Kushina asked, H how long, will you be gone? She asked dreading the answer. There was a long pause making them feel uneasy. Ahem well, it would be around the time Mito-chan graduates from the academy too when our generation of Chunin exams begin, I'm not totally sure. But don't worry I'll be fine I just want you two to be safe and Mito-chan to train as well to get stronger before we meet again, and you Kushina Ka-chan, I want you to start training once more, I'd like to fight the woman that made Iwa, Kumo, and Kiri piss themselves in fear whenever you draw your sword. He said nervously getting shocked looks from the two while QB was surprised as well. You, you'll be gone for years so Chi-kun, but if that is truly your decision. She said sadly. It is Kushina Ka-chan. I realize I'm not normal like the others the monkey tail proves this, so I'd like to fully understand just what I am, but could you tell Sarjiji, Mikado-san, Tsume-san, Tsukina-chan, Fem, Sok, Hitomi-chan, Fem, Itachi, Hanachan, Inuni-san, and the others that I will be back so let them not worry of where I am and let them continue on with their lives can you do this for me? Wiping the tears from her face she smiled, of course Sochi-kun just hurry up with your training and come back to us. She said getting a chuckle from him. Hey you got it, Kushina Kachan. Naruto ni kun? Said the silent voice of Mito, which Naruto noted was too silent for Mito. Worried he answered her, yes, Mito-chan is something wrong? Biting her lower lip she started to shake before speaking, please come back home quickly, I understand you need to train like I do but, but I'll miss you, Kachan will miss you she said as tears started to form in her blue eyes. Naruto flinched at her words, but steeled his resolve. I know this and I'll come back as quick as I can, I promise. I mean I still owe you that day out don't I? He said amusingly getting a giggle from her as well as Kushina. The day outs as they are called was practically Mito dragging Naruto everywhere with her despite whatever it may be. She called it bonding with Oni Isan, but he mentally calls it torture. A few seconds of comfortable silence reigned and before Naruto spoke once more, um I gotta go guys, not sure if I have Gigi Zanbu on my tail or what, but I gotta get going, okay? Bye. Snapping their heads to his voice they spoke in unison, not knowing how long it would be before they saw Naruto again. Goodbye Naruto-kun. Be safe. They said in unison. With mental connection went out and Goku was smiling at the grinning Naruto. You have a wonderful family Naruto reminds me of my own a bit hee hee. Though I suspect you are gonna get something very surprising when you meet them again. I just know it. Goku said with grin of his own. Naruto shaking his head at his master stood at attention and spoke. When should we begin Goku-sensei? Shenrong sensei he asked the two beings blinked and looked at each and blinked twice before grinning turning his head back to naruto he spoke we will begin by first getting you some new clothes and seeing as you have no money you're gonna be doing some odd jobs that includes farming construction and delivering milk while using an old training method master roshi used on me and my best friend krillin goku said remembering the times he did the training that's when a giant green turtle shell with two straps on appeared in his hand and started handing it to naruto expecting it to weigh a bit naruto grabbed hold of the shell only a second later hitting the ground with a loud thud k kami how much does this thing weigh naruto muttered and never saw the dark gleam in goku's eyes that naruto will be your personal training weight until i'm satisfied with the results now get out of here and get to training he said personally kicking Naruto out of his own mindscape when he was gone he heard Shenron chuckling. Raising an eyebrow in curiosity he asked, Shenron what's so funny? He asked the old dragon and saw the smirk of the dragon. Ha 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 nothing just that turtle shell weighs 10x more than what you had to begin with at your start of training. Blinking, Goku chuckled seeing where this was heading to. Ah yeah about that well I just have a feeling that was the beginning of where he would need to start at. He asked getting a deadpan look from the dragon. You call 20 tons a beginning? He asked in a monotone-like voice which Goku just nodded at. Shaking his head the dragon laid its head down thinking about his and Goku's new student and how his training should be planned out for the next few years. Chapter 2, The Golden Warrior Five years later, Unknown Island, a black blur was currently zipping around, causing several rock dexters to explode on contact and be reduced to rubble as the blur made contact with them and vanished from plain sight. 
several more erupted on contact with either a punch or a kick before once again they were nothing more than a pile of pebbles. The blur appeared in the air before landing on the ground with a crouch revealing a spiky black-haired teenager who appeared to be 11 to 12 years old. He seemed to be wearing a black fighter gi with a red sash holding it together. Picture the outfit Gohan wore during the Cell games, along with a pair of black martial arts shoes, similar to the ones Gogeta wears. He then stood straight up, revealing the face of none other than Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. For the past four years he has spent all of his time training under his masters Goku and Shenron and has changed a lot during his travels. He spent the first year training his physical strength and speed using the turtle shell Goku had him wear for basically every form of physical training he had him do such as climbing mountains with weights on his arms and legs or with one arm tied behind his back. He also did the same when it came to something like swimming in order to not just increase his strength but his speed as well. During his travels he learned how to perform a lot of labor jobs such as carpenting, farming, and construction work and would usually travel to small villages and assist them. Naruto also went through survival training where he had to learn about the various plants that he could use for healing as well as ones that could be eaten and are poisonous as well as use the landscape to build shelters like a homemade teepee or a small cabin. Training in the wild did give him a more perspective for nature and wildlife and sleeping out at night and eating food you catch yourself shows you're capable of surviving alone in the forest. It also helped train his senses and raised his awareness around him in case missing nin or bandits attempted to attack him. Not only that but he also learned some intermediate few injutsu from a monk that live in the mountain range of Yama no Kuni and needless to say the young Saiyan was a natural and was able to understand the basics of modern ceiling complexes that most beginner couldn't understand and would take a few years to learn. So far, he knew how to use seals and scrolls to store supplies, money, clothes, tools, etc. The second year Goku got Naruto started in learning how to control his ki, or chi which was in a manner the same as chakra since it was naturally the life force which is a tangible energy that lives inside a living being and its major focus being in the center of the body. By drawing it out, a person is able to manipulate it and use it for performances outside the body as well as increase their speed, strength, endurance, and can increase the power of their attacks to inflict greater damage to opponents. Goku first taught Naruto how to draw out his ki and when he was able to do that, he proceeded to help him in learning out to summon it in its raw form by having him focus and summoning it into his palms. This exercise took around three weeks to perform before he was able to create a ball of ki which left Naruto surprised and awestruck at how beautiful it looked. Once he managed to do that, Goku first taught him the basic attack for this technique called the ki blast and with that, Naruto spent his time learning how to manipulate and shape the blast into different forms and managed to form it into either a thin beam of energy that can easily pierce through solid rock or steel to one that can leave a crater in the ground as well as form it into a thin disc that can cut down countless trees in a single line. The only issue was the amount of energy he put in them so he spent his time in working how to not waste so much and control it effectively. After that, Goku decided to teach him a few key base techniques that were really powerful if used correctly the ones that he learned or seen his friends use. He started off by teaching him his family's traditional technique the Kamehameha wave, turtle destruction wave, which happened to be the first technique he learned from Master Roshi when he started his training. Goku instructed Naruto in how the energy attack was basically a straightforward attack that could do serious damage ranging from destroying a small mountain and causing tidal waves to wiping out a large city and destroying an entire planet or even a solar system. So with that Naruto learned the Kamehameha and even created different variations of it like ones he could use as a barrage attack or manipulate it like a heat-seeking missile. Surprisingly Naruto managed to get the technique down in nearly half a year before Goku taught him the other key techniques but only after he was able to use them properly and master them to an extent and even then, Naruto still continued to hone his skills even after mastering whichever technique Goku taught him. Shenron on the other hand taught Naruto an ancient style of fighting called elemental bending which was the bending of the five element that were based off of a certain fighting style, basically its bending form the Avatar cartoon, that is combined with a certain element like water bending for example. Water bending is based on a style of Tai Chi Chuan specifically the Yang style. It is a Chinese martial art that features slow movements and elegant forms that evoke the feel of flowing water. Water bending's strength is its great versatility. Rather than supporting a separate set of offensive methods, water bending employs defensive techniques that can be transformed into attacks and counters, defense into offense. Instead of simply deflecting an attack, water bending's defensive maneuvers focus on control, achieved through turning an opponent's own strength against him rather than directly harming the opponent. The other was earth bending. Earth bending is generally based on the Hungar style of Kung Fu, which features heavily rooted stances and strong kicks and punches that evoke the mass and power of earth. The martial art is based on the movements of animals, including the tiger, which is utilized when initiating hard blows in the crane, 
which is used to land gently back on the earth. Another version which is more versatile is one based off the southern praying mantis kung fu, using its precise stepping to maintain contact with the ground as well as sensing the different vibration through the ground and reading a person's emotion without using your eyesight. Another one was firebending. Firebending moves are based mainly on the style of northern Shaolin kung fu, but with a few techniques from northern seven star praying mantis. These martial arts feature quick, successive attacks that exert extreme power for just a moment, much like an explosion, called Jing Lick. It optimizes a strong continuous offense, sacrificing defense for greater power, the principle behind a preemptive strike, making fire bending the most aggressive of the five. Air bending is based on the Ba Gua style of martial arts, also known as circle walking or eight trigram palm, along with a small hint of Xing Yi, also known as mind heart boxing. These martial arts feature swift, evasive maneuvers that evoke the intangibility and explosive power of wind, drawing energy from the center of the abdomen. Bagua, which utilizes circle walking, the idea behind it being the act of walking the eight trigrams, is known for its constant circular movement, which makes it difficult for opponents to attack directly or land a blow. Since it's always maneuvering, nobody can get a solid hold in of this maneuver. Maneuvers employ the entire body with smooth coiling and uncoiling movements, utilizing dynamic footwork, open hand techniques, punches and throws. A common tactic is to maneuver behind an opponent and mirror their movements, preventing them from turning to face the practitioner. Unlike other bending disciplines, air bending is almost entirely a defensive art. The final one was lightning bending which unlike the other elements relied on using the internal strength such as the bioelectricity that emits around a person's body but is invisible to the naked eye. Lightning bending was basically one of the most dangerous forms of binding since it was based off of the Shotokan fighting style delivering fast and precise blows that relied on the person having fast reflexes. Basically each of these five basic disciplines each represent the balance of life meaning neither one was too strong or too weak. With this, Naruto was intermediate at best learning the five elemental fighting styles. Goku also taught him a very unique technique known as flight, Bokujutsu, in which the user manipulates their key energy so that they can levitate or fly into the air. Naruto was literally excited in learning how to fly as he always wondered what it would be like to soar across the air like birds do and see everything below him. Goku had to agree since he too loved to fly. When Naruto first started off, he could only levitate a few feet into the air and slowly learn how to maneuver around objects and increase his speed and slow down. The first few tries proved to be disastrous at first due to the fact that Naruto ended up crashing into several trees face first and then one time the side of a cliff, leaving an imprint of his body which made Goku and Shenron bust out laughing at the incidents but he did start to improve as he got older. Right now Naruto overall had an excellent build for someone his age, think Teen Gohan from the Cell games. Swaying behind his back was his tail and Goku also warned him about how a Saiyan's tail was their weak point as whenever it is grabbed. It weakens the Saiyan greatly but he helped Naruto overcome that weakness. Naruto also worked on using a bow staff and a katana as he bought them both from a weapon store near the border of fire country and worked on the katas the style he learned from Haruzen and Kushina before the incident. Said Saiyan was observing the damage he did around the area and couldn't help but rub the back of his head sheepishly. Hey looks like I overdid it a little, Naruto stated as he saw a rock texture collapse over and hit the ground. Hey hey don't threat Naruto. You've improved a lot over the last seven years in controlling your power. Good thing this mountain isn't populated, Goku stated as he was extremely proud and how far Naruto has gotten in his training and felt a sense of pride. Indeed. I didn't expect you to get this strong so soon young one but it looks like you've surpassed my expectations. The eternal dragon remarked with a sense of pride in his voice. Thanks Shenrong sensei, Naruto said as he wiped a bead of sweat from his face. Though I wonder how Kushina-chan and Mito-chan as well as the other are doing. I really miss them. I'm pretty sure they are doing just fine Naruto after all they're each strong in their own way. Goku assured his apprentice. Naruto merely sighs and nods as he makes his way over to the small hut to gather his things. I guess you're right sensei since Saru Oji has things handled. He pulls out a map of the elemental countries and inspects it. I'll need to restock my supplies at the closest village and I think I'll make a detour to Kiri next what do you think Goku sensei? Naruto asked as he got his stuff packed up. Sounds like a plan Naruto. Let's get some supplies first at the closest village on the island and I think you should head to one of the closest elemental countries next. He instructed while his apprentice studied the map. That would be Kirigakur no Sato. Alright then next stop Kiri, say sensei can I fly there this time instead of having to swim like I did when I went to Nami no Kuni? He asked and heard his mentor a chuckle. Sure Naruto knock yourself out but don't do it literally as I still haven't gotten over that time you crashed headfirst into that mountain hiya hey, hey, hey. 
Goku said chuckling while Naruto hung his head in embarrassment before flaring his key and taking off into the air. After getting the supplies he was currently soaring over the ocean passing several islands. Man that's weird I should be close to Kiri right now. He pondered until he noticed a ship sailing across the water. Hmm maybe they would know if I was close or not. With that he took off towards the ship. Man this is so boring. A female Kiri nin groaned while two of her comrades had tick marks on their heads. For the love of Kami stop whining damn it. A Jonin yelled getting tired of the Chunin's constant whining even though water patrol was the most boring objective while the other Jonin chuckles. Relax man it's not like we're run into anything out here. He remarked until he saw a black dot heading in their direction. Hey what is that? He asked as he squinted his eye and his teammates did the same until the dot got a little bigger. It looks like a kid and he's flying towards us. The female nin's eyes bugged out while her comrades appear right beside her with the same expression. No way. The Jonin said until Naruto appeared before them hovering in the air like it was as simple as breathing. Hey are you guys from Kirigakur no Sato? Naruto asked the group who said nothing but gape at him. How are you hovering in the air like that? The other male Kiri Nin asked. Naruto blinked a few times at their reaction and shrugs. It's a technique my sensei taught me but anyway are you guys form Kiri? Naruto asked again. Yeah we are but why are you going there? Don't you know there's a civil war going on there? The male Nin asked the young Saiyan. Really? Wow I didn't know that but I'm merely going into the wilderness as I am a traveler. The black haired Saiyan answered while the ninja looked at him in a skeptic manner but relented. Fine then, it's 10 miles southwest from here but like I said be careful as travelers aren't really welcome there. The leader informed Naruto who nodded back at the ninja. Okay and thanks for the info. Later. He did a two finger salute with his hand before flaring up his key and took off instantly, making the water from under him splash upwards and even creating a gust of wind. Leaving the three Kiri ninja stumped. That. Was. Awesome. The female nin said with stars in her eyes while her two comrades merely nodded in agreement. Meanwhile Naruto managed to make it to water country and was searching for a good spot where he could train in peace as well as make a temporary home while being close to a village where he could restock his supplies should he run out and after searching for a while he found a great spot that was near a mountain range and below it was a jungle with a decent clearing and a large river along with a waterfall flowing into the river. Afterwards. He spent the whole week making a decent sized cabin for himself before setting up the rooms with the furniture he sealed up as well as his tools, clothes, training weights, etc. Right now the young Saiyan walking through a trail he created in the jungle carrying the dead body of a wild boar he caught that was hog tied to a large stick over his shoulder and also was carrying a large sack that contained wild fruits and vegetables as well as medical herbs that grew in the forest. Man catching this boar with weighted clothes was a lot tougher than I thought, but at least I'm getting a decent workout. He said as he made it to his cabin and drops the boar onto the ground and wipes a bead of sweat from his forehead. Phew this humidity is no joke. I didn't think it would be this hot and curry. He thought while pulling out a jagged looking dagger with the edges appearing to be smoothed out but extremely sharp and proceeded to skin the boar and then cut open the stomach and remove whatever entrails he didn't need and threw them somewhere in the jungle away from his cabin and where scavengers would get them. Afterwards, he hung the skinned body over a pole that is out of the reach of any bears, wolves and mountain lions while removing the tusks just in case he needed extra tools. For the rest of the day, the cheerful Saiyan was in the jungle, performing acrobatic feats across the trees and in ways most kids his age couldn't even think of doing but then again he is not like other kids considering who his ancestor is. As he landed onto another tree, he stopped in his tracks and took a whiff in the air. His eyes narrowed as the scent grew stronger. That smell, there's blood in the air and it seems to be fresh and also, sniff, sniff. He took off into the direction of where the smell is coming from. He lands in the area and his eyes widened at the sight. The area seemed to be charred and on the ground were the bodies of masked ninja who were either in the ground in a puddle of their own blood, with missing limbs, or to his surprise and shock melted. Oh man there must have been an intense fight here earlier. He pondered and looked around the area only to see a blood trail that went into the jungle. Someone's injured and from the scent she's female. I'd better get to her before she's picked off by the predators in this forest or worse bandits. With that he took off into the forest. As he leapt through the trees the scent was getting stronger and as he landed on the last tree, out of pure reflex he flips off of it as it was hit by a glob of what appeared to be lava and melted the entire tree. Whoa that was close, he stated and heard someone huffing. He turned his head to see in his sights was whom he could picture was without a doubt the most beautiful woman he's ever set eyes on. From her appearance she seemed to be around 18 years old. She has ankle length, auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back a top knot tied with a dark blue band, and with four bangs at the front. Two bangs are short, with one covering her right eye, and two are long, crossing each other on her chest, just below her chin. 
Her eyes are light green. She dresses in a long-sleeved dark blue dress that falls just below the knees. It seems to be closed at the front with a zipper, and is kept open on the front right side from the waist down. The dress only covers up to the upper part of her arms and the underside of her breasts. Underneath, she wears a mesh shirt that covers more of her upper body than her dress, but stops short of covering her shoulders and still leaves a sizable cleavage. She also wears shorts in the same color as her and underneath those mesh leggings reaching down over her knees. Around her waist, she wears a belt with a pouch attached to the back on the left. Furthermore, she wears high-heeled sandals and shin guards reaching up over her knees. All in all, she looked like a goddess in Naruto's eyes and he couldn't help but blush a little at her flawless form despite the fact that she had a few tears and dirt on her face. A sided smile formed on the auburn-haired woman's face as she saw the boy stare. You see something you like? She teased but then hissed in pain, clutching her bleeding side and was about to collapse over until she was caught in the arms of the black-haired Saiyan. Whoa take easy lady otherwise you're gonna bleed out more than usual. Naruto warned as he carefully helped her up, while looking at the gash on the left side. You need to get that treated before it gets infected. I have a cabin not far from here, I can treat it for you. He offered but then frowned as he sensed a group of unknown ninja heading here. The next thing May knew, she was scooped up in his arms bridal style and said woman eeks in surprise. Sorry about this but we've got to go. With that, they both vanished in a blur, leaving the hunter nin on a cold trail. A day later, May Terumi, the leader of the rebel faction and person Naruto helped was looking outside for her savior from yesterday. By the river. A large splash occurred, surprising Mei as a fish that was the size of a small bear and hit the ground, flapping and flailing around. After that, Naruto leapt out of the river, shirtless and wearing his pants, like Gohan did after the Cell Games. As he landed on the soft ground, he shook his head in order to get the water out of his hair and then did the same for his body until his tail wagged off the remaining bit of water on his person. Man these fish are tough to catch, he said to himself. Unaware that May was sporting a small blush on her face as she saw his toned body. Never in her life has she seen any kid his age this ripped as he had the build of a warrior due to the fact that he hardly had any form of baby fat on his person. That was when she noticed his tail and had to resist the urge of screaming kawaii at the sight. That was when Naruto turned his attention to May and his expression brightened. Hey May chan I see you decided to get some fresh air while I was fishing. I guess those herbs did the trick and helped you recover faster said 18 year old snapped out of her stupor and couldn't help but smile at his expression indeed they did naruto kun and thanks for helping me even though you didn't have to she replied back and nearly gawked as she saw him hoist the giant fish that was twice his size over his shoulder i know but i couldn't live with myself if i let someone as pretty as you get killed by those hunter nin he replied back in an honest tone unaware that his words made the tint of pink on her face grow a little until when it came to the opposite sex Naruto was not as dense around females like his sensei was due to the fact that when he was in Konoha, he basically spent a lot of time around them. Basically, he was innocent when it came to women and would simply compliment them on their beauty as if it was the simplest thing in the world, unaware that it would result in them blushing due to how innocent he looked when he told them. Most males would do it to get into their pants but Naruto was a different case. Another thing Naruto didn't like were perverts. His Aniki Kakashi was an exception in a way due to the fact that he mostly kept his in check thanks to Rin and the fact that he reads what his mother called smut. DH thank you Naruto-kun she replied in a quiet tone as she brushed one of her bangs back. Kemi what's wrong with me? He's a preteen for crying out loud yet here I am acting shy around him. And those innocent eyes aren't helping the fact either. You are welcome. Well I'm gonna go get this fish skinned and cleaned for lunch. How do you feel about sushi? He asked Mei who smiled. That would be great Naruto-kun. She replied back, great. I'll get onto it and afterwards I can take you back to your camp. With that he headed to the back of the cabin in order to gut, clean, and cook the fish for lunch. Six months later, it's been six months, since Naruto met Mei and resumed his training in the deep wilderness of Mizu no Kuni. Ever since then, many rumors have spread throughout the country and the shinobi village of an entity within the forests. Many don't know what it was, but how they know is that many in the shinobi village could hear the sounds of trees falling or explosions of something out of the ordinary. Sadly, no one was able to find this person or thing since no one knew what it exactly was, but even then during the Bloodline War, the mysterious deaths of Kiri shinobi that believed in Yagura, the current Mizukage's ideals about the Bloodlines being demonic in nature were always found at the Mizukage Tower's doorsteps either in a broken and bloody heap, barely alive or simply dead depending on the person's condition. The only sign this mysterious entity showed was the slight indention of feet at the doorstep of the tower and the only person rumored to have met this being, was the rebel's very own female leader, 
Mei Terumi who was said to have been saved by this unknown warrior when she was ambushed by the current Mizukage's elite hunter Nin. Though there was one thing that all the shinobi, whether they were of the rebel forces or the ones that followed the Mizukage remembered and it was the sight they saw only three months ago during the second assault between the two on the rebels fortress of Tazuki. It was when the forest was being ravaged by the jutsu and explosive traps being used, that something horrific happened. Flashback Fortress of Tazuki Mei Terumi had just snapped the neck of an Anbu Nin that had attempted to attack her blind spot, while her forces were assaulting the fortress. The sound of battle cries, blades clashing, seal tags exploding, and just to being unleashed echoed around the bloody war-torn fortress and bodies of both rebels and loyalists littered the ground. Smoke also rose around the area as the battle ensured under the full moon. We have to keep pushing, this fortress is one of Yagura's main strongholds and if we can claim it then we'll be one step at getting closer to the village but at this rate. She pondered as she watched her comrades, the very people that were either bloodline holders, or simply those who were against the war fought with everything they had. It's gonna take a miracle for this to succeed. I wish Naruto-kun was here. As soon as those words left her train of thought, a deafening roar echoed across area making all of those that were fighting stop in their tracks and look around. Mei's eyes widen in fear thinking that it Yagura who was in his Bisha form to come assist his army in defending the fortress and was gonna call on her forces to retreat until she looked up and saw a large hulking figure leap over and land in the middle of the battle, causing the earth to shake violently and for dust to rise into the air. When it cleared, everyone's eyes widened in shock, horror, and fear as they set their eyes on what appeared to be a beast whose height rivaled if not surpassed even that of the nine-tailed beasts. It appeared to be a giant monkey-like creature with dark brown fur covering its entire body minus its face, hands, and feet with large pointed ears and its long and powerful tail swished around back and forth. It sported a set of wicked-looking canines in its maw but what mainly freaked them all out was its glowing red eyes. They were basically in simple terms. Primal. More primal than any other animals and from the way it was growling at the carry ninja, it was not happy and a growl rumbled from the giant ape's throat. Mei stood on a tower speechless beyond words as she stared at the beast, he look of fear changed to surprise as she recognized the tail and the image of a grinning Naruto popped up in her mind. Naruto? She said quietly before said blonde stood straight up and let out a deafening roar that was so powerful that it shook the ground more than he did when he landed into the area and started to beat his chest. What the hell is that thing? One of Yagura's ninja cried out. Who cares just kill the monster? With that, the ninja on Yagura's side proceeded to throw countless kunai with explosive tags on them at Naruto and exploded on contact, covering his form in smoke. Some smirked triumphantly, thinking that they killed the beast but when the smoke cleared, Naruto was unharmed and snarling in annoyance, shocking the ninja to the core as those explosive tags had enough power to level a large building but didn't even singe its fur. Naruto brought his hand up into the air and brought it down hard, crushing the enemy ninja like flies. He roared in triumph before stomping repeatedly on the ground. As this happened the rebels decided to be smart and get the hell out of the giant ape's way as he attacked the enemy nin with his hands, feet, and tail, as they tried to use both explosives and jutsu that did little to slow him down. They watched the one-sided fight go on, pondering on how Naruto became this giant ape. One of her Siozao appeared next to her as did Chojuro. My kami was all the man said as he witnessed this slaughter while Chojuro tried his best not to lose his lunch at the massacre. They then watched as the Saiyan turned ape reared his head back opening his maw wide and gathering what appeared to be energy into its mouth. Once he gathered enough, with mighty roar, brought his head forwards and fires an energy blast so potent, that it dissolves anything in its path to nothing while the other ninja watched frozen in horror as the attack descended towards them. When it made contact, an explosion lit up half of the country in a flash of light, causing the place to erupt and generate a shockwave that ripped trees from the ground as well as the earth itself. May shielded her eyes from the shining light and the debris as did Shojuro and Ao, when it cleared. They each saw a crater that was extremely wide and deep and there was barely nothing left of the fortress or the shinobi guarding it. There's nothing left in that energy. It wasn't chakra or yokai. It was too potent. A stumped owl stated as he has seen Amari, menacing ball, and what damage it could do but this made it look like child's play. Web better get out of here as well before it spots us. Chujuro suggested as he backed away only for his heel to tap the rock that fell off the tower they were on and hit the ground. Chujuro's eyes bugged out in fear as he saw it make a clicking sound as did Ao. Yubaka, what have you done? Ao tried not to scream out. Naruto froze in his tracks and his ears twitched from the sound before turning its head to their direction. Ao and Chujuro paled to the point where they looked like ghosts as the ape growled lowly as his head descended toward the three ninja. Mei did nothing but stare at the form until she stared at Naruto's glowing red eyes. W we're gonna die, I'm sorry Ao-sama. Chujuro whimpered out as they both sweat bullets. 
That was when Naruto stopped growling and lightly sniffed Mei's form and went from their primal state to a look of curiosity. Mei blinked also as she saw this and slowly reached out, moving her hand to his giant muzzle, making Ao and Chojuro freak out in a comically fashion. That was until she placed her hands on his muzzle, resulting in the ape to growl out softly as she gently rubbed his nose. Naruto sits down, making the earth rumble lightly while wagging his tail in a happy manner and from their shock was purring, both Ao and Chojuro felt like they were gonna faint as this. This behemoth that not too long ago ravaged the fortress, destroying it and the enemy like they were nothing was now being calmed by their leader of all people and wondered what was her connection to this beast. Can this... this beast really be Naruto? Mei wondered as she felt its muzzle vibrate, she then notices that he was trying to growl out something. M.M. Mei-chan. Was all it said, causing Mei's eyes to widen and the same went with Ao and Chojuro. I.T. spoke. I.T. spoke to Mei-sama, Chojuro cried out pointing his finger at Naruto in a comical fashion only to get a brain duster to the back of his skull by Ao. Baka! Don't scream you'll startle IT. The man yelled back. Naruto was all May said quietly while said ape got back up and walked away from her disappearing into the forest. Flashback ends. After hearing about the destruction of the fortress, Yagura immediately sent the remaining Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Shichininchu, the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, in search of the beast so he could kill it for killing his shinobi in one of his main strongholds only on that same day, to come back with them extremely injured and on the brink of death itself. One Kisame Hoshigaki, Kirigakura's very own Kirigakura no Kaijin, monster of the hidden mist, quickly fled after the swordsmen reported their failure. Rumors said, the fishman was extremely terrified after the encounter with the ape, and was said by one of the surviving swordsmen that Kisame got the worst of it. He was close to being killed by the thing if it wasn't for his Seimata saving him at the last second. Ever since then and on our way back, Kisame was always looking over his shoulder for another attack, but what basically got Kisame scared was the great ape's eyes. They were primal and filled with a rage that would make the Hachibi's rampage look like a carnival ride and the blue-skinned man downright refused to go after that ape, not caring if his leader would execute him or not as he never wanted to see that beast or its eyes ever again for as long as he lived. So safe to say, Yagura kept a wary eye for the so-called ape but still concentrated on the war. Melo had an entirely different reaction after the event so she just placed the report down, stood up, and went into the forest issuing orders to her second in command that she would be gone for a bit, and didn't want anyone to follow her. No one was able to tell what Mei was thinking that day and her eyes didn't portray anything when she went into the forest, but it was highly thought she went to meet the ape herself, only to come back with a big smile on her face, and a dazed look in her eyes. Ever since then. Despite the best efforts of the rebels asking what happened all she said, was that the ape wouldn't harm them at all and wouldn't be seen again for a while. Still it made people wary if it ever shown up again. But also they were suspicious of how Mei was the only one to know the ape, but also the strange entity in the forest. That was another thing, people were beginning to think the entity and the monstrous ape were the same thing. So, when they found no sighting of it before and after Mei went to find it they felt extremely relieved. But now, after six months of fighting, the rebels were losing their side in the war, and with Yagura pressing on all sides made it hard for them to counter-attack. It made it only worse, when said Jin Chiriki was joining the battle in order to end the war quickly, and it was happening with him having perfect control over his bijou the Sanbinoki Ode game. Three-tailed giant turtle, made the war tip in his favor. Kirigakura Rebels Main Camp In the main camp of the Kirigakura's rebel forces, we could see in the main hut was a round table with the inner map of the whole village of Kirigakura within. Around this table was commanders and generals that made up to command the forces. Reaching the end of the table was Mei Terumi, rebel faction's leader, Yotan no Dan Shingakuin, lava dancing princess, and rumored to be the only link to the strange entity in the forest and the Baijuicized ape as well. We can't keep hold on our positions with the enemy pushing forward is only making it worse. I agree, and with Yagura on the front lines himself is making it impossible to push back and only watch our men get slaughtered out there. True. And with our resources going down immensely and the enemy all converging on us in one giant army is gonna make things even worse. Seeing their leader's thoughtful look, the general spoke Mei Sama, do you have any idea to handle this situation? Mei, kept thinking for a while not showing she heard the man. Hmm, we're losing this war that's true, and we don't have the manpower to fight both the army that's coming and Yagura himself. Hell I don, T think an army can defeat Yagura especially when he uses the chakra of the Sanbi. That's when something important hit her, snapping her head up alerting the others her eyes widen a bit. Maybe, just maybe, he might help us, if he were to help us, I have no doubt we'd win this war. Mei-sama? Are you okay? The general asked his leader. Looking at the general with a small smile and a hopeful look in her emerald eyes, she spoke. I think I may know a way to win this war. 
she spoke, getting shocked looks from them all. Abruptly standing up, the general spoke. W what exclamation mark dot dot why you know a way? He asked. Nodding she spoke, yes, but it all depends if he accepts, she said the last part softly before turning towards her commanders. All right, I want you all to go to your posts, I'll explain everything later first I need to check on something. She said getting hesitant nods from them all. When they all left, May turned toward the window looking into the deep forest of Mizu no Kuni before letting a slip of a smile cross her face. I wonder, will you help me again like you did last time? Saru-kun? She asked herself in a voice filled with hope as she got up and did some hand seals. Kushios no Jutsu. She said, before a puff of smoke erupted, when it cleared there before May was a small serpentine lizard with wings on its back. Rearing its up head up to May. It spoke. Is there something you need Mei-sama? Yes, I want you to go into that forest and find someone for me. Here, this has his scent on it. She said fishing out a small black cloth. The lizard leaned over and smelt the piece of clothing before looking back at Mei. I got his scent, is there anything you want me to tell him? Yes, tell him that Mei needs his help greatly, and it's very important that he comes here quickly that's all I ask of him. This got a nod from the small serpentine lizard before it ran through a hole in the tent and into the forest. May watched her summon disappear into the forest before lowering her gaze to the floor as a soft yet longing look came into her eyes. I hope you accept and come, it would be nice to see you again. With that she turned around and left the tent to prepare her forces for the battle that is to come. One day later jungle of Kergakurs. May's summon came upon the cabin in the jungle and scrambles across the ground quickly as it came upon the front door. Once looking up at the door. The lizard started to scratch on it to get the attention of the person inside. It seemed to work when it heard footsteps coming closer, so when the door opened, the lizard's eyes comically widened at the sight before it. Hello little one. What is it you need? Naruto asked as crouches down while the lizard just shook its lead head and spoke. I'm here on behalf of Mei Terumi. She has asked for your audience, but also said it was very urgent you came. The lizard said, while Naruto tilted his head to the right a bit before chuckling. Very well. Tell her I'll be there shortly and thank you for relaying this to me. He said which the lizard just nodded before puffing away in a cloud of smoke. When it was gone, Naruto looked into the forest in the direction of the rebel camp. Seems Mei-chan needs help, well can't keep her waiting. With that he turned around and walked into the house before closing the door, getting his gear. Kirigakura rebel's main camp. Mei sighed as she looked upon her forces all lined up looking at her with serious expressions. She had just explained the details of Yagura and his army coming to finish them off. She seen their grief-stricken faces at finding out such information, but was quickly determined when they remembered what they were exactly fighting for. She just hoped it wasn't too late and he got here before the fight began. Despite how brave her forces were and determined to win, she knew they wouldn't even she couldn't Yagura when he used the Sanbi's chakra. Sure, she could take him down with him alone, but that in itself is a tough fight. Looking upon her forces once more she spoke. Now we must prepare for the battle, I want all shinobi at their posts and begin preparations for the enemy. She shouted getting a massive hi! From them all before they dispersed into multiple directions to prep the battlefield. Once they were gone, Mei looked upon the rising sun and was already seeing the slight formations of the enemy coming. Sighing, she let her thoughts go back to him. Naruto, I wish you were here. She softly uttered, praying to Kami that he would come to their aid. I am here, Meiheim. The said rebel leader stood shock still before turning around to find the owner of the voice. Only for her eyes to widen and a big smile come upon her face for the person in front of her. It was none other than Naruto himself and strapped to his back was his katana while his staff was in a small scroll. As well as several smaller ones that were attached to his sash. Swaying behind him was his tail and he had his grew out to where it was now shoulder length and had it tied back into a low ponytail, like how Gohan's was when he trained in a hyperbolic time chamber. He had black bandage wrap wrapped around his arms and stopped near his elbows, like how Rockley wears his, and also wore his black martial arts ski with his martial arts shoes. The only difference was the fact that Naruto had grown a lot taller during these last six months and was close to matching Mei's height. She then walked over to Naruto and hugged him while he returned it. Looking at Naruto, Mei let a small blush come upon her face before speaking, I I didn't think you would make it in time. She admitted, while Naruto just chuckled, yeah sorry I'm a bit. I had some last minute things to take care of. He said breaking the hug making Mei pout which got another chuckle from the Saiyan. Putting up a serious expression Naruto spoke. Now, Mei-chan what is it you needed to speak to me about? He asked and Mei just remembered the fast approaching army coming which made her eyes take a serious look in them. This made Naruto blink a bit, it was quite rare for Mei to become so serious in front of him. Naruto-kun you know of the war we've been fighting? She asked, which made Naruto nod. 
He's known about the war since he's partaken in a few of those battles when they came near the forest. Of course he wouldn't be there long just so he could help the rebels fight back. Yeah, I know of it, but what does that got to do with anything? He said curiously, May just looked down at the ground before doing something very surprising. Her emerald eyes started to tear up making Naruto's eyes go wide at the sight. Never, has Naruto seen May cry before, but seeing it now made his heart hurt. Letting out a grim expression, Naruto placed his hands on both of her shaking shoulders. Mei Chen what's wrong? He asked sincerely. Mei quickly realized her tears and quickly cleared them away, but it was too late since he has already seen them. It's Yagura, Naruto kun, he's making a final push and converging his whole army here to wipe us out, and we truly don't have the manpower to really fight back. Naruto's eyes widened a bit before narrowing he was linking what she was saying while still listening to her speak. Despite how much the rebels want to win it's impossible, we can't fight an army and a Jinchuriki with full control over his bijou. She said. Looking up she saw the stern expression upon Naruto's face. Naruto-kun, I know it's selfish, but please, please, I beg you. She fell on her hands on knees and bowed her head before him. Surprising the Saiyan as he knew Mei was a strong and proud Kunoichi. Help us she begged while sobbing quietly as this war was too much for her especially since she was the leader of the rebel faction but all the responsibility did was do more harm than help and it was too much for her. Although Naruto really didn't like to kill it was only necessary when he fought to protect those important to him and Mei was undoubtedly very important to him. Plus this civil war also reminded him too much of how the villagers treated his sister. Prejudice against things they don't understand because they were too stuck in the past. With that. He kneels down to her sobbing form and places both of his hands on the sides of her face. Mei felt his hands on her face and looked up to see Naruto smile warmly at her tear-stained face and gently wiped the tears away. You already know my answer Haim, he said softly as he helped her on her feet. Besides, I would have helped you even if you didn't ask for my help. Plus I'll get to find out firsthand just how powerful the Mizukage is even if he can control the full power of his bijou. The Saiyan finished in a tone full of excitement surprising the dual bloodline holder but then she shook her head as she saw the excitement in his eyes in facing a powerful opponent and shook her head in amusement naruto kun you never changed do you she said greatly amused by his attitude towards fighting naruto just chuckled scratching the back of his head sheepishly turning toward the soon-to-be battlefield naruto spoke i can't help that mei chan but i do have to tell you if the battle yagura and us gets out of hand and he starts to release his bijou i want you to get out of there he said making Mei look at him like he was crazy. What? But that's crazy if I do you'll be killed because when he uses his bijou, Yagura is unbeatable when he uses the chakra. Only another Jinchuriki has enough power to face him. She cried inwardly questioning Naruto's sanity of such a question. The Saiyan just chuckled before looking at the prepared battlefield once more. Let's just say, I have a way to fight him, but please just do this for me if it happens alright? He asked. Mei just looked at him worried before seeing the confident look in his eyes. Seeing that look, all worry was gone in a blink of an eye. Instead she just shook her head and smiled. Well, if it does happen you better come back alive or so help me, I will. Drag. You. Back. From. Death. So. I can. Kill. You. Myself. Got that? She said poking him in the chest to emphasis each word. Naruto merely sweat drops but nods before taking her hand in his and kisses her knuckles, making he blush in an instant. Don't worry you won't be the only one that would kill me if I died right now, I have two other redheads back home that would kick my ass if I died here. He said, then before her bodyguard out could see him, Naruto's form disappeared in a burst of speed leaving a smiling Mei behind. One hour later battlefield. Upon the cratered and broken battlefield was two armies on different sides. On one side you had the Mizukage Yagura and his army fighting for the ideal Kirigakur and killing off all bloodlines within their village. On the other, you had Terumi Mei, leader of the rebel faction which fought for not just their people, but also the bloodline's survival. The first wave of Yagura's army was already decimated by traps set up by Mei's forces, but already after fighting the massive forces of Yagura's army after only an hour was taking its toll on them. Upon this field of bloodshed was, Yagura Jinshuriki of the Sanbian current Mizukage. In front of him was Mei Terumi, rebel leader and current bloodline user of the Yotan and Fatan, Lava and Boil release. Glaring, Mei looked around to see her forces engaging Yagura's own. Mei, why do you continue to fight back? You're the only ninja I respect even if you have one of those accursed bloodlines. Questioned Yagura as Mei looked back at him with a glare. I fight for not only Kirigakur, but for the safety of the children with bloodlines. Because of you. Families were separated, slaughtered or just plain butchered. 
I'm fighting to stop that and bring Kergakur back to what it used to be. She answered back, getting a glare from the cage. How foolish of you, then you shall die with your own demonic kin, May. Screamed the crazed cage. May stood guard as Yagura charged at her, leaving behind dust in his wake. He was almost upon her form until a blur struck him right across the face and sent him flying in the air and crashing into the ground hard, causing a cloud of dust to erupt into the air and the ground to slightly shake. May blinked before looking ahead to see, Naruto smiling at her with a wave with his right leg up showing he was the one to have kicked Yagura. Hey Mei-chan. Sorry I'm late, I got lost on the road of life. He said gaining a twitch of an eyebrow from May while back in Konoha, the copy ninja Kakashi Hitake sneezed hard wondering who was talking about him. You and your excuses Naruto-kun. She muttered, shaking her head. Naruto on the other hand just grinned before turning around quickly to see the glaring form of Yagura with his clothes and body scratched a bit from hitting the ground as well as the broken nose that was slowly healing with blood going down his face showed how much the hit injured him. Who are you? Yagura questioned as he saw the black-haired warrior land beside Mei. Who am I you ask? Just your average 12-year-old with a monkey tail. Naruto inward back with a toothy grin and his tail swaying behind him. Yagura's eyes widened as he saw the appendage sway back and forth and narrowed his eyes at the new opponent. So all this time another accursed bloodline holder was hiding in my country? You must be the so-called entity of the forest who has been aiding these scum? Yagura stated as Naruto rolled his shoulders in order to get the kink out. Shish what an attitude. So what if I was born with a tail? I happen to like it and it attracts a lot of good attention. Naruto stated with a grin on his face before he narrowed his eyes in a serious fashion, surprising Yagura as the playful demeanor changed into one of a warrior by the next second. I came here to help Mei-chan and end this senseless war. Yagura on the other hand looked turked. Senseless? I am purifying my lands by writing them of these accursed bloodlines. People like her are the reasons why we always go to war. Clans with bloodlines are nothing but a cancer that needs to be cleansed and that is what I'm doing. Naruto on the other hand clenches his fists in his proclamation and scowls. Purifying? You call a mass genocide a good cause? All you've done is destroy your home and the lives of those who are innocent and had nothing to do with this war. All this destruction over nothing is not right. You call my cause nothing? Foolish boy I don't have to explain my reasons to you or anyone as the only thing awaiting you and that wench and those rebels is death. He growled as his chakra flared. Fine then, if reason won't make you understand then my fists will, Naruto said in with that. A blue flaming aura flared around his body, making chunks of earth rise around him. A form of curiosity appeared in Yagura's eyes as he could actually see this. Chakra? It didn't feel like chakra or yokai so what exactly was this energy he wondered. So the time for talk is over? Well then boy show me exactly just how powerful you are. Yagura challenged. Trust me you won't be disappointed. Naruto remarked before vanishing in a blur, surprising both Yagura and Mei as that was pure speed meaning there was no chakra in his movements. The next thing that happened was Yagura's head jerking back from a vicious right hook to the jaw, making his eyes glaze over from the impact and stumble back a little. He then hunched over as Naruto drove his fist into his gut, making him spit up before being assaulted by a series of several punches to the sternum. Naruto stopped his assault deliver as a roundhouse kick to the cage's skull and sent him flying and crashing through several rock textures. Naruto vanished once again and appeared behind the man's flying form with his right palm pushed backwards and then thrusting it forward, releasing a powerful telekinetic shockwave to Yagura's spine and said vessel for the sandby went sailing through the ground, creating a deep trench line. Mei was gobsmacked at what just happened and her eyes bugged out when she saw him hover into the air. Naruto on the other hand remained focused and knew this was far from and didn't drop his guard for even a second. Come on Yagura I know those love taps couldn't have taken you out so easily, he said quietly until from the smoke several large water bullets flew out and headed straight for Naruto. Said black haired warrior, dodged and weaved through the attacks until one of the larger ones hit him directly in the chest and sent him crashing into the ground. Naruto. Mei went after his fallen form and as she approached him, he was sprawled out on the ground shaking the cobwebs out of his head before flipping back onto his feet. Ow! Man that smarts, Naruto cried out as he held his throbbing chest for a few seconds before shaking it off. Those water bullets were no joke. A normal person even if they were a ninja would have been seriously injured. That was when a smirk formed on his face. I guess he's a cage for a reason. I've got to be more careful and not slip up or I'm done for. Not bad boy but not good enough. Yagura stated before going through a series of 50 hand seals at a fast pace before adding chakra into his lungs. Sutan, Swaryudan, water release, water dragon bullet, 
He instantly shot a large torrent of water from his mouth and it took the form of a roaring water dragon with glowing yellow eyes and ascended towards the two. Mei clapped his hands together as the dragon made its way towards them. Naruto get behind me. She ordered which he did while her cheeks expand a little. Yotan, Mega Madongan, Lava Release, Magma Bullet. She then shot out several large lava bullets at her foe who did a ram seal in one hand. Sutan, Sui Shoha, Water Release, Water Shockwave, this time Yaguro shot out an even larger torrent of water that cancelled out Mei's technique and rushed at them. Damn it! I can't counter that in time. Mei cursed as the large wave of water loomed over them and was ready to crush them both until Naruto appeared behind her and wrapped one arm around her before taking off into the air as the water crashed in their location. Yagura's eyes widened in frustration as he saw the boy save them both before Naruto landed back on the ground with said russet-haired Kunoichi. It's a good thing I can fly. He commented while Yagura was getting frustrated. How was he able to do that? He wasn't using any chakra in that technique he used and the only ones who could actually fly were the Nidaimon San Daimatsuchikage. Just who is this kid? He then once again fires another water dragon at them both, not this time. Naruto brought his hand back and gathered blue key in his palms ha. He brought them forward and fired an energy blast at the dragon. The water dragon engulfed the blast but then it expanded and exploded into water, making it spray everywhere, much to Yagura's shock. Impossible how did he he didn't get to finish as he was struck in the side of the face by an aerial high kick to the side of his face making him stumble back a little. He snapped out of his daze before his senses put him on high alert and brought his right arm up to block another attack, but Naruto broke through and delivered a palm strike to his jaw before spinning around his back and delivering a reversal spin kick to his spine and sent him flying across the battlefield and crashing into a large rock texture that fell over and buried the cage in the rubble. Mei on the other hand remained stumped and flabbergasted as she saw Naruto smack the man around like he was a Jinan. Naruto landed back onto the ground, remaining in his fighting stance and with a focused look on his face. Said russet-haired female appeared beside him. It's not over. She replied, getting a nod from him. You think I'm? The only thing I did was piss him off and I'm pretty positive he's not gonna be in a happy mood. Naruto didn't know how right he was because the rebel erupted into nothing and murderous intent and yokai felled the area, making the rebels feel the intent and look fearful. A bead of sweat fell from Mei's brow as she saw a pissed-off Yager snarl at them with glowing eyes while a greenish-blue demonic cloak with three swaying tails swayed behind him as his injuries healed up. You're dead boy, he growled out, you hear me? You're dead. He released a roar that shook the area, causing a shockwave to blow around the area, making rocks, and other debris scatter about. May you need to clear out. Naruto informed her. She wanted to protest it but the look in his eyes showed no form of joking and remembered what he said back then. She didn't want to leave him alone to fight this monster but she knew good and well she was no match for Yagura when he used his bija powers and let out a relented sigh. I know and Naruto, said Saiyan turned his head only to have Mei catch his lips in hers, making his eyes widen before he returned it and they pulled away from each other while said woman had a small blush on her face. Good luck. She informed him before she shunshines out of the way. Naruto then vanishes and appears before a pissed off Yagura's form. You may have gotten lucky earlier boy but now you're gonna know the true meaning of fear before I send you into oblivion. Oh really? Well let me tell you Yagura, this whole time I wasn't even taking you seriously. Naruto commented with a smirk on his face and Yagura's eyes widened a little. You're a bluffing, there's no way a mere human could have the strength to rival a Jin Shuriki's it's impossible. Says you and what makes you think I'm human? A small smile grew on his face as he gets into a fighting stance. It doesn't matter if you're human, demon, or just a freak of nature, you're still going to die. He vanished from his spot and appeared behind Naruto with his fist raised and brings it down. Naruto vanished as Yagura punched the ground and created a large crater, kicking up rocks and dust. Naruto appeared on a rock texture in a crouching position before getting up and firing a barrage of key blasts at Yagura. Said Cage turned his head and saw the incoming blasts before sprinting across the field, avoiding the blasts and heading towards his prey, so he thinks. He punches his arm forward, causing a ethereal arm to extend and head straight for Naruto. The young Saiyan saw it and then extends his hand out, forming a yellow ball in his hand and then it starts to flatten and take the form of a rotating energy disc and rears his arm back. Destructo Disc. With that Naruto throws the disc at the arm. As soon as the attacks collided, the disc simply cuts through the ethereal hand like a hot knife through butter. Yagura's eyes widened as he saw the technique cut through the outstretched chakra arm so he cancelled out the attack and was forced to avoid the deadly energy attack unless he wanted to get his head lopped off but the bypassing attack did leave a nasty gash on his left cheek while the disc cut down several trees and boulders before dissipating. This is madness. His attack cut through my cloak as if it was nothing? 
That was pure yokai that I use and he just. Damn it, damn you boy I swear if it's the last thing I do I'll kill you, Yagura bellowed as he got on all fours and snarled at the young Saiyan. His cloak flared up and he unleashed several chakra claws at Naruto who basically used his reflexes and key blasts to either dodge or destroy the ethereal hands, infuriating the cage of Kiri. Hold still you freak. That was when Naruto vanished in a blur of pure speed before appearing under Yagura with both palms in front of his cloak. Yagura's eyes widened at the boy's speed, wondering how he was able to easily dodge the attacks of a cage? Let's test the limit of your cloak shall we? Naruto asked as blue key gathered in both of his hands and formed into orbs and afterwards joined together to create a larger energy sphere. Yagura's eyes widened as he realized what Naruto was gonna do. No. Stop you foolish brat or he didn't get to finish because Naruto let out a battle cry and fired. The key sphere pressed against Yagura's cloaked body, making his feet skid back against the dirt as he tried to stand his ground. The blast pushed outwards as Naruto was surrounded by a flaming blue aura. With one final push, Naruto poured more energy into the attack and Yagura was sent flying across the battlefield. He was blasted through the front gate of the village and into the evacuated land, before an explosion occurred and smoke in the form of a mushroom rose into the air. Oh man it's a good thing the village was evacuated. I have to be more careful and not let my instincts get me like that. Naruto replied before taking off into the air and towards his opponent. Meanwhile, watching the battle from afar were Mei and her second-in-command Ao who both were wide-eyed and their jaws hung from the ground as did the rebels who witnessed the attack from earlier. My Kami Mei sama where did you find that kid? The patch-wearing man asked his leader who remained speechless as she saw the magnitude of his attack and was glad he was on their side. Smiling, she spoke proudly, that's a secret Tao. Sidelines of the battlefield. Good God, that kid's beating Yagura down like a rag doll said the amazed words of a rebel shinobi, I know what you mean and even in his cloaked form the kid is still beating him. Another one said, awed at the fight before him, that kid is so cute Tilda said a female shinobi who had hearts in her eyes, which made the other two just sigh. Naruto was flying through the village before landing on top of a tower and searching the area for his foe. His energy signature has weakened greatly and it's only a matter of time before he didn't get to finish because the ground underneath him rumbled and shook violently startling the young Saiyan. Oh man that's not Yagura who's causing this it's that was when the ground erupted, causing debris and dust to shoot out everywhere while Naruto covered his eyes before looking up and staring at none other than the Sanbi no Kyode game, three tail John Turtle. The three tails primarily resembles a turtle, but with a crab-like shell, and three shrimp-like tails. It has a pair of human arms and hands, but no hind legs. Its right eye is constantly closed, indicating some sort of injury, and because of this, it is particularly vulnerable to attacks directed at its right eye. Wow so this is the sand bee? Funny I didn't expect you to be this ugly. Naruto remarked while the creature stared down at the black haired warrior before growling in a low manner. Its one eye glared murderously at him, while its three giant tails swished around him crushing and sweeping buildings around it like nothing. Many were now horrified whether they are enemy or ally, to face a baiju who was just asking for a slaughter. Mei and Ao, Okami, help us all. Ao stated looking upon the fully formed Sanbi of legend. Its giant form crushing much of the village already. Hope was slowly dwindling from his eye seeing the tailed beast of legend. Mei though was more focused on Naruto, his form wasn't deterred from seeing the bijou if anything he looked more excited than anything, but didn't show it. But she knew he was excited, she's known him long enough to read him enough to know that much. That's why right now, she was more curious than fearful for what was going to happen now. Good luck, Naruto-kun. Wow this beast's chakra levels are incredible. If this is how strong a three-tailed bijou is I can only imagine how strong Kyuubi could be. She could easily mop the floor with this clown. A grim expression formed on his face as he rose into the air and stared down at the giant turtle. At this rate there won't be a village to go back to. I really didn't want to use that yet since I'm still learning how to maintain it. He sighs in annoyance and brushes his hair back a little. What choice do I have? I know Goku Sensei said to not use it unless the situation was dire but this would be one of those times. He then got into a horse stance once again and started to gather his power. He grits his teeth as his hair rises once more but this time, it takes on an even spikier appearance. The skies start to darken and thunder clouds cackle around the area. As the sky rumbled, flashed of lightning rain from the heavens and the ground started to rumble. With Mei, Mei-sama what's going on? Ao asked as he tried to get his footing in check. I don't know but for some reason I know this is our allies doing. She answered before dashing towards the village gate. W wait. Mei Sama, Ao shouted as he went to join her as did Chojuro. With Naruto. Naruto growled lowly as his power continued to rise. From underneath his form, chunks of rock, buildings, and other debris rose into the air and the earth split from the weight of his power. 
His muscles flexed from the power increase and bursts of yellow static shot around his body. That was when his hair flashed a golden color before returning to its basic color. The thunderclaps became even louder as Naruto's power level kept rising. After a few minutes, Naruto reaches his max in his normal state before he reared his head back. Gra. That was when he released one final cry and a golden flaming key aura flared around his body. To the release of his new power, the ruined buildings around him tumble over and collapsed. The flare caused the entire area around him to coat the gloomy village in a bright light. Naruto's appearance completely changed. Now his hair was spiked upwards, minus the bangs and took on a golden color as where his clothing was a lighter shade, appearing to be a light gray color and the same with his complexion being a little lighter than normal and a slight increase in muscle. His expression was a lot sharper and more fierce looking and his eyes were no longer dark blue and his tail was now a golden color. They were now teal and were gazing at the Sanbi with a piercing expression that would make anyone tremble in fear. No more. It ends here Yagura, Naruto said in a calm yet cold voice. With Mei, Ao, and Chojuro, my Kami that kid is emitting all of that power? Incredible it's practically on par if not greater than the Sanbi but that's... impossible. How can a mere boy possess such great strength? The Byakugan wielder wondered. Mei on the other hand was entranced by Naruto's golden form. The light emitting from the now Super Saiyan was so warm and shined like the sun, enveloping everything around him. If it wasn't for the fact that Naruto had a monkey tail she'd practically think he was an angel sent from heaven to purge their village from the darkness that slowly destroyed them in this war. Sanbi growled for a while before releasing a powerful roar that released a shockwave so powerful, that it blew everything before it minus Naruto back. Said Super Saiyan just stood there floating into the air, not moving a single muscle while his hair and aura blew back a little before it died down. Nice breeze, Naruto merely said as the beast growled at him before bringing his massive arm up and swinging it forward at Naruto who just stood there. What's that fool doing? Ao cried out as he saw the massive appendage head straight for the golden-haired fighter. Naruto brought his left arm up to the side as the appendage went right at him and when it struck. Nothing happened as he simply blocked the attack with his arm while the ground underneath him rumbled. Both Ao's and Chojuro's eyes bug out in a comically fashion and their jaws hung down. D did he just... Chojuro started to say, he did. He stopped Sanbi's arm with his wrist. Ao finished, my turn, Naruto said as he brought his palm in front of the Sanbi's face. He then fires a powerful Kiai, Spirit Cannon, blast that sends the massive creature flying backward and the after effects level the demolished buildings and roads in the village. The Sanbi crashes through several large buildings before tumbling onto the ground, kicking up dust and debris. Naruto remained in his posture for a few seconds before bringing his hand down as flying towards his opponent's location. The giant turtle rose from the rubble roaring in frustration before throwing a large chunk of rock at Naruto. Said Saiyan vanished in a blur before reappearing again and fires a key blast at the second boulder, demolishing it. The Sanbi then fires a large water bullet from its skull at Naruto who weaves around them before punching the last one back at the Sanbi who got hit by it and roared out in anger. Naruto appeared over his head with his right leg up before descending and striking it directly in the head with a powerful heel drop kick and practically cracked the shell on tops of its head and crashed head first into the ground. This has gone on for too long. I have to end this, Naruto stated as he flew up into the air until he was high enough and started at the Sanbi's fallen form as it tried to get up. He then cupped his hands together and brought them back. He started to gather blue key in his hands and the blue orb shined around the area as it hummed to life. Ka, me, ha, me. His aura flared as he powered up the attack. Ha, he shouted as he thrusts his hands forward and shoots out a streaming, powerful light blue beam of energy downwards at the Sanbi who looks up to see the beam head right for him. The technique crashes down and engulfs the beast in a dome of light while said beast roared out in pain as the attack tore through his body until a great explosion occurred, sending a shockwave that made every form of debris scatter everywhere. Mei, Ao and Chojuro were forced to cover their faces with the attack and add chakra to their feet in order to cling onto the top of the gate. Naruto watched as the flash died down and smoke rose from the very deep and large crater his attack caused. The smoke slowly cleared and revealed the form of a beaten, bloody, broken, and unconscious Yagura whose clothes were tattered and torn. Naruto slowly descended to the ground and landed right next to Yagura. Looking down at his form for a few seconds before looking up to see the clouds clear up and the sun to shine down on the very village that covered in darkness but thanks to Naruto was now basking in the light. It's over, he said as he reverted back into his normal state and collapsed onto the ground, completely exhausted. Several minutes later, Mei and a few of her rebel ninja appeared in the battle scene. The 18-year-old knelt down at the Saiyan's tired form and placed his head on her lap before smiling at him. Naruto looked back up at her with tired eyes and smiled weakly giving her a thumbs up and chuckling.
Congratulations Mayheim. You. Guys, won. He finished before passing out with a smile on his face. She couldn't help but chuckle at his antic before tears of happiness fell down her cheek and landed on Naruto's. Thank you Naruto-kun, thank you for bringing our war-torn lands back into the light. She thanked the young Saiyan as the sun rays shined down on his face. Today was the day that Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kaze, descendant of the legendary Saiyan Goku had made his first mark as the future guardian of this world. Chapter 3, Ascension, Kiragakur Hospital Room 243 One of the nurses in the hallway of the hospital walked by one of the patient's room before awe. Get that needle away from me! Screamed a frantic Naruto and before she knew it the door came flying off its hinges courtesy of a medical nin who crashed into a wall and had the imprint of a foot on his face and the nurse seeks out in surprise as this happened. She looked inside the room only to see a 12 year old Naruto and sweat drops at the sight. He was in a hospital gown wearing some boxers underneath. Naruto had two med ninja and a single arm lock, the other one interlocked around his legs, and the last one was being strangled by his tail in a comical fashion and each of them were struggling to get out of his iron grip and with their faces going from blue to purple while a frantic nurse with a needle in her hand was standing at the sides wondering what to do. At first she tried to calm him down but when he bared his teeth, revealing a pair of lengthened canines and growled at her in an animalistic way, she instantly backed away, not wanting to get bitten by him. As this chaotic scene occurred, Mei was making one of her daily routes in the building, checking not just the injured rebels but even the enemy ninja. She saw one of the nurses helping one of the medical ninja up and realized that this was Naruto's room and size. As she entered the room she sweat drops at the sight and shakes her head in amusement. Mei-chan help me they're trying to give me shot, Naruto cried. Both the nurse and the four medical ninja were giving her a pleading look to help them so she decided to intervene. She knelt down next to him, leaned forward and kissed him on the lips, making the young Saiyan eyes widen in surprise and freeze at the contact. He lessened his grip on the four who managed to slip out of his grasp and inhale air at an alarming rate before rushing out the room while the nurse took this opportunity to give him the shot before leaving out the room. Mei ended the kiss and then looked down at the dazed warrior in training, placing her hands on her hips and having a look of amusement on her face. What am I gonna do with you Naruto-kun? Did you have to strangle four Madden into death and attempt to bite the nurse's arm off? They're just trying to help you get better. Naruto snapped out of his daze and had the gall to look sheepish. Sorry Mei-chan but I don't really like hospitals and tend to steer away from them especially needles. I hate needles, he said with a pout on his face while Mei giggles at his action. So what has happened to Yagura? He's alive but still recovering. He's lucky to even be alive after you hit him with that attack and it's mostly because the Sanbi took most of the blood force. She answered and wondered just how he pulled an attack of that magnitude off especially since it practically rivaled that of an Amari, menacing ball, one of the Bijou's most powerful and signature move. Naruto on the other hand nodded. Yeah that was my first time using that move on an opponent of Yagura's level and I also lessened that technique's attack power otherwise I would've not only destroyed Yagura and the village but also half of water country. He answered which made her eyes widen at the implication before realizing something. Naruto-kun if I may ask. What was that transformation you used when you fought Yagura? She wondered since the image of Naruto with golden hair, piercing teal eyes, and that golden aura was still fresh on her mind. Oh that? Well it's kind of a transformation my ancestor achieved a long time ago. Kind of like a Haidenjutsu, secret technique, as only members of my family can use but with a twist since it is more bloodline based and takes a while to gain and master. He explained. Mei on the other hand took the info in and nods. She knew he was leaving a few things out but she could understand that it was a family secret. I see. So that's how you were able to easily beat Yagura. She pondered and that was when Naruto chuckled in a sheepish manner. Actually if I wanted to I could have easily beat Yagura in my normal state without transforming but I didn't want to carry out the fight and try to reduce collateral damage before things went out of hand and to be honest I could have used another technique that would have increased my natural power but it would have done more harm than good since it puts a major strain on my body and if used too much, could actually cripple if not kill me so that's why I used my transformation instead. He explained. Mei remained silent for a while before shaking her head in amusement. You really are an enigma Naruto-kun. She replied back to the grinning Saiyan. Yeah so I'm told, he said back, before she knew it, he had placed his hands around hers surprising the russet haired Kunoichi. She then looked looked into his eyes and they radiated with warmth, kindness and love. Mei-chan I have to be honest. During the time I've been in Kiri and I've met you I sorta of gained a crush on you. He answered with a small blush on her face and her eyes widened at the confession. WH what? was her reply before he I smiled at her shocked form. Yeah at first it started off as what you would call puppy love due to the fact that I was entranced by how beautiful you were before getting to know a little more about you. 
When I saw how you kept charge of the rebels and how strong you were I was amazed but it was mostly because you were strong spirited and determined. You didn't care how the odds were against you and it was your desire to save your home that gave your comrades the strength to go on even when things looked bleak. Another fact is that you treated everyone in an equal manner and didn't see yourself as someone who is better than others and always put the lives of others above your own and that is why. I, have developed feelings for you. Mei just looked at Naruto with surprise in her eyes before she remembered his words. As she looked into his eyes she saw the sincerity of how much he wanted to get to know her and on a more personal level. She already knew of his clan status since he told her early on, and of how the CRA was undoubtedly gonna be pushed on him when he was older. Though that didn't mean anything to her, he has feelings for me, just like I do, thank you Kemi. She squealed in her mindscape while a chibi form danced around in her mindscape. Naruto that was, the most beautiful thing you've ever said to me and I am beyond flattered. Her cheeks grew pink and looked away slightly before looking back at him. I know this seems so strange especially with our age difference but seeing you fight Yagura and how strong-willed you were showed me that you were more of a man than you were a child as I have never met any male who is as strong-willed, fearless, or as kind-hearted as you. She confessed she then placed both of her hands on the sides of his face before leaning forward and capturing his lips into hers, surprising Naruto for a few seconds before he returned the passionate kiss and wrapped his arms around her waist and placed her on his lap. Several days later Karagakura main gate. Several days have passed since Naruto healed and spent his time with Mei and during that time rumors had already spread about his relationship with Mei, their newly instated Mizukage, and surprisingly the populace was happy for them, but was informed to keep it under wraps so other nations wouldn't find out. Also over the last few days Yagura managed to recover and woke up with confusion etched on his face. Mei wanted to see if what many thought were true. And if Yagura was just under a genjutsu of sorts and to their shock he was and since then the man isolated himself in the Anbu core but when he asked who it was that stopped him and was informed that it was Mei's guardian it was funny when the man met Naruto. Because Yagura was finding it very hard to believe he was bested by a 12 year old kid but when Mei showed him the construction site where there was a crater that was twice as big as the Sanbi and the fact that Naruto shot a Kamehameha wave into the ocean that created tsunami wave and shook the land from the force the beam was emitting. The man was officially convinced and was thanking Kami that Naruto showed him mercy even if he wasn't in control of his actions. At the gates a fully dressed Naruto was garbed in a new outfit where he wore a pair of black training gi pants and martial arts shoes with a dark blue shirt that had a black sash wrapped around his waist and black wristbands. Picture Goku's outfit at the end of the DBZ saga when he takes Ub to Kami's lookout, and also had a tan and black drawstring bag which he carried over his shoulder. Looking in front of him was Mei Terumi and Ao whom he had come to respect as a shinobi and fighter as well as Chojiro who apparently gained more courage and belief in himself especially after seeing Naruto who was younger than him take on the previous cage and defeat the man. But aside from that, Naruto did gain a slight shiver of terror when he felt the many lustful stares he was getting from the female populace that came to see him off both civilian and kunoichi alike while some of the males called him a lucky bastard for getting their attention so easily. Mei saw this and released a little killing intent on the women in order to stop their actions quickly lest they face the wrath of an angry russet-haired female. Naruto chuckled at her protective nature before turning his gaze back to Mei and lets a smirk cross his face. The woman he had no doubt loved was great to be with during his stay in Karagakura and during his time with her in the hospital room, they spent the time getting to know one another while getting closer to each other on a more personal level and it was a little heart-wrenching he had to leave her for now. I guess this is goodbye for now Mayheim but don't worry I will be coming back to pay you a visit, he said with a grin which Mei just matched with her own before she kissed him with the same love she had for him as he did. This seemed to get smiles from the crowd despite the age difference, Naruto really looked to be around his teens and how he looked physically they stayed like that for a few minutes and separated while leaning their heads against one another with soft smiles on their faces. Mei then placed her hand on his cheek and spoke in his ear. I'll see you soon, Naruko and next time we'll share more than a kiss she could in his ear seductively which earned her a blush from the Saiyan in training while Goku and Shenron chuckled at their student. Until then take care Lady Mizukage and rule well, he said as he rose into the air, waving at the crown before doing a two-handed salute and took off into the air as the people said goodbye to Naruto who disappeared into the clouds. Afterwards, Ananbu appeared beside Mei and handed her a bingo book that she opened up and turned to the page where Naruto was in his Super Saiyan form with the golden aura surrounding his body and flaring to life in a stance where he's performing the Kamehameha wave and it reads, Name. Son Naruto, I've got Naruto use Goku's surname instead of his parents for now, the Kogane Major Rao, Golden Warrior, Age, 12, Occupation, Unknown, Abilities Slash Bloodline, Abilities are unusual at best, 
but is able to fire energy blasts that are as damaging as any ninjutsu and ranges from being a single to multiple shot to one that is capable of rivaling if not surpassing a bijou's amari, menacing ball, and even powerful enough to harm a jin shuriki in his slash her bijou state. Also retains the ability to fly in a similar manner like the Nidaim and Sun Daimatsu Chikage Mew and Rai Utenbin no Aniki, Aniki of both scales, but is more versatile and move faster. Strength level is stated to be on par with that of Tsunade Senju and his speed apparently rivals that of Yondaime Reika Jayatsuki and late Yondaime Hokage Minato Namikaze. Possesses the ability to produce barriers made of energy that deflect incoming weapons and ninjutsu based attacks as well as use a technique that allows him to create an invisible yet powerful force of energy that is capable of knocking down a bijou or leveling a fortress with minimum effort. Is highly skilled with a bow staff and a katana. Taijutsu beyond cage level since he was able to best the Yondaime Mizukage. Genjutsu unknown. Kenjutsu, cage level. Ninjutsu, unknown. Kinjutsu, unknown. Ranks class was able to defeat the Yondaime Mizukage single-handedly and even fight on equal grounds with him in his bijou state. It was rumored he's punched through a ninjutsu with his bare hands and feet. History, unknown but is rumored in Wave that he crushed Gato and his army of mercenaries and prevented him from taking over Wave country and is considered a hero of the people. Bounty, Unknown. On sight, approach with caution. May smiled at the picture and looked back up at the sky where she saw her boyfriend take off in. You are truly an enigma, Naruto kun. If you're this strong now, then I can't wait to see how powerful you'll be in a few years as well as how handsome A you'll become. With Naruto, said teenage Saiyan was taking a stroll in the air before sneezing and wiping his nose with his fingers. Someone must be talking about me, and I bet it's Mei Chan. Naruto pondered while Goku chuckles in his mindscape. Hey Naruto I never got a chance to say how proud I am of you especially with how you were able to handle that bijou. Not only that but also you got together with me and I gotta say you are one lucky lucky person. Naruto on the other hand lets out an annoyed groan as he heard this. Uck, here we go again. Sometimes I wonder if you're a closet pervert or something sensei. No way. Chi Chi would beat me senseless in the afterlife if I was like that. He said frantically while his student snickered but could help but sympathize with the man. Hey your wife must be something else if she intimidating enough to scare you of all people sensei. I'd love to meet her, anyway sensei I've got an issue regarding my super saiyan form. You know how I gained it when you turned me into a full blooded saiyan right? Aha uh -huh, I do and I was gonna discuss that issue with you once you left Karagakur. You see Naruto while the super saiyan state makes you 50 times stronger than you'd naturally be. It also takes up a lot of energy and stamina thus you won't be able to maintain the state for too long. That and it makes you more aggressive personality wise and slightly alters your way of fighting. I too had the same issue when I fought Frieza after he killed my best friend Krillin out of spite for nearly killing him and I'll never forget that feeling, the insatiable rage and the way my blood boiled whenever I had that guy in my line of vision. It was like I was a whole different person and I almost lashed out at my son once for disobeying my order to leave the fight with Piccolo. It took whatever form of my old personality I had left to stay in control and the fact that it gave me a slightly sadistic side in that fight didn't help either. Goku explained to Naruto who mentally nodded as Goku continued, Now then around my time when me and my friends were facing creatures known as androids who were able to go toe to toe with super scions like me and Vegeta I was thinking of a way on how we could ascend to the next level. It took some time to ponder on this and I realized something that involved the first stage of a Super Saiyan. It was in a way similar to my Kaioken technique so I came up with a theory. Like it, the Super Saiyan stage requires a lot of energy to maintain even for a second but with a twist. The first stage makes the person a lot more aggressive and tense, forcing us to use more power than we need to so I was trying to come up with a way on how we could maintain the stage for an extended period of time and to the point where the transformation would seem natural for us. Naruto pondered on this for a second before realizing what Goku meant so for one example would be like how athletes train in aerobics for extensive periods of time experience heightened states of rest with their heart and respiratory rate being much lower than that of a normal person right? Exactly because the Super Saiyan form follows a similar fundamental concept. By remaining transformed for extended periods of time, the Super Saiyan can desensitize themselves to the negative effects of the transformation. Their wild emotions are kept in check, resulting in a more strategic fighting style, and key consumption is reduced to negligible amounts. Energy radiation is reduced in tandem, and the aura takes on a smoother, flow-like appearance. By mastering the transformation, the Super Saiyan is able to retain transformation almost subconsciously. Goku answered. So in other words, the key to this state is energy conservation rather than boosted energy output. That sounds. Ingenious Goku Sensei, if I could do that I wouldn't have to worry about wasting needless energy or having to power up more than I have to. Yep you hit the nail right on the head Naruto but the only problem is the amount of time it would take for you to master this state. Wait I got it. 
That made Naruto stop in his tracks in midair from his ancestors' excitement. What? What is it Goku-sensei? Naruto asked. The lookout, it's an excellent place to train at. Wait I don't even know if the lookout is still around or if there is a guardian who's watching the earth. Hey Shenron do you think it's still around? Goku asked the eternal dragon who nodded. Yes the lookout still exists since it is still in geostationary orbit in the skies of earth and will still be around until the end of time. I would suggest that you would go there Naruto because the lookout is one of the best options where Naruto can train at his fullest. Shenron suggested and started to send Naruto the coordinates of where the lookout was. Alright next stop the lookout. The lookout. Whoa this is amazing, this place looks like a floating palace. Naruto states as he lands on the platform and walks around. And whoever tends this garden has one heck of a green thumb. I've never seen any type of flora that has been taken care of this well aside from the ones in the Yamanaka flower shop. Naruto crouches down and inspects the flowers and herbs that were well kept. Why thank you, said a deep and calm voice that made Naruto jump up into the air in a surprised manner before looking down and staring at what appeared to be a dark-skinned big-lipped chubby male who wore a reddish-brown vest with no shirt underneath it with yellow armbands around his biceps. He wore a red sash around his waist that held a pair of white pair of pants in place with red shoes and he wore a type of tunic on his head with a blue gem on top and he had his hands behind his back. Greetings young man how may I help you? The short man asked in a polite tone while the preteen who descended back onto the ground. Oh hi there, sorry for intruding on your home like this. Naruto apologized. No need to apologize, you're more than welcome to stay since it's been a while since I had a guest on the lookout or had someone compliment on my green thumb. Hey it's Popo. Man it's been so long since I saw him and to think he's still around keeping the lookout as tidy as ever, Goku said in an excited manner. Popo? Naruto asked himself. Yes that is my name young man how did you know? Mr. Popo asked. Oh sorry I was thinking out loud because my sensei said he knew you. Naruto replied sheepishly. Oh? And who is your sensei exactly? Son Goku or I in my case Goku sensei since he is my ancestor and is training me to be the next guardian of the earth. Oh and I'm Naruto by the way. Naruto answered and Popo's eyes went wide for a few seconds and smiled. Goku huh? The last time I saw that young man he left the planet with Shenron after defeating the shadow dragons. Such spirited and energetic person he was. Popo commented as he remembered how he first met Goku when he was a kid and admired his confidence and desire to protect the innocent and strong will. So Naruto how can I be of assistance? Well for the past 5 years after I left my home, I spent my time traveling around the nations under Goku and Shenron sensei's guidance and honing my skill and getting stronger and... Well they mentioned that there was a place on the lookout where I could get a lot of training done easily within a few days at the very least since I'm learning how to transform and maintain my super saiyan state like he and his son did. Naruto explained to the Jin. Ah I see you wish to use the hyperbolic time chamber. It is the one place where you can get a huge amount of training done easily and not having to worry about the amount of days it would take. I would be willing to give you a tour of the lookout before you start your training. Popo offered. Sure I'd like that. Naruto answered back and followed Popo around the lookout. Needless to say Naruto was stumped when he saw how large the place looked on the outside than it did the inside and Popo took him around the place showing him areas like the pendulum room and teleporter and even told him a few story about the adventures Goku had as a kid. Afterwards, the two of them approached the door that led to the hyperbolic time chamber. To make this short Naruto this chamber is a completely different dimension where time runs at a very slow pace with one year in the chamber being equal to one day on the outside. Naruto was ecstatic about this. Naturally one could only remain in here for two days but during the years I upgraded the time to be at least around four to five days, Popo insisted as he opened the door. Everything you need is in the room young man and I wish you luck. Naruto grinned at the man and nodded. Thanks Mr. Popo and maybe afterwards, you could give me some tips on how to make my plants as green as yours since I too have a knack for gardening. Popo chuckled at this but nodded before Naruto walked into the room and closed the door. The hyperbolic time chamber has an entrance at its center. Located in a central building with two side wings with housing, food supplies, bathing quarters and sleeping quarters. There is no night or day in the room, but the surroundings remain a constant bright iridescent wider aura. Its reflective floor is of undefined area, and the room's boundaries are thought to stretch to infinity in all directions even though it appears to have a definite atmosphere, limiting its size. Man this place seems to carry on for miles. I better be sure and not get lost or else I'll be in trouble, so Goku Sensei. Care to give me a briefing of this place? Sure, the time dilation that occurs in the hyperbolic time chamber is one day of real time which is equivalent to one year in the chamber, or one minute of real time is approximately six hours in the chamber. 
there are dual giant hourglasses of emerald sand adorning the sides of the building that count down a year within the chamber. A clock on the dome roof of the main part of the building tells the applicable time in the real world. This essentially allows for someone entering the hyperbolic time chamber to get one year worth of intense training in a single day however the gravity in the hyperbolic time chamber living area is described as being different though it seems to not be much higher than Earth's gravity. The gravity of the training area is 10 grams which is basically 10 times the normal gravity of your planet. But thanks to your Saiyan abilities your body will be able to adapt to it depending on how long you reside in the current gravity. The temperature in the training area fluctuates rapidly, ranging between minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 40 degrees Celsius, and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. 50 degrees Celsius, and the air pressure is a quarter of Earth's which means the air here tends to grow denser the deeper one goes into the chamber so I would advise not going too far off until you've adjusted to the gravity. Goku explains to Naruto whistled in admiration, wow just wow. Well then I think I'll take an hour to relax for a while before I get started on my training and I can get to work on improving my calligraphy for my seals. He says and heads to the chambers to unpack. Five days later. Five years in the time chamber. Popo was in the process of polishing some antiques in one of the chambers of the lookout but then paused for a few minutes and smiled. He must be done. I better go greet him. With that the pointy-eared Jin made his way back to the area where the time chamber was. As soon as he got there, he heard the door creak open and smiles as he saw Naruto exit out of the place but completely different. Not only did it appear to be 15 but to his amazement, Naruto was now in the full-powered Super Saiyan form but was more relaxed. His facial features exhibit less tension and ferocity than the regular Super Saiyan form, which can be explained by the mastery over the key consumption and the emotional restlessness that the regular Super Saiyan transformation causes and his spiked-up hair appears in a more yellowish-white fashion. Also his clothes appeared to be torn and worn out from the intense training he went through and his muscles were more defined but not overly so. I must say Naruto I'm surprised that you stayed so long in the chamber like you did because when Goku first tried he couldn't even stay in there for a day, Popo stated while Naruto rubbed the back of his head in a sheepish manner. What can I say? I'm gifted. Naruto replied, Indeed, said another voice and walking around the corner was what appeared to be a white-furred anthropomorphic cat with slanted eyes and had a cane. Hey kid. The cat said while Naruto blinked owlishly. Whoa a talking cat. Say are you a summons because I have an aniki who can summon a talking dog and grandfather figure who can summon monkeys? Naruto asked the cat who remained silent. Summons? No kid I'm not. The name's Karin. An old friend of your ancestor Goku as well as one of his past teachers and I'm a martial arts master. Karin answered. Wait your Karin? Hey sorry but I never pictured you to be a cat, Naruto said in an honest tone while Karin grumbled for a bit but shrugged it off. Yeah I get that a lot. So I take it you spent the last five days in that chamber huh? Hey I'm beyond impressed. Goku couldn't last in there for even half a day and the guy looked like he was gonna keel over. Karin boasted while in Naruto's mindscape, Goku was curled up in the fetal position with a rain cloud over his head looking glum while Shenron chuckled at the man's childish antics. Hey hey those were the days, but anyways I just came by to see the future protector of the planet and I have to say, the planet's in good hands if you're this strong in this state. Thanks Karin-san, but I'm not just getting stronger to protect just the world, Naruto stated and the cat raised a non-existent eyebrow. Oh? Then what else is there my boy? Karn asked. I'm also doing this to protect the people I love because they are my inspiration to get stronger. Naruto answered back as the images of Kushina, Mito, Hiruzen, Kakashi, Rin, Anko Kurenai, Hana, Tsume, Yugao, Tuchi, and Ayame, Mikoto, Tsukina, and Hitomi appear in his mind. A sided smirk formed on Karn's face as he got his answer from Naruto. Ah yes Goku was the same way. He may have been an oddball but the guy had a heart of gold. Say Naruto if you don't mind would it be possible for me to get a small glimpse of your real power? Karin asked the young Super Saiyan who blinked a couple of times. Um are you sure Karin san I don't want to end up destroying the lookout for my power output. Naruto asked. Yeah just a small glimpse is all. He assured Naruto who looked a little unsure but then nodded before getting into his power up stance, like Goku did before the Cell games. Okay here goes. Naruto squeezes his fists while an outline of a golden aura formed around his body. Ha. His aura flared out around the area. The entire lookout glowed from the output of Naruto's strength. Above the lookout, the skies darkened and lightning crackled and rumbled across the clouds. Karin was gobsmacked at the energy output Naruto was releasing and couldn't believe it. Manthysis and the glimpse of his power. I feel sorry for whoever Makesh him go all out in a fight. Karin thought as he saw yellow electricity radiate around Naruto's glowing form before Karin spoke up. Alright Naruto that's enough. You're gonna make the lookout fall apart. 
he yelled out before Naruto powered down and remained in his relaxed form. Man that was insane I haven't felt a power that great since Goku fought Cell back in the day. I still can't believe that was only a glimpse of your power. Not even Goku's kid was this powerful when he was your age. Hey thanks Karin-san, that means a lot coming from Goku Sensei's mentor. Naruto thanked. A no problem kid so I take it you're gonna head back into the elementals to complete your traveling trip? Karin asked Naruto who nodded. Well then I think you're gonna need these just in case. Karin brought his arm around, revealing what looked like a medium sized sack. In this bag are special beans I created called Senzu beans which I personally grew. Take one of these when you're out of gas and not only will it restore you back to full strength but it'll keep you full for 10 days straight. He answered while tossing an astonished Naruto the bag. You're serious? Was all Naruto asked. Like a shark attack kid. Karin answered. Naruto remained stunned for a few minutes before snapping out of his stupor. Wow, well thanks. That was when Popo decided to speak up. Well then before you leave Naruto might I suggest getting rid of those tattered clothes first before you head out and continue your journey? Naruto looked at his clothes and smiled in a sheepish manner. So a few minutes later, Naruto changed into a spar he kept in his bag and then strapped the senzu beans he got from Karin to his belt and then says his goodbyes to the two and vowed to visit them whenever he got the chance. Later on, Naruto decided to take a break from training and heads over to Kami Nari no Kuni, Lightning Country to check out the sights and was currently walking around the village with his pack slung over his shoulder and was biting down on a stick of dango he bought from a dango shop earlier. As he did, the young Super Saiyan was unaware of the looks he was getting from some of the civilians especially the females but it was mostly due to his tail waving back and forth behind him. Hey is that a tail? Yeah it looks like it. You think the kid is some kind of demon like the Nibian Hachibi? Doesn't seem like it. Maybe it's some type of Keke Genkai. He is kind of cute and check out the muscles on his arms giggle where most of the whispers naruto would hear and couldn't help but chuckle inwardly before coming across a hot spring site i might as well i hear the hot springs here are very popular right now naruto was relaxing in one of the outdoor springs sighing contently as the warm soothing water worked its way on his muscles and removed the tension from them on the other side he could hear some of the females on the other side talking and giggling that was when he heard a different form of giggling that wasn't female like and was more perverted his eyes shot opened and narrowed them because from the trees was a white-haired man with binoculars sitting on a tree branch and grinning like he won the lottery. A pervert. Naruto growled out and was contemplating on knocking him out of the tree with a key blast but that would draw unnecessary attention to him which he didn't want but that was when a devious grin formed on Naruto's face and he hops out of the hot springs and dashes back inside to get changed. Afterwards, said young Super Saiyan was zipping across the tree branches like a blur before hiding behind another tree and looking over his shoulder turning his gaze onto the unaware pervert and a glint appears in his eyes. I think I have just the technique to use on this guy, Naruto says as he snickered in an evil fashion and channels a small amount of ki into his index and middle fingers and brings them together into a ram sign. Afterwards Naruto vanishes and appears behind the man and shouts. Take this you pervert, Naruto shouted, surprising the man who tried to turn around only for it to be in vain. Konoha Taijutsu no Ugi, Senen Goroshi. Leaf Village Secret Finger Jutsu. 1000 years of death, Naruto drives his key enhanced fingers into the man's rectum and sent him flying off the tree branch and lands into the women's side of the hot springs. Afterwards, Naruto busted out laughing as he heard the females scream pervert and proceeded to beat the crap out of the man while Goku and Shenron chuckled in amusement and afterwards, the blonde took off into the forest, leaving the man who was crying out for mercy at the female civilians and some kunoichi who were beating the crap out of him. Right now Naruto was sailing over the open ocean of lightning country with his back turned to the water and simply staring at the sky with his hands behind his head humming before his eyes shot open and stood straight up into the air and looks around. What was that feeling? It felt similar to the chakra from the Sanbi only it's stronger and the seems to be another one but is even weaker than the Sanbi's energy signature. He notices a speck far away and as he used his keen sight, he noticed an island in the middle of the ocean. It's coming from that island. I wonder if it's a residence for the Bija that live in Kami Nari no Kuni? Might as well check it out. With that Naruto zips towards the unknown island. Chapter 4, The Monkey, The Cat, and The Bull. Shima Game, Turtle Island. As Naruto flew towards the island, it got bigger and bigger until he saw the jagged rocky edges of the large land mass. The energy signatures are stronger now that I'm so close to the island. Naruto says to himself as he flew over the forest part of the island and descends towards the ground while his aura dissipates. After landing, he walks around the forest in a careful manner since he is in unknown territory. Man this forest reminds me of the one Anko chant showed me once when I was six. He commented before his senses alerted him and then leapt out of the way as a large appendage swung down at the area he was formerly at. 
Naruto landed back onto the ground in a fighting stance to see what it was that attacked him and his eyes widened as he saw a giant gorilla roaring at him and then rearing back, beating on his chest. Whoa now that's something you don't see every day Naruto commented and noticed the beast growling at him and then attempt to lunge at him. Whoa easy big guy I'm not looking for trouble. Naruto assures the gorilla who stops his lung and stared down at Naruto before getting on all fours and leaning down before the sheepish blonde. Hey sorry for spooking you like that buddy. Naruto apologized before the giant ape blinks a few times and then sniffs Naruto a few times and notices the monkey tail before scratching the top of his head in confusion. Ooh ooh. The giant gorilla grunted out. The name's Naruto uh. Hmm what kind of name would suit you Naruto pondered in this before smiling. I know. I'll name you Kong. What do you think? The Super Saiyan asked the now named Kong who pondered on the name before grinning and nodding. Great Kong it is then. Kong grunted in acknowledgement before bringing his fist forward before Naruto and said blonde was confused at the gesture before realizing what he was doing. Oh that's your sign of wanting to be friends. Naruto did the same gesture before bumping fists with a large ape who grunts in an excited fashion until they both heard what sounded like a female screaming. What was that? Naruto wondered before Kong's eyes widened and took off. H hey Kong wait up, he cried out before leaping onto a tree branch and hopping from each one before Kong stopped in his tracks and Naruto lands before giant ape. Before their eyes was what appeared to be a female and from the looks of it was around 14 years old. She had blonde hair and blue eyes that were cat-like with a thin slit in each of them and had a slender build. Her hair was tied into a braided ponytail and her outfit consisted of a grey and white shirt that hugged her body with a pair of black pants and purple sandals and strapped to her belt was a weapons pouch and right now she was fighting a giant bear that was standing on its rear legs and bellows at her with a roar before bringing his giant paw at her. The girl manages to leap away as the paw slammed down on the area she was formerly at. She landed down and the bear rushes at her again. The female blonde gets into a fighting stance with her nails extending and turning into claws while a violet blue chakra surrounded her form. She getting prepared to attack only for Naruto to appear over the giant bear's head with his right leg raised and brings it down, delivering a falling axe kick to the bear's skull, knocking him to the ground and causing the area to tremble from the strength behind the attack. The teenage girl's eyes bugged out and her jaw dropped to the ground as she saw the mysterious blonde appear out of nowhere who appeared to be around her age and knocked the bear out. Kong clapped his hands with glee as he saw Naruto knock the bear out while the blonde lands back on the ground with his duffel bag slung over his shoulder. Hope I didn't hit the fella too hard, he muttered before turning his attention to his fellow blonde and wave in a cheerful fashion. Yo! Naruto greeted. Before she had a chance to say something several more bears leapt out of the forest and towards Naruto who looked up to see the large body masses descend towards his person and land on top of him. The girl's eyes widen in horror as the bears pile on the blonde until something that even she couldn't believe happened. The seven giant bears were lifted into the air by one hand courtesy of the golden-haired Super Saiyan. Sorry fellas but I don't have time to sumo wrestle with you all. Naruto states to the stumped bears before slowly rising into the air, causing the other two's eyes to widen to the size of dinner plate and point at him as he took off into the air. A few minutes later, Naruto descended back into the area Kong and the girl were in. Hey are you alright? Naruto asked the girl who was simply sputtering and looking at him comically. Naruto blinked a few times before rubbing the back of his head smiling. I take that's your first time seeing someone fly right? Said girl snapped out of her stupor and suddenly appeared in Naruto's personal space. How in the name of Kami did you do that? The only person who was able to knock out a giant bear of that size was my sensei and his brother and how can you fly? Um wouldn't it be better if we introduce ourselves first? Name son Naruto but just call me Naruto. The girl blinks a few times before smiling sheepishly. Sorry the name's Yugito Ni, so how did you fly anyway? She asked again getting a sweat drop from Naruto. Talk about getting straight to the point. Naruto thought. Well I learned how to fly from my sensei and trust me it's not that easy to learn. He answered before Kong walked towards the two. Yugito then noticed a golden brown appendage swaying behind Naruto's back which happened to be his tail which got her attention. I is that a tail? An astonished Yugito asked Naruto who gazed at his tail and nodded. Yeah that's my tail. He answered back as it swayed around some more. Kawaii. Yugito squealed in her mindscape before realizing something. Wait how did you find this island anyway? It's protected by a powerful barrier and even if you flew here, you would have been detected by your chakra signature, she stated as she looked at Naruto in a suspicious manner. Oh? This island is surrounded by a barrier because I didn't sense anything emitting from it. Plus I didn't use chakra to fly I used a different form of energy called chi. Naruto answered back. Chi? I've never heard of it. Is it like a keke gankai? 
she asked, no light chakra it's an energy that lies deep within a person with the difference being that she is more versatile and any can awaken it unlike chakra what you have to awaken when you're at a certain age. He explained to Yugito. Aside from that, the reason I'm on the island is because I sense two powerful energy signatures coming from it and from the looks of it the first one is very close, Naruto said as he looked around the area. Yugito on the other hand tenses up when she heard him say that he sensed the chakra of her tenant the Nibi no Bakaneko, two-tailed cat monster and said Bijou's eyes widened as she realized that earlier this boy was the one responsible for that energy output she felt back when the skies darkened. That boy's power is on par with a Bijou. I highly doubt that even Yugi-chan could take him on even if she manages to master my tailed form. Hachibi might be able to inflict some damage but even then, he'd still lose. She thought, hmm, it's gone now but I can still sense the stronger form of energy if only slightly. Naruto then looked back at Yugito before realizing something. Hold the phone, Goku-sensei, earlier when I landed the energy output from one of the bijou had a secondary energy signature right? Yep it sure did Naruto. I was able to sense the secondary output and Yu-Gi-Do matches it. Goku answered back and Naruto's eyes widened since he knew what this meant. She's a Jinchuriki just like Mito-chan. Naruto realized, say yu gi -Oh, by any chance are you a vessel? He wondered and noticed her tensing up. What makes you think I am? She asked with an edge tone in her voice before he brought his hands up. Whoa easy I'm not gonna attack you or anything I was just wondering because I can sense a secondary source of energy from within you. He answered back. Yugita looks at him in a skeptic manner before calming down. To answer your question yes I am a vessel. Why are you one as well? She asked the blonde who shook his head. No but someone close to me is. He answered as Mito's image appeared in his thoughts. I see. But tell me this Naruto-kun. She blushed slightly from the suffix she used before shaking it off. What are you doing on the island in the first place? This is a training ground that the ninja from Kumo use and even then no one less at the level of a Joni or Anbu enters the island due to its dangers. She wondered. He was about to say something before his senses went on full alert and leapt back as a thin double-edged short sword covered in lightning chakra descended past his cheek, slightly nicking the side of his face. What the Naruto wandered before a vicious clothesline to the chest sent him flying through several trees and the forest. Rariato, Lariat, the figure cried out and it landed in front of a surprised Yugito. The person had dark skin and a muscular build, as well as blonde white hair and a goatee. On his right shoulder, he has a tattoo of the kanji for iron, Tetsu, and on his left cheek, he has a tattoo of a bull's horn. His top lip also has a slightly darker hue than his bottom one. Over his eyes were a pair of oval-shaped sunglasses and a white-colored forehead protector and wore a one-strap over one-shoulder flak jacket, a long, red rope belt tied around his waist, standard hand and shin guards, shinobi sandals, and a white scarf around his neck as well as carried seven swords on his back. Take that Sarugaki, monkey brat, for no one on assaults the deshi of the all-powerful Hachibi Jinchuriki Kirabai. We. Oui. Killer B rapped as he raised his right arm up doing a hand gesture where his index and pinky finger stuck out in a horned fashion while his middle and ring finger as well as his thumb were curled up in his palm. Yugito managed to snap out of her stupor and then drop kicks the man in the back of his head but doesn't budge from it. Kirabai sensei Yubaka. What is wrong with you? Said man turned his head at his mad apprentice with a confused expression on his face. What's the deal yo? He asked while Yugito's brow twitched. What's the deal? You attacked Naruto-kun for no apparent reason. Do you ever think before you act? Shid yelled at the man who simply scratched his chin with his index finger. Who the hell is Naruto? -o? He was cut off from his sentence due to the fact that he was struck across the face by a duffel bag and lands on his back. I'm Naruto. The Super Saiyan answered as he walked out of the forest completely unharmed, twirling the man's blade in his hand. What the hell's your problem? You just don't go around attacking people for no apparent reason you bullheaded jerk. Yugito on the other hand sweat dropped at his response as did Nibi. Naruto then simply flicked the blade which landed beside Kirabai with the blade embedded on the ground. Nice sword by the way. Whoever forged it was incredibly skilled and sharpened the blade's edges to the point where it could easily cut through stone. Yugito's sweat drop grew as he said that. Is he serious? Sensei just lariats him through several trees and he walks out of it without a bruise or scratch on him. She thought. B on the other hand sat up rubbing the left side of his face. Ow. I actually felt that yo. He threw that bag with just raw strength. This kid is no pushover. Kirabai yelled slash thawed while the Hachibi snorted. No shit baka. If could do that with a simple bag imagine what he could do if he had thrown a tree at you? The hybrid tail beast commented. My bad yo. Didn't know if you were friend or foe and big bro would have my head if anything had happened to our niece Yugito. Kirabai apologized as he dusted his pants off, 
not noticing the tick mark appearing on Yugito's head. Naruto blinks owlishly for a few seconds as did his teachers. He's an odd one. Shenron commented while Goku chuckles. I'll say he kinda reminds me of the Grand Kai minus being old and all. Goku replied and they witnessed the man approaching Naruto and brought his fist forward with a grin on his face. So are ye cool ya fool? Kirabai asked. Naruto noticed the gesture was the same one Kong used earlier and then brought his fist forward as well and they both tapped knuckles. Yeah we're cool. So you must contain the stronger of the two Bija since you did mention the Hichibe right? Naruto asked the shades wearing sword user who nodded with a proud grin on his face. That's right yo, me and Atho are the dynamic duo of Kumo. He states, not noticing Yugito who was slumping her shoulders and hanging her head in defeat. Why Kami? Why do you torment me so? It's bad enough having a short-tempered uncle but a rapping one at that. She thought with anime tears streaming down her face. The oxcephalopod on the other hand was banging his head on the floor repeatedly. Make the rapping stop. The eight tails wailed in the man's train of thought. Naruto on the other hand simply rubbed the back of his head in confusion and wonder due to the fact that he always ended up meeting the strangest people in his travels. So after that little event Kirabai decided to head back to his vacation home in the forest and welcomed Naruto to stay as his guest until he decided to leave. A week later, Naruto was in the middle of the forest, meditating in the lotus style while Kong was snoring a few feet away from him. He remained calm and relaxed in his state and that was when yugi Ito leapt out of the trees and landed in front of him. She frowned when she noticed that he didn't jump out of his state in surprise and huffs before sitting cross-legged in front of him with her arms folded. Said Saiyan was chuckling inwardly as he knew the vessel of the two-tailed Nico always tried to go out of her way to try and scare him but sadly nothing worked. Despite that. Throughout the week Naruto and Yugito got to know each other but only on a friendship level even though she would blush a little due to the fact that she saw him exercising without a shirt on and was even shocked beyond belief when she saw him easily out-wrestle the giant animals of the forest especially when he encountered Kong's father king. The one person that intrigued Naruto the most was mostly Kirabai. Despite his antics, Kirabai was a very powerful ninja even when he didn't use his partner's powers and proved by sumo wrestling several bears simultaneously and come out on top but what impressed Naruto the most was the man's sword style which consisted of amusing several swords that were interlocked around the most bizarre parts of his body but despite that, he was still able to use this form in a mixture of a defensive and offensive pattern that was extremely unpredictable. He also learned that Yugito was learning to how to fully synchronize with the Nibi in order to use her power at the fullest by not only conquering her dark side and negative feelings but also facing Nibi in her mindscape. Kirabai had to go through the same situation with the Hachibi and in the end succeeded and therefore had developed a partner for life. Naruto was wondering if it would be possible for Mito to harness the abilities of the Vixen on this island but decided to save that for later. Kirabai on the other hand was beyond impressed with the Super Saiyan in both his skills and personality and had to admit Naruto was a very intriguing person. What impressed the man the most was his physical strength and his speed as he had also seen Naruto outmatch the animals in the forest in terms of raw strength rather easily and knew he wasn't using chakra to supplement his strength. He knew from the way Naruto carried himself that he must have trained extremely hard to gain his current level of speed and strength and wondered between him and his brother who would be the better. So after seeing him train and using 10 ton weights with little effort he decided that he was gonna test the kid's skill out by the end of the week. Are you sure you wanna go through with that B? Hachibi asked his enthusiastic vessel who was sitting on his muzzle. You bet yo. Kirabai answered back. I figure you Ujibaka, he muttered though you have to admit, something about that kid is off especially his level of strength. Kirabai raised a brow from behind his shades and looks down at the hybrid, such as? Kirabai wondered. His energy for one thing, it is similar to chakra but isn't either. It's a lot more free-flowing and can actually be seen. Human chakra cannot be seen unless it's condensed into a physical form like the Yondai Maze Rasengan or the chakra cloak of a vessel. From what I theorize, he's using a more advanced form of energy it continues to grow the more he trains. Hachibi explained to the rapping ninja, well when you put it that way. The kid's energy signature is odd but hey the killer bee is ready for anything oh yeah, he stated, while Hachibi sweat drops. If I'm lucky the Gaki will kill us by accident and I'll be free from this Baka and his accursed Enka. The hybrid thought and prayed. The next day, a flabbergasted Yugito was looking at Naruto like he had lost his mind. The reason for that is because her sensei killer B had Naruto to a one on one fight so that he could measure up the blonde skills which Naruto agreed upon instantly due to the fact that he would get to face someone who was possibly even stronger than Yagura was. Naruto, are you nuts? You actually want to fight Kiro by sensei? Do you want to die? She asked frantically while the young Super Saiyan was doing a few stretches. We're just having a simple spar, Yugito chan. Besides if I ever want to get better I have to face stronger opponents, 
he stated as he did a few one-armed handstand push-ups. Yugi Ito on the other hand still didn't look convinced. But he's the strongest ninja in Kumo second to his brother and that's even when he doesn't use the power of the Hachibi. She tried to get through to him, really? Wow he must be a real powerhouse then if he doesn't rely on the power of his bijou. Naruto wandered before a grin formed on his face. I can't wait to face him and the Hachibi. Hopefully I'll have to actually try then when I face the Sanbi. He hoped, unaware that Yugito's eyes bugged out when she heard him say he fought and defeated the three-tailed turtle. You beat a bijou. No way, she shouted in disbelief. No lie Yugito-chan. I fought the Sanbi and the vessel and beat them both. He said in an honest tone while rolling his right arm clockwise. Yugito on the other hand blinked a few times and could tell by the look in his eyes that he was telling the truth. So do you think you could beat the Hachibi? She questioned the young Super Saiyan who was doing a few arm stretches and relaxes his posture. He thinks about it for a few seconds and simply shrugs. Honestly I don't know. He answered back to the female blonde. I mean Sanbi was the only bijou I've fought so far and I have no idea how strong the Hachibi is but I'm pretty sure he's no pushover especially if B is his container. Naruto then smiled sheepishly and looked up the sky, but I'm pretty positive I'll have some difficulty fighting the guy but hey, if he is stronger than me that just means I'll just have to up my training then. yugi was stumped at how jovial Naruto was acting. Anyone who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bijou and live would have boasted about it but Naruto was entirely different. She knew firsthand that Naruto was stronger than her even when they spared during the week but despite that, Naruto would only encourage her to spar with him more and even complimented her on her progress. Besides everyone loses in a fight every now and then so if your sensei does beat me then it's no big deal. He answered back with a smile on his face. Yugito couldn't help but blink owlishly at Naruto before smiling. You know what? You're okay in my book Naruto-kun. I mean most guys would brag about beating either me or Akira by sensei but you're truly a humble person. She said and lightly punches him in the shoulder. Thanks, say your sensei said to meet him in the open field right? Naruto asked the female blonde who nodded. Awesome let's meet him there. He turns around and Yugito jumps on his back, wrapping her arms around his neck and her legs around her waist before he takes off into the air with her squealing in joy. Meanwhile, Killer B was standing in the middle of the field with his arms folded waiting for Naruto before looking up and sees Naruto landing on the ground with a giggling Yugito on his back. That was awesome. Let's go again. An excited Nibi cheered while Yugito hopped off Naruto's back. Thanks for the lift Naruto-kun, no matter how many times I go through this, I just love flying. The blonde Jinchuriki said in an excited tone. Naruto smiled back and then turned his attention to B. So B-san you ready to rumble? Naruto asked and his answer was the dark-skinned man grinning and getting into a wrestling stance. Bring it Sargaki. Killer B challenge and Naruto got into his fighting stance as well. The two stared off for a while waiting for the first person to make the first move. Naruto shifts his feet and flexes his fingers while B did the same. Yugito watched the scene and could feel the pressure emitting from the air and couldn't help but feel excited about the battle that was about to start. Both fighters were focused, leaving no form of doubt in their eyes. The staring match ended when B grinned and the two suddenly vanished in a blur of speed. Yugito's eyes widened at what happened before hearing a collision occur. She saw both Naruto and B in a grappling match with each one trying to overpower the other with raw strength. Both were gritting their teeth as their muscles flexed from the battle of strength. B noticed that his heels were digging into the ground as Naruto started to slowly push him back. What the? He's actually pushing Sensei back. A bewildered Yugito thought. Killer B grits his teeth as he tries to stop but then he rears his head back. Hadobato, headbutt. He swung his head forward at Naruto who reacted by letting go of B's hands and flipping over him causing the man to miss and ends up getting struck in the back of the head by Naruto foot. Said Saiyan flips in midair and lands back on the ground while Killer B stumbled forward a few times before stopping and rubs the back of his head, turning his gaze at Naruto who was in the same fighting stance, like the one Goku uses, with a smirk on his face. Looks like I landed the first hit, Naruto stated, getting a smirk from B. He held back on that kick. Had he added a little more force I'd be in La La Land. The rapper thought before vanishing in a burst of speed. Naruto leaned backwards as B attempts to lariat him by surprise and the he spins around in order to deliver a reversal roundhouse kick at the Saiyan's head, only for it to phase through Naruto. He raised a brow at this before he duck as Naruto flies over him with a flying drop kick before landing back onto the ground again. Yugito was now wide-eyed at what happened. Whoa, earlier he moved at a level of speed so great, he left an after image and I didn't even see his body movement, she whispered to herself. He's so fast, I'll say. Only your uncle A was capable of moving at such speed and the same went for the Yondame Hokage Minato. After he passed on, 
I became known as the fastest ninja alive. Sure B may have attained the speed to keep up with him, but A is still faster than him. Nibi explained to her vessel. But there is something different about him. Something not of this world. She narrows her eyes in curiosity wondering about Naruto's scent which wasn't human at all nor did he smell like a demon. Naruto then proceeded to sprint towards Killer B at an astonishing speed, surprising the man at how fast he was moving. He was about to meet Naruto's charge only for the teenager to phase through him again. What the? What's with all the running yo? Are we gonna get our fight on or run a marathon? He asked out loud as he looked around for Naruto but stopped as he felt something land on top of his head. I'm up here big guy. Naruto replied with a grin on his face. B's brow twitched due to the fact that Naruto was using his head as a stoolie. Not cool yo using my head as a stool, he shouted. B attempts to grab Naruto who vanished once again and appeared in front of B's unprotected form with his arm cocked back and drove it into the man's torso. Yugito's eyes widened as she saw him land a blow on the Kumo Nin's frozen form with a focused look on his face. Bad move killer B-san, leaving yourself open like that. Naruto chastised in a serious voice while pulling his fist out. While B didn't show he was screaming out on the inside at the punch Naruto delivered in the only show of reaction was a bead of sweat falling from his brow. Oh sweet Kami that hurt. IT feels like Big B.R.O. just punched me in the gut just now yo. He wailed in his mindscape. Stop your belly aching B. Hachibi chastised before snickering at the jab he used, much to B's irritation before getting serious. You should be thankful for your body's tolerance and durability level because any other ninja, Jinshuriki or not would have keeled over from a punch of that magnitude besides, the Gaki held back on that punch and for a good reason. That doesn't make me feel any better yo. My insides feel like jello and my bones are rattling and last I checked they don't do that. He stopped his ranting on pondered on something before grinning. Maybe I should stop fooling around and show the Gaki the Eight Sword. Hachibi on the other hand nods in agreement with B. I agree, we don't know the magnitude of this boy's power especially if he was able to beat the vessel of the sand B so easily. The hybrid theorized. I would advise using version 2 of your cloak form if you want to at least land a decent hit on him. Killer grunted in agreement before exiting his mindscape. Right now he let out a breath of air while lightly patting his stomach form the punch Naruto delivered. I have to say yo. That was a sweet move you did there. No one short form my brother has ever hit me that hard before. He praised before a serious expression formed on his face. Playtime's over Naruto, you're about to get a first hand experience against the Eight Sword. Yugito gasps when she heard this and now was worried. He's gonna use that against Naruto? What is he thinking? B on the other hand grinned as reddish brown like chakra started to form around his body. Get ready for the fight of your life Gaki because I'm about to release the Eight Sword, he declared. Naruto watched at a chakra cloak erupted around the man who was grinning while eight chakra tails swayed behind him. Naruto's eyes widened as he felt the chakra levels this man possessed. Whoa he's even stronger than Yagura is in that form and if his first version is this strong. He watched as the tails formed around him, turning into a dome of chakra before erupting into a burst of energy and was now in his version 2 form. The version 2 chakra cloak is much darker than version 1 because in this form. B was more muscular and the chakra was reddish brown. Two horns protruded from his head with a black face like structure and his eyes glow a neary white color as did his mouth. Behold the eight sword of the Hachibi Jinchuriki. We, Kiribai roared, releasing a shock wave so powerful that it scattered dust and rocks everywhere. Naruto brought an arm up in order to protect his face from the debris. Incredible, his roar alone is powerful enough to cause this much damage? I might have to use more power than I first thought. Naruto thought as the dust settled. Killer B raised his arms in the air for a few seconds before bringing them down hard. The ground underneath them started to rumble, resulting in a crater spreading outwards. Naruto looks down as he saw the earth under his feet cracks and leaps away as it rose up and exploded, revealing a pair of dark brown red arms. Kiyarabi smirks in a creepy fashion as another arm sprouted from the right arm and descends toward him. Naruto lands on the ground and vanished as the extra arms hit the ground before it rises up again and tries to attack him in a repeated process. He then skids back while forming a yellow ball of ki in his right hand as the hand descends towards him. Naruto throws the energy ball at the hand and when it made contact, a small explosion occurred, destroying the chakra arm. His senses went on high alert and dodged a horizontal slash to his chest and somersaults over Kiribai who spins around and launches his eight tails at the Saiyan. He evades several tail swipes and stabs with his impressive agility and reflexes before landing on the ground and leaping backwards several feet, surprising B. Don't think that running away will help you Gaki, he stated before charging at Naruto. Naruto on the other hand smirks. Who said I was running? He said as he turned around and got into an odd stance. 
he sways his arms around his body while he produces a blue flame-like aura and then, he draws his hands out to his sides and closes them into fists as he crosses his arms on his chest. Let's see how you handle this thunder flash attack. Naruto draws his fists together in front of him and fires a huge storm of flames at the transformed ninja. Yugito's eyes widen when she watches the attack travel through the field, scorching the earth and grass with the heat alone. Killer B skids to a halt with a gobsmacked expression on his face as he saw the attack come upon him and T great accuracy. Holy shit, too late to dodge or counter. He screamed before he was engulfed by the attack. The flames shot outwards around the area before dissipating and leaving waves of smoke that rose from the area the shades wearing wrapper was at. When it cleared, it revealed Kirabai who was sprawled out on the ground but with singes on his clothes and some burn marks on places like his arms, legs, etc. before his healing factor started to slowly heal him. Yugito's jaw hung downwards as she saw the damage the technique did not only to her uncle but to the surrounding area. Whoa what an attack! She whispered in awe while Nibi nodded in her mindscape in agreement. Naruto on the other hand was impressed and watched Killer B slowly get back on his feet while healing and whistled lowly. Wow this guy is resilient. From what I can tell his cloak took at least half of the damage from the technique Sensei taught me. If it were the other way he'd be in serious trouble even with his bijou healing his body. He summarized though in reality Naruto actually held back a lot on that technique because he didn't really want to damage to force that was at the edge of the field. Goku on the other hand was impressed with how Naruto was able to control the thunder flash technique he learned from Paikon to such a level which proved that Naruto's control in his ki has improved a lot since their training in the hyperbolic time chamber. B got up panting slightly from the attack with a smile on his face. Despite how the fight was going he helped but be thrilled to fight some who could actually make him fight more than he usually did. Hey the Gaki's awesome. No one short of my brother has ever made me go this far and that technique was off the chain. Were it not for version 2 I'd be in real pain. I can't believe he made you revert back in your current for with that technique. B you're gonna need to fully transform if we want to actually get a decent hit on the tailed Gaki and whatever you do don't let him hit you with that move otherwise you'll get roasted. Hachibi warned his vessel and got a mental nod from Killer B who finally manages to fully heal. Say no more Edo because the time for playing is over yo. He cried out before turning his attention to Naruto who was blinking in confusion as the man pointed to him with a grin on his face. Your victory I will negate. From his back eight tentacles slowly sprouted out and enlarged. With my transformation I will eradicate. His body started to shift and ripple before a cloud of smoke formed around my true transformation will be your plight as the power of the Hachibi will unleash its might. The smoke erupted outward and when it cleared, it revealed the true form of the Hachibi no Kyogyu, eight-tailed Gaintox. The Bijou had four long horns on its head, similar to that of a Jacob sheep. The lower left part of one of its horn was permanently sliced off in a battle with A and his father. It also has a muscular upper body structure, with a hunched back similar to an American bison arms with spiked protrusions on the elbows, and hands with opposable thumbs like that of a human. It has no hind legs but instead its lower half is made up of its tails which consist of eight tentacles that resemble the cephalopod arms of an octopus. Naruto gaped as he stared at the gargantuan form of the creature before him that snorted steam from its muzzle. It wasn't the size that got to him, it was the unbelievable amount of chakra this force of nature possessed. Kami. His chakra levels are unbelievable. The Sanbi doesn't even compare to this guy. He muttered before a smile filled with excitement and thrill formed on his lips. Hey, hey, hey this might prove to be a challenge for me, Naruto said as his eyes shined in excitement. Yugito was on a rock texture and didn't look as thrilled as Naruto did. That baka, Uncle A warned him about transforming into his final form but B would be the type to ignore his warnings even if he used the iron claw on him. She turned her gaze to Naruto who was standing before the behemoth with a worried expression on his face. Be careful Naruto-kun I don't know how strong you really are but in this form. Sensei is unstoppable. Get ready for the thrashing of a lifetime Gaki. I'll send you packing and crying for the Sinigami. We, oui, he bellowed before raising his arm up and swinging down at Naruto. Said Saiyan vanished in a burst of speed while the fist smashed into the ground and he appeared beside the beast's face with his fist reared back only to go sailing as a blur struck him from behind and sent him flying backwards in the air a few feet before stopping himself and rubs his back. Oh man that smarts. Naruto complained and shook the throbbing sensation off. I guess those tentacles aren't for show after all. He's not only bigger but his speed isn't even affected at the least. With that Naruto flies at the transformed killer bee who howled back and fires several globs of black ink with electricity arching around it, forcing Naruto to evade several of them and notice the electricity. Oh man I better not get hit by any of those. Another one sails towards him and Naruto fires an energy blast. When they make contact they explode on collision. 
Naruto suddenly appears above Hachibi's head with an energy ball in his hand and fires it. The hybrid sees it and swats it to the side and Naruto uses the distraction to appear under its jaw and attempt to uppercut the beast in the jaw but had to dodge another tentacle that attempts to smash him into the ground and appears once more while another one attempts to hit him. Naruto maneuvers over it with his hands raised over his head with the palms facing the target and one hand in front of the other with the fingers going in opposite directions. Masenko ha, he cried out while thrusting his arms forward releasing a yellow beam of energy. Hachibi brings an arm up and blocks it with one hand and grunts from the strength behind it. Naruto narrows his eyes and pushes more energy into the attack, making it slightly bigger. B grunts as he tries to stay his ground but feels himself getting pushed back from the attack and is forced to use both palms in order to stand his ground. The young Saiyan once again adds more power behind it and the beam grows in width. Grrrrrr. B snorts in frustration as he felt himself getting pushed back even more. We. Using his newfound strength he pushes his arms upwards releasing the attack into the air where it explodes into a flash of light before disappearing. Nice try little money but it'll take more than that to knock down the grade he didn't get to finish his sentence because Naruto landed on his muzzle with a grin on his face. Here's light in your eyes. He called out. Naruto brought his hands close to the center of his face with the fingers spread toward his eyes. Solar flare. Suddenly a blinding white light flashes outwards and surrounds both Naruto and B. Yugito saw it spreading out and covers her face with her hands as the light shine brightly. When it dies down, B was clutching his eyes and howling in pain. Ah! My eyes! My eyes! He wailed out as he thrashed around with his tentacles smashing the ground and shaking the earth. Hiya! Naruto descended from the air and delivers a bone-shattering axe kick that impacts with the beast's skull, putting him in a daze and stumbles. He then spins and hit him in the side of the jaw with a reversal roundhouse kick and B ends up spitting out saliva. Naruto then vanished and appeared next to one of the thrashing tentacles and grabs it. He then starts to rise into the air, pulling on the large appendage and starts to lift B into the air. Naruto grit his teeth and flies up even harder with his opponent. B on the other hand gets his vision back and realizes that he's rising in the air. Yo Edo I didn't know you could fly yo. This caused a tick mark to form on the hybrid's horned head. Baka I can't fly. The Gaki is lifting us into the air, Hachibi roared. The transformed bee snapped out of his stupor and realized that he was being lifted into the air by Naruto who then stopped and his aura flared to life. He started to grunt slightly as he pulled back and started to spin the guy slowly around the air by his tentacle before the speed increased. As the pace increased, he ended up creating a twister around them for a while before swinging his opponent upward into the air, resulting in bee flailing his arms and tentacle as he ascended into the air. Akami I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I'm going to throw up and then I'm gonna die, he cried out. Naruto then appeared over the flailing ninja. B looked up to see Naruto with his fist reared back and electricity arcing around his arm. Oh this is gonna hurt like hell. B muttered. Naruto then swung forward and delivered a powerful punch on B's jaw, causing the entire area around them to shake violently while B went free falling down to the unforgiving ground at high speeds. As he made contact, dust erupted from the ground forming in a mushroom-like shape and the entire area shook violently from the aftershock. Yugito was struggling to keep her footing as the earth shook underneath her feet and flailed her arms around frantically. For goodness sake can this get any more violent? If this keep up they're gonna split the island apart, she yelled out before tripping and falling on the ground face first. This action caused Nibi to laugh her ass off at the action. Shut up it's not funny. She screamed mentally as she got up and rubbed her injured nose. As the dust settled down, Naruto descended downwards, landing on the ground softly while B was covered in rubble. Man I hope that fall didn't kill him. Maybe I went to high when I carried him off. He pondered until the ground started to rumble. Naruto turned his head in the direction where the 20 foot wide and deep crater was and B and his Bisha form rose up roaring at the sky. Ra, he bellowed before slamming his fists into the ground on the cracks. Do you think I'll let you get away with that brat? I'm gonna stomp a hole in your head for this. Gra. He opened his mouth widely which got the attention of the Saiyan. Black chakra started to form into a large sphere before compressing into a smaller shape. As Yugito got back up, she felt the large amount of chakra being created and her eyes widened in horror. No. Sensei you're going too far, she whispered before looking around for cover. And the closest thing was a trench. She made a mad dash for it and dived into it. Naruto watched as his foe was gathering chakra and curiosity. Naruto. Don't let that attack hit you. The power in that move is of the charts. Don't get caught in its range. Goku screamed to his student whose eyes widened as the hybrid reared its head back. Crap I don't have enough time to get out of the range. He screamed as his foe shot his head forward. No choice. 
Naruto's golden aura flared to life as B fires a concentrated beam of energy which then engulfed the young Super Saiyan. The beam shot through the area before the beam widened and then an explosion occurred erupting outwards and the whole island was shaking violently. Yugito was curled up in the trench as the shaking rocked the island while a large cloud of dust rose in the air. Once it died down the effect from the Amari, menacing ball, resulted in a wide and extremely deep trench stretching outwards in a straight line, leading from the field to the forest area where a 40-foot wide and 20-foot deep cratered form with dust still rising from it. The blonde Kunoichi popped her head out of the trench she was behind and her eyes widened from the results and stared at the dust cloud rising from the forest area. No. Naruto-kun. She trembled fearing for the worst while tears brimmed around her eyes, praying that he wasn't dead. Nibi remained silent before her vessel who was trembling before her senses picked something up and her eyes widened. Kitten. Kitten. He's still alive, she shouted to her vessel, snapping Yugito out of her stupor. H he is? Where? She asked the two-tailed cat and looked around. In the dust cloud, he's alive and well. She assured the 14-year-old. Focus your eyesight there. Her slit pupils dilated as she focused on the sight and saw a shadow figure in the dust cloud. It then cleared and revealed Naruto surrounded by some type of golden energy dome with his arms crossed in a X formation. There didn't appear to be any damage aside from a few scratches and bruises and aside from that his clothes were torn up. Half of his shirt was missing and he had several holes and rips in his pants but other than that there was no other serious damage. H he's alive. I'm gonna kick his ass for worrying me like that. She screamed mentally while Nibi chuckled. Meanwhile, Naruto uncrossed his arms and let out a sigh of relief. Man that was too close for comfort. It's a good thing I set this barrier up in the last second because if I hadn't I'd be in real trouble. He commented as the barrier vanished. I'll say, I can't tell you how many times I've cut it close in life or death situations. The worst I've been through was narrowly escaping an exploding planet, Goku said to his protege. I think it's time to get a little payback. Let's see how he handles a super Kamehameha. Naruto's aura flared to life before getting into the stance. Ki gathers around Naruto's palms but the difference in this one is that it was light blue and generated more light. B on the other hand snorts as he saw Naruto in the air over the large crater. So the Gaki survived after all. That's good otherwise Yugito-chan would have turned me into a scratching post, yeah. That was when he saw the blonde generating an odd light. ka -a, me, ha, me. His aura rockets upwards as he added more energy into the attack before thrusting his hands forwards ha. He screamed out as he fired a powerful light blue beam of energy that was twice as large as a normal Kamehameha was released emitting a glow around the area as it descended towards the transformed B. B saw the glowing blue light descend towards him. As he looked at the blue light in awe, his eyes widened when he realized that it was an attack and its size rivaled the form of the hybrids. Oh shit! Was all he could say before the blast engulfed him and exploded into a blue dome of energy that covered his entire form. Saiyan Showdown Light vs Stark Naruto descends towards the smoking crater he created with the Super Kamehameha wave that he fired at B in his Bija form. Oh man I think I overdid that a little. I was aiming to knock him out, not kill him, he said as he landed on the ground with a concerned look on his face and dashes towards the crater. Don't worry Naruto I can still feel B's life force as well as the Hachibis. It would appear that his partner's form took most of the brute force from that attack. Goku assured his apprentice who also sensed the man's energy signature and size and relief. He then hops into the crater and skids down the rocks before skidding to a halt. The smoke cleared, revealing B's tattered and smoking form and the man was in a daze. Now dad attack was the shit, B said in a dazed tone, resulting in Naruto sweat dropping and chuckling. He then slowly helped Killer B up and hoists the man over his shoulder, rising into the air and out of the crater. As he left it, he carefully placed the wrapping Jin Shuriki onto the ground and reaches into his sash for something. Yugito came running towards them and stops beside Naruto with a worried look on her face. Is he gonna be okay? She asked the young Super Saiyan and got a nod. Yeah he's just a little shaken up Yugito-chan. He assured the girl and he managed to pull out a bag that seemed to be filled with something. He shuffled his finger through the bag and pulls out a senzu bean. Ah, I don't think a chakra pill is gonna help him, Yugito stated and received a chuckle from the blonde who inserted the bean into Killer B's mouth. What makes you think it is a chakra pill? Naruto asked. Yugito blinked a few times and was about to speak but stopped when she heard her second uncle chow down on the bean and gulps it down. There a pause of silence for a few minutes until B's brows rose up and he instantly flips back on his feet with a grin on his face. Look like I caught my second wind and I feel like I can take on a thousand men oh yeah, B cried out, pumping his fist into the air. Yugito had a look of astonishment on her face and looks back at a grinning Naruto. How? Was all she could say to the young Saiyan. These aren't chakra pills Yugito they're beans. 
but they are a special and rare variety that possess special properties which restore a person's full strength and also heals any injuries they've gotten. He answered back as he put the sack back into his sash. Killer B on the other hand was inspecting the damage around the area and whistled lowly. Man Big Bro is gonna flip when he sees this, he mumbled, yeah we did do quite a lot of damage on the field huh? Naruto replied with a sheepish grin on his face, quite? The place looks like a war zone. Yugito screamed in her mindscape, glad that wasn't us because that attack would have done more than scorched my fur if it hit. Nibi informed her student, speak for yourself Matatabi. That attack hurt like a bitch, Hachibi roared telepathically to his fellow Bijou. I've had my fair share of brutal attacks in the past but that one takes the cake. I haven't been hit this hard since I got in that fight with Kuram, female QB's name people, two centuries ago. Suck it up Kyuki you only got your ass handed to you because you called her a bitch who needed to get her ego checked. She remarked with a snicker while the hybrid snorted and mumbled about hot-headed vixens needing attitude adjustments. Well let's call it a day, grab some grub and hit the hay, B said, letting out a yawn and cracks his neck before heading into the direction of where his vacation home was. Yugito on the other hand sighs in annoyance and folds her arms over her chest. He can be such a pain sometimes. I'm surprised Uncle hasn't killed him yet for his bad rapping. She remarked, and got a chuckle from Naruto. True but at least he's lively in some way or form. Plus normalcy is overrated anyway and I'm used to meeting people like B. I would bet my tail that somewhere out there is a super pervert, a lady who's a chronic drunk and sucks at gambling, and a guy with a creepy fetish for odd abilities and little boys. He stated, resulting in three legendary ninja sneezing at the same time and the outcome being one was being beaten to death by women in the hot springs, the other winning the lottery, and the last person chuckling in an eerie fashion that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Goku and Shenron's sweat dropped from Naruto's odd prediction. Your future successor is an odd one Goku, if only he knew how true his prediction was. The immortal dragon states, getting a nod of agreement from Goku. Anyway let's head back Yugito-chan, Naruto stated and that was when she leapt onto his back, wrapping her arms around his neck and legs around his waist, grinning in an excited manner. He then took off into the air with his passenger screaming in delight and heading to the house, telling him to go faster. B looked up and dropped his jaw as he saw his niece on Naruto's back flying over him. That's not fair the monkey can fly but I'm grounded, I feel a tear coming to my eye. He whined before taking off like a blur across the field, leaving a trail of dust behind. B's vacation home. Naruto gently lands on the ground with Yugito on his back and she hops off his back with a giddy expression on her face. Killer B landed before them panting slightly and regains his breathe. What I wouldn't give to fly yo. He muttered before a grin formed on his face. Aside from that great match Naruto that was one hell of a thrash you gave me. I haven't been a situation like that since I faced the yellow flash. Naruto's brows rose up when he heard that. You fought against me Nato Namikaze before? B nodded at his answer while folding his arms over his chest. Yeah during the last war and that guy was a pro in terms of speed but from what I can see now I think you'd have been matched in that department though I believe you were holding back when we spared. He noticed Naruto's eyes widening at the statement but the man merely smirks. So you noticed huh? Yeah I did hold back but mainly for your safety because believe it or not I'm a lot stronger than I appear to be since my bloodline trait enables to me to grow stronger every time I train or fight someone stronger than me. Naruto explained to them. But how do you keep it under control? Yugito asked curiously. Naruto responds by clapping his hands together causing a golden aura outline to form around his body and then several odd seals appeared around his arms, chest, torso, and legs. Gravity and suppression seals. I mainly use them as limiters to suppress my real strength so that I could enjoy fighting strong opponents. He answered to the vessel of Matatabi with a sheepish smile while the seals faded back into his body. Wow so how much weight are you currently carrying on yourself? Yugito wondered as did B. How much? Well when I started training I wore a 20 ton turtle shell on my person since I was 7 and every now and then the weight was doubled. He answered, only to see their jaws drop to the ground and shoulders slump while Matatabi and Gyuki did the same. Say what? The two Bijou screamed out. B was the first to snap out of his stupor and speak out. That's practically 200 tons you've been training in Sarugaki? Did you train under Kami? The rapper questioned. And they say Uncle A was a trainaholic but he's going nothing on Naruto-kun. Yugito thought with her vessel nodding in agreement while the teenage Saiyan rubs the back of his head sheepishly. Well. Kind of. He answered, getting a chuckle from both Goku and Shenrong. So if I could ask B does this island in Peculiar have a connection with the Bijou? B raised an eyebrow but nodded. Yes due to some the ruins that have the hieroglyphics of the Bijou and their vessels. It explains that the vessel and the Bijou must be in sync if they ever wish to unleash their true power but to do so one must face their inner darkness. One must face their inner darkness? 
Naruto repeated and pondered on the riddle. Any idea on this sensei? Goku pondered on this too, rubbing his chin in thought at Yugito's explanation and what it meant. Hmm. One must face their inner darkness. From what I would guess I think she means face that part of you that's affiliated with negative emotions such as anger, rage, envy, jealousy, hate, and other negative feelings which would manifest into a physical form based off these feelings. He explained to his apprentice. Naruto broke out of his thoughts and spoke up. So what you're saying Yugi-chan is that the person must defeat the part of them that represents their negative emotions right? Yugito nodded positively at the teenage Saiyan's answer. So basically anyone can go through this trial even if they aren't vessels right? Again she nodded at his answer. Yes regular people can go through the trial since doing so isn't forbidden but if you are weak-willed and your negative emotions take over then. She paused at her answer and a grim expression formed on her face. I see. Naruto thought about her explanation and wondered if he too had a darker side. He knew good and well everyone had a light and a dark side since no one was born absolutely good or evil but if the person's emotional spectrum suffers more on the negative side, it would drive them to their darker emotions. Are you thinking about using the false Naruto-kun? Yugito asks. Naruto nods and looks at her. Yeah I am actually. I don't know how much my negative half will affect my psyche but I don't want to take a chance of it getting the best of me later on in my journey so yeah I'll be using the falls. She stares at him for a little bit before sighing. Okay but be careful Naruto-kun. She asked with a concerned expression on her face, worried about the young Saiyan. Naruto smiles warmly at her and nods back. Don't worry Yugi-chan I'll be fine, I promise. He assured her. Aw oh, that is so cute. My little kitten is concerned about her boyfriend. Matatabi purred in her vessel's mindscape, causing Yugito's eyes to widen and a blush to form on her face. For Kami's sake he's not my boyfriend damn it, she roared at the two-tailed cat who meowed. Naruto noticed the blush on her face and smirked. Is a certain cat teasing you again? He asked and got a nod from her. I see and just so you know Yugi-chan I like you too. Yugito blinked rapidly at his statement. Huh? Was the only thing that could come out of her before Naruto did something even more surprising. He leaned forward and gave her a peck on the cheek before saluting and zips into the house, leaving a stunned Yugito at the doorway. The blush on her face grew while she touched the cheek that Naruto kissed. H he kissed me. Naruto-kun kissed me. The gears in her head got back to working and a grin slowly spreads on her face. Matatabi giggles as she witnessed a chibi version of her vessel jump up and down squealing in joy with hearts in her eyes. The next day, Falls of Truth, Naruto was standing in from of a large waterfall, listening as the water crashed against the rocks on the bottom while a few fish were swimming into the mouth of the river that flowed downstream, into the jungle. It's now or never, Naruto said before stepping onto the platform and sitting Indian styled. Goku Sensei. Shenrong Sensei once I enter my mindscape I'm gonna have to ask you to not interfere. This is something I'll have to do alone. Goku nodded in agreement as did Shenrong, both being proud of how much Naruto has grown since his travels and knew that he was mentally ready to battle his inner darkness. We understand Naruto and I wish you luck. We'll move to a different section of your mindscape so that you won't be distracted, good luck. The legendary hero said before the link between them was cut. Naruto stared at the waterfall intently and then closed his eyes in concentration in order to link himself to his mind. From afar Yugito and B were watching from the edge of a cliff and said vessels each had serious yet concerned expressions on their faces, praying that their friend can succeed in conquering his dark side. Good luck Naruto-kun. She thought while watching his still form. She felt a hand on her shoulder and looked up to see her uncle slash sensei give a reassuring grin. Don't fret little Yugi, the Sargaki will pull through and gain victory. Yugito says nothing but smiles as a form of thank you and turns her attention back at Naruto's still form, unaware that B's expression went grim. Kami help us if he fails because there won't be a force on earth that will stop him should his darkness win. Naruto's mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes to see a replica of the waterfall and didn't sense his senseis in the area. He stands and faces the waterfall, narrowing his eyes as he watched a shadowed figure forms behind the waterfall. His eyes widened slightly and he witnessed the replica of himself appear to be look similar to him but with a difference being his facial appearance. A smug and arrogant smirk formed on his face and his eyes screamed danger as they were more primal in appearance and like Naruto his tail swayed behind him with the last different being the lining around his eyes were deeper, like Majin Vegeta's were. So this is my inner darkness huh? Yes I am and I was wondering when you would show yourself. Yami Naruto answered in a deeper tone that carried a hint of arrogance causing Naruto's eyes to widen in surprise. Whoa you can read my mind? Oh wait that's right we're the same person, he said in a sheepish manner. Yami Naruto scoffs at his lighter half impudence. No kidding clown we are one and the same with the only difference being that I'm the real you. He answered smugly while Naruto frowned. No you're not. 
Naruto replied back to his darker half who chuckled deeply, Of course I am the real one. I am the true representation of an ancient warrior race. One that was once known in the galaxy as the strongest to ever exist. Yami Naruto boasted, Wow my darker half is delusional, he acts like that Vegeta guy Goku Sensei talked about. Naruto thought. So you know the reason I'm here then? Yami Naruto nods, but of course, you're here to defeat me in order to overcome your inner darkness but it won't happen because I intend to crush my weaker half, gain control of you, and bring our race back to greatness, he declared. Naruto on the other hand scowled at what his darker half planned on doing if he won. That's not gonna happen as long as I'm around. Yami Naruto simply hiked at his response and folded his arms in a fashion similar to Vegeta's when he faced Goku for the first time. Then it shouldn't take too long for me to end. Maybe after I win I'll deal with that idiot rapper, his village, and maybe get some action with that cute blonde and then maybe pay a visit to that russet-haired broad. I believe her name is Mei, your Haim as you call her, he said with a perverse grin on his face. Naruto's eyes flared up in anger. Like hell you will because the only way you're getting to them is through me and I'll be damned if I lose this fight. As he powers up his hair rises and transforms into his Super Saiyan state. Yami Naruto simply grins at his other half and much to Naruto's surprise. He transform into a Super Saiyan. Why so shocked? I possess the same abilities as you do. Why Naruto states, getting a smirk from Naruto. I should have known better but it doesn't change anything, I'm still going to beat you, he declared before getting into the Kame stance, Goku's fighting stance. Yami Naruto on the other hand smirks and gets into his own stance, Vegeta's stance when he first faced Goku. We'll see. Why Naruto replied back. The two opposites had a stare off, waiting for the other to make the first move. Why Naruto flexes his hands a few times with a smirk still plastered on his face, ready to drive his so-called weaker half into the pavement. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 OST, Battle Theme Number 11 Naruto suddenly vanished in a burst of speed as did Why Naruto in the surrounding area for a few seconds before what sounded like a sonic boom echoed throughout the forest. Several more sonic booms echoed throughout the sky before Naruto and Why Naruto appeared with their forearms clashing against the other, pausing for a few seconds before they each unleashed an onslaught of punches and kick that appeared like blurs to the naked eye. The force behind their moves caused a strong breeze to brush trees back as well as other forms of debris to fly in different directions, the water in the river to rise up, and the rock textures to crumble into piles of rubble. The assault continued for a few seconds until Naruto slipped into Y Naruto's defense and delivers an elbow uppercut into his chin, making his head jerk back in surprise. He recovers quickly and returns the hit with a right hook to Naruto's jaw. The two once again vanished, moving at speeds that would make Minato Namikaze look slow in comparison, releasing shockwaves around the area. When they appeared again. Why? Naruto is struck in the jaw by a high kick but retaliates by striking Naruto in the jaw with another right hook and Naruto finished by driving a vicious low punch directly into the gut of his darker half. Gah. Why Naruto hunches over and coughs from the punch while Naruto takes this opportunity to strike him in the face with a right haymaker that sent him plummeting into the forest. As he crashed, dust kicked up into the air with Naruto descending downwards to his opponent. His eyes widened as a yellow key blast headed towards him, stopping in midair and vanishes as the blast sailed past him. He appears on top of a rock structure watching the attack explode and disperse until his senses flared up. Naruto turns around and sees another key blast that was bigger than the last one he for him and once again blurs away as it destroys the rock texture. He hops backwards a few times against the rocky terrain before taking to the air as why Naruto appears in a stance his other half was familiar with. Why? Naruto crouches down, curls his fingers and places both his hands together at chest level facing the same direction so that the palm of one hand is on the back of the other. Light purple orb forms in his hand and hums to life as he gathers the energy for it. Naruto pauses in the air and brings his arms back with a blue orb gathering around his cupped hands. Take this. Galit gun. Why Naruto thrusts his hands forward and fires a fuchsia colored key beam upwards. Kamehameha. Naruto calls out and fires a Kamehameha wave downwards. The blue and purple beams descended towards one another and clashed, forming a blue and fuchsia colored dome in the center that slowly expanded. A power struggle occurred as the two Super Scions pushed more energy into their attacks, making the dome of energy grow even more. It couldn't contain its form and it erupted into an explosion of energy. The force behind it sent debris everywhere and also sent Naruto flying backwards and crashed into the side of a rock texture and bounced off it. Ah, he cried out pain, unaware that why Naruto appeared behind him grinning and strikes him in the back with a backhand. Naruto descends to the ground and crashes, sliding to the end of another rock texture. He gets up on one knee while why Naruto ascends towards him, grinning in a feral manner. 
Naruto hops back as the Dark Saiyan hits the ground with a key enhanced punch, causing a crater to form and looks up to see Naruto back flipping through the terrain. Why Naruto pulls his hand out of the crater and takes off after Naruto, said Saiyan plants his feet onto the edge of the cliff and bounces off, flying towards Why Naruto, performing a drop kick as did the darker half. Their attacks clashed, hitting them both directly under the jaw and the two were wide-eyed. They separated and both landed on the ground opposite from one another with their hair and clothes ruffling in the wind and had a stare off. The two remained silent for a while until Y Naruto spoke up. Impressive, I guess you're as weak as I thought. He remarked, getting a smirk from Naruto. Funny I could say the same to you, the smirk on his face disappeared and was replaced with a serious one but if it's alright with you I'd like to skip the warm up and get this over with. Yami Naruto grinned in a feral manner and nods in agreement. My thoughts exactly. Naruto's face scrunches up in concentration and his muscles bulge a little, resulting in his aura flaring up. Veins throbbed around his biceps, neck, and temple as his power increase. He crossed his arms as his hair spiked up even more. Gra. The golden aura around Naruto flared up in an even more wild-like fashion, releasing a higher frequency sound-wise with a lightning aura arching around his body. His hair was even a deeper gold color and spiked up even more in a wild-like fashion with a few bangs hanging down similar to Gohan's hairstyle but with two bangs with one being slightly shorter than the other. His muscle mass was a little more pronounced but not overly so. His skin tone was a lighter color as well as his clothes due to the increased energy output from the golden aura. His facial features grew more sharper and fiercer with his eyes being sharper and more primal in appearance. Yami Naruto's eyes widened in awe as he saw his other half ascend to Super Saiyan 2 and then snaps out of it. Impressive but anything you can do raises his arms up while gathering a huge amount of energy and releases it as he brings them down, ascending to Super Saiyan 2 as well. I can do as well, he declared. Now it was Naruto's eyes who widened in astonishment. You too? Naruto questioned and his darker half snorted in annoyance. I told you this before idiot, I have the same abilities as you including the transformations you've obtained from training in the time chamber. He stated now enough stalling let's get started. The two opposites dashed towards each other with their fists reared back and swing forward. When their fists collided, the force behind them emitted a shockwave so powerful that the ground underneath them couldn't handle the pressure and cratered under their form. The rock textures rumbled and a few collapsed under the force. Song ends. Meanwhile, outside of the actual waterfall of truth, Naruto meditative form was in the Super Saiyan 2 state and the effects of the transformation resulted in the ground rumbling violently, the water rising and the birds in the forest flew up due to the trees leaning backwards and shaking. Both B and Yugito were using their chakra to remain rooted onto the ground, covering their eyes with their arms on order to keep the debris out of their eyes. Unfortunately the shockwave Naruto released from his form caused Yugito to lose her focus on her footing and was almost sent flying backwards but a tentacle shoots out of his back and catches her in its coil. Don't fret little knee, Uncle B won't let go of thee. He assured his niece, if I wasn't afraid of taking a one-way flight off the island right now I'd be using him as a scratching post. She thought and she was pulled towards him, but ended up getting hit upside the head by a flying rock. Hit I, she cried out while Matatabi cringed. Ooh that gonna leave a mark. Goku vs Android 19 theme. Gra. Why Naruto rushes at his foe and swings a left and right hook at Naruto who was forced to evade them both before the Dark Saiyan unleashed a flurry of punches that made him block or evade while moving backward. Before he had a chance to recover, why Naruto drove a knee strike into Naruto's stomach, causing him to gasp out in pain and hunch over. Yami Naruto raises his right arm up and delivers an elbow strike to his back and sends Naruto falling towards the ground. Said Saiyan falls on all fours and slowly get up and leaps right back into the air to avoid getting drop kicked into a crater caused by Y. Naruto who looks up at Naruto's retreating form before flying out of the rubble and stops in front of his other half before attempting to hit him with another knee strike that Naruto blocks with his own knee. Yami Naruto growls before smirking at his foe while red static emits around them. What's wrong? I thought you said we were going to skip the warm up? He questioned and Naruto smirks back. Sorry, force of habit. Naruto apologized before they backed off and lunged at each other again. Why Naruto swings a right hook but Naruto catches it. He attempts to do the same with his and gets caught by his other half as well. They both growl as their arms interlocked and then deliver a series of simultaneous knee strikes. As the attacks continued, why? Naruto takes this opportunity to deliver a headbutt right into Naruto's face. He cried out and releases the darker warrior from the grapple holding his throbbing head with Y Naruto taking this opportunity to attack him with a series of left and right hooks into his torso. Naruto coughs up spit while Y Naruto grins as he continued with the assault. Naruto recovers quickly and catches the fists, much to the surprise of Yami Naruto. He gets him in the lower jaw with two knee strikes, 
stunning him and finishes it off with a high knee strike to the temple and sends him flying and crashing into the edge of the cliff. The embedded Dark Saiyan grits his teeth and opens his eyes to see Naruto flow towards him. GRRR. That's more like it. He growled, he crosses his hands and pulls them back, freeing himself from the edge by releasing a burst of invisible ki and left a near circular shape in the cliff. They both breathe heavily as they floated close to each other and stop when they're nearly nose to nose and have a stare off. Their aura slowly hums to life and flares around them with static emitting around their forms. Why? Naruto snarls in a challenging fashion while Naruto smiles back. The darker half frowns but returns the same grin since that they were both starting to get serious and both let out a battle cry. They release their aura in a bright golden flash and continue the match with a series of punches and kick while in the air. They paused in their assault with their fists reared back and swung forward, delivering a bone-crushing blow to their jaws and their heads snapped back at the same time. Why Naruto recovers faster than his opposite and unleashes a series of punches upon Naruto's stomach and flares up his aura as he continued on with the attack. He then hits with a right hook across the jaw, knees him hard in the gut, and then delivers a reverse elbow strike into his neck. Yami grins at the fact that he was gaining the upper hand so far but his eyes widened when Naruto grabbed his leg and swung him around for several and threw him to the ground. Why Naruto flips and lands on his feet and looks up only to see Naruto gone. What the? He wondered before his senses went off and turns his head to the left and instantly blocks a right punch with his forearms courtesy of Naruto who then pushes him back with a flurry of rapid punches. Why Naruto had some trouble blocking and evading some of the punches that got through his defense as Naruto went on the attack. He pulled back and delivers a mid-kick into Why Naruto's torso, making his eyes bug out. Naruto smirk at the successful hit and pulls back again, channeling some key into his fist in order to deliver a powerful blow. Why Naruto senses the power behind the physical attack and when Naruto swings his fist forward, he vanishes in a burst of speed. Naruto curses as why Naruto appears behind him and smirks. The teenage Saiyan freezes on the spot as his darker half aimed both palms at his chest with a ball of yellow key and fires. A flash of yellow forms around the area as Naruto was sent flying into a rock texture and a blazing explosion occurs. Why Naruto stays floating in midair, waiting for the dust clear. When it does, a hole is revealed in the rocky wall and there was no sign of Naruto but he knew better than to believe he defeated his other half with an attack as weak as that. He watched intently for any sign on his foe and his eyes widened as he saw a ball of key hums to life, revealing Naruto's form and he fires a key blast at his darker half. He retaliates and fires a key blast at his opponent. The energy blasts descend towards the other and once they clash, a dome of energy forms at the colliding blasts. Naruto rises out of the hole pushing key into the colliding energy techniques and continued to push forward until he was close to the dome. Yellow static surges through as they push more power into their attacks. Naruto grits his teeth as he continued to push forward and add more energy as did Yami Naruto. Oh no you don't. I will not allow you to come out victorious. He swore as he pushed more energy into his move. Naruto does the same, resulting in the dome growing, and glowing like a miniature sun. The two warriors both let out a battle cry as the dome of energy was now the size of a cage tower, covering the entire area before erupting into an explosion so great that the entire area was coated in a golden light. Song ends. When the flash cleared, the entire area was in ruins. Rubble and chucks of rocks scattered, trees were uprooted, and smoke rose from the debris. Dangling from a cliff was Naruto and from his appearance his outfit was ripped and torn in several places and was sporting cuts and bruises, bleeding slightly around his arms, legs, chest, and parts of his face. Groans. Man I never would have thought that my dark side could be so vicious. I feel like I just fought through an army of bijou. He muttered before he felt himself being pulled up from over the edge and is now face to face with Yami Naruto who was also sporting the same amount of damage as his opposite but the difference was that he was smiling in a calm yet dangerous way and was holding him up, by the wrist. The Dark Saiyan stood up over the edge with Naruto still in his grasp smirking. He then spun around and threw Naruto over his shoulder and into a wall of rock. Naruto cries out in pain as he hit the wall hard enough to be embedded and leave an imprint around his form. Why Naruto brings his right arm forward, extending his index and middle finger out, and fired five rings of energy at Naruto's trapped form. They bind his wrist's ankles, and the last one binds him around the throat and closes up slightly, making Naruto release a chalking sound. He the vanishes and appears before his trapped brother with a smug expression. What's the matter, not winning as easily as you thought you would? He taunted at Naruto's who was glaring back at him. I never said this would be. Naruto chokes out, getting a snort from his other half. Humph, you don't get it do you? You're not gonna be winning at all. He remarked and then slaps him twice across the face with a forehand and backhand, resulting in Naruto growling in an angry fashion. 
Why Naruto returns the expression, bearing his canines. What team? Are you pissed off at feeling trapped and humiliated by your better half? You're not my better half, Naruto snapped back only to gasp out in pain as Why Naruto drove his knee into the Saiyan's stomach. Yes I am. I am the real you, he declared and punches him in the jaw. You hits him with a left hook. R hits him with a right jab. Nothing hits him with another left jab, but a fake. He unleashes an onslaught of punches and knee strikes to the face, chest, and torso of Naruto simultaneously until Naruto coughs up blood and he stops the assault. Look at you. The last of our kin, the legacy of a mighty race of warriors that brought fear to our enemies. Reduced to a soft-hearted idealistic fool by his master. Why Naruto spat at the ground in disgust, you have done nothing but play the role of hero to bunch of insignificant insects who could care less if you lived or died and it makes me sick to see you act the way you do. A dark expression formed on his face as he stared at the, fallen form of his other half. No more. I will not allow you to continue this charade any longer. The time has come for me to take my rightful place as the king of this body. I will not allow myself to hindered by the beliefs of a dead man. Your days are over, every breath you take is an insult to my honor and pride as a warrior. He brings him hand up and wraps it around Naruto's throat. I will break you Naruto, I will crush you until you are nothing but a memory and then I will do what you failed to do. I will bring our people back to glory. I will destroy anyone that gets in my way and if I'm feeling generous I might even spar some of the people you care about especially that girl Yugito. May, and maybe even her sister and mother. A perverse smile takes form on his face. I might consider keeping them as slaves and convince them to help me revive the Saiyan race once I've conquered this mud ball of a planet. Naruto's eyes snapped open when he heard this and snarls in a primal fashion. His muscles flex up as he attempts to pull himself out of his prison, much to why Naruto's shock and disbelief. Gra. His aura flares to life and he breaks out of the prison, forcing why Naruto to move back from the power input. Congratulations my dark half, you've officially pissed me off. His aura grow and released a shockwave so powerful that the it send dust and wind flying everywhere. You can threaten me all you like but when you threaten the lives of those I care about then all bets are off, he roared. Why Naruto got a good look into his other half's eyes and realized that they no longer held the same compassion and fearlessness. Now they expressed nothing but primal rage and fury and now knew that Naruto was out to destroy him. To crush him until he was nothing but dust in the wind. A bead of sweat dropped from his brow as he now understood that he just freed the beast from his cage and he was its current target. Something tells me that I've just pushed my luck. Chapter 6 Unity Rakage Tower Ayatsuki, son of the late son Daime Rakage, current Yondaime Rakage of Kumagakuro no Sato and fastest man alive after the death of Minato Namikaze was sitting in his chair, doing a series of arm curl-ups with a massive dumbbell that would appear to be difficult to lift for a normal man but then he wasn't exactly normal. He was a tall dark-skinned man with a large muscular build, with his blonde hair in the combed back, a small mustache and beard. His face is very distinguished with pronounced cheekbones and tear troughs under his eyes, and a prominent crease across his forehead. He has pointed canines and his top lip also has a darker hue than the bottom one. Unlike other cage, a seems to wear his cage Haurian hat on a regular basis without a shirt underneath, further displaying his hulking physique. He has black Fumashuriken tattoos on both shoulders and around his wrists and forearms were a pair of gold bangle bracelets which each have protrusions that can jut out when he attacks an opponent. The rest of his outfit consisted of a pair of black pants, shin guards, sandals, and a gold belt around his waist with a boar's face engraved in the center. He had pretty much spent the day doing a series of light exercises since all of his paperwork was completed but from the expression on his face, the man was bored as hell especially since he had his brother take their niece Yugito to Turtle Island to work on communicating and training with her Bija like B did and was inwardly wishing for something to happen that needed his direct attention. The door to his office was forced opened by a Jonin who was panting heavily before his leader. What is the meaning of this? I demanded in a low gruff voice. The Kumo Jonin regained his breath and bowed his head to the massive man. My apologies Rakage Dono but there's something you must see atop of the tower. He informed the man. I raised an eyebrow and blinked a few times at his subordinate before sighing. Very well, he said and Shun shines up to the rooftop along with the Jonin to see what the fuss is about. Rakage Tower Rooftop I stood on the roof along with the Jonin and his two guards Daru and C. Daru is a fairly tall, Dark-skinned man with a slightly bulbous nose, a lazy look in his eyes and shaggy, white hair which covers his left eye. He wears a high-collared, sleeveless uniform with loose-fitting pants, bandages on his wrists and the one strap over one shoulder flak jacket of a Kumagakur shinobi. Daru also has stylized characters for water, and lightning, tattooed on his right and left shoulders respectively, denoting his chakra's nature affinities, water release and lightning release, as well as the fact that he has a Kekegenkai, the storm release. 
3. The tattoo on his left arm also signifies that he has inherited the third rakage's black lightning. He carries a broad, foldable, cleaver-like sword, strapped to his back. C is a young man with short, blonde hair and dark eyes. He wears a sleeveless black shirt with a one-strap over one shoulder white flak jacket, forehead protector, black elbow-length arm guards, and the red and white kumagakurushin guards along with a pair of sandals. A was just about to ask them what the problem was until he saw something that made his eyes widen. Far away from their location was a pillar of golden light with what looked like lightning coursing around it. Hovering over the top of it was a large black cloud the size of an continent with lightning cackling underneath it and the group can hear thunder booming from it. What in the name of Kami is that? I ask no one particular. We don't know sir, this occurred not too long ago. The energy level that pillar of light is emitting is off the charts. C answered. I'm talking bijou level reading if not higher. A's eyes widened when he heard that. Higher than a bijou. The only beings with a higher level of power would be the gods themselves. His eyes widened even more when he realized that his brother and niece were on the island and possibly in the middle of the energy output. Okamibi and Yugito chan are possibly in the middle of that. What do you want to do boss? Guru asked his leader. Gather several Ombu and meet me at the docks. Whatever is on that island cannot be good if it can emit a level of power from this far yet for some reason it feels familiar, like it has occurred before but at a higher level. He pondered before order his men back to their stations and have his two guards gather up the Anbu. With Naruto, Naruto rushes at his darker half with his left arm reared back, ready to deliver a bone-crushing punch to his skull but gets struck in the face with a right hook and sent flying backwards with the dark Saiyan in hot pursuit. He had his right foot reared back and prepared to drive it into Naruto's chest, only for his brother to recover, flare his key and counters with the right hook and strikes him across the jaw. Why Naruto cries out as his body jerked back from the vicious punch resulting in spin and blood flying out of his mouth. As he recovered they each traded blows that were so intense that it sounded like thunder was booming across the area and then the duo went on an onslaught that shook the land. Dust rose all around the battlefield and the ground underneath their airborne forms rumbled while flashes of electricity coursed around their blazing auras. Several rock textures explode from the force behind the knee strike Naruto attempted to strike the side of Y Naruto's skull but he shrugs it off and swings a diagonal punch that Naruto dodges releasing a force so great that it creates a 30-foot wide trench, reducing everything in its path into nothing. Yami Naruto looks around for his opponent in the dust-filled area but his senses alerted his to danger and dodges to the left as an energy blast passes by his face only to get a lariat into the chest by Naruto who only goes flying back for a few seconds due to Naruto grabbing him around the ankles and spins him around several times before releasing him. Naruto vanishes in a burst of speed as Y Naruto went sailing across the landscape via the air and then appears with his right leg reared back as his darker half descended towards him. Yeah. Naruto swung his leg out only for Y Naruto to phase out, surprising the young Saiyan. Suddenly pain erupted from his back as Y. Naruto drove his elbow into Naruto's spine and the young Saiyan cries out in agony. His screams were cut off when Yami Naruto interlocked his arms around the stunned warrior. They both vanished and appeared in the air where the dark Saiyan directed their forms to the ground, flared his aura, and they descended to the ground at top speed. What's the matter clown? He taunted as they headed to the hardened ground. The impact resulted in an earth-shattering crash that shook the entire area and causing dust to rise up around the area. Naruto grits his teeth as he staggered back onto his feet but why Naruto delivers a flying headbutt directly into his forehead and sent Naruto sliding across the ground. Yami Naruto brings his hands together and fires a key blast at his lighter half who flips back on his feet and leaps to the side as the blast hit the area he was formerly at. Why? Naruto swings his arm in the direction and fires another key blast at his foe. He grins viciously as he saw the blast hit Naruto and caused a miniature explosion and then leaps forward with his right arm outstretched backwards in a stabbing position. Die. He cried out as he was about run his hand through his weaker half but then his senses kicked in and he skidded to a halt into the air due to the dust clearing and not seeing Naruto in the crater. I've got to say you've got a few tricks up your sleeve brother. Why Naruto growled and turned his head to see Naruto standing on a slab of rock with his arms folded and his aura flaring to life, smirking as he stared down at his other half. But then so do I. Waterfalls of truth. Lightning rained from the blackened sky, the winds blew hard enough to rip trees from their roots, and the ground rumbled violently due to the energy output Naruto's meditative state was releasing. Said Saiyan was floating midair in a dome of golden energy with lightning-like energy arching around him. Ah this is insane. Yugito screamed as she clung onto her uncle's back with her clawed hands. Hey! Easy with the claws kitty, B shouted as his clung onto a large boulder that was embedded into the ground though he was unaware that the force of the wind was loosening the large rock from its position until it started to wobble. 
He looked at the ground and his brows rose in dread and a bead of sweat fell from his face. Oh shit, he muttered. Yugi ito ni, yeah? She asked her uncle, hang on tied to me, he cried out as the boulder flew free from its spot with Yugi ito and bee on it, flying across the forest from the gust of wind, ah! Yugi ito screamed as they descended into the forest, Naruto's mindscape, ha! Yami Naruto bellowed as he swung his head forward and clashed with Naruto's. Both opposite halves were engaged in a grappling match with their auras flaring wildly as they both reared their heads back and slammed them together, releasing a sonic boom that echoed around the battlefield. They performed this attack pattern several more times before stopping, snarling at each other as they tried to break the grapple hold. Bioelectricity buzzed around their forms as their aura flared even more. Naruto and Yami Naruto break their hold and leap back, dispersing their energy and the Dark Saiyan reacts first by swinging a high kick which Naruto blocks with his forearm and counters with a left hook. Why Naruto dodges to the left, placing both hands on the ground and kicks both feet towards Naruto's chin, he evades it and takes this opportunity to drives his right knee into his darker half's torso and sends him sailing midair until he manages to adjust his body and flips his legs over, landing on solid ground. As he tries to regain his breath, Naruto dashes towards his form. Why Naruto vanishes and appears under the Saiyan's running form and knocks him off balance with a sweep kick. Naruto curses as he falls towards the ground but catches himself and flips forward while Why Naruto rushes at him and attempts to strike him across the jaw with another right hook. The attack fails as Naruto catches the move and counters with a palm strike to the face, making stumble back as his quarry goes around him, grabs him around the waist lifting them up into the air and slams him into the rocky ground with a German suplex. Why Naruto cries out from the impact and then Naruto brings him back up for another, but the other half break out of the hold with an elbow strike to face, stunning the young Super Saiyan while he flips over and strikes him across the head with a reverse roundhouse kick. He grins at the successful hit and tries with a secondary one but Naruto catches it in both hands, surprising his darker half. He pushes back and knocks his other foot off balance grabs him around the face and slams him into the ground only to get kicked in the chest and skids back clutching his chest while his other half flips back on his feet. The two warriors each pant heavily as they stare each other down. Neither looked ready to give up as too much was at stake. For Naruto it was the safety of those he cared about and the world and for Yami Naruto it was to purge himself of his compassionate side and emotions, gaining freedom, and restoring the reputation of his race. The darker half's panting slowly turned into a tired laugh. Feels good doesn't it? He questioned his lighter half. Unleashing all that rage in the midst of a battle, the feel of adrenaline pumping through your veins? The thrill of facing stronger opponents? Does it not excite you? Naruto remained silent as he saw the smirk on his darker half's face. You can deny it all you want but you are a Saiyan. A warrior bred for battle. Fighting is in your blood just as it is our ancestors. That may be so but my sensei fought to protect others and not for his own gain, I won't deny it, I love to fight powerful opponents but I don't let my thrill for battle dissuade my reasons for getting stronger. Our race's drive for battle and mayhem nearly caused them to go extinct and I don't intend to take the route, Naruto declared. Why Naruto on the other hand scowls? And that's what makes you weak. DBZ theme, Gohan vs Taburu 4 theme. No it's what makes me stronger, Naruto yelled back before why Naruto roars in fury and his aura flares to life. Naruto does the same thing and gets ready for another fight. The duo vanish in a burst of speed until a series of sonic booms echo through the area. The two opposites each unleash a series of punches and kicks that looked like a series of blur that either met their mark, were blocked, or evaded. The onslaught continued until they both crashed into a mountainside, causing chunks of rocks and dust to rise up and the duo take off, moving like blurs across the battlefield. Sonic booms echoed throughout the landscape and random environmental textures were reduced demolished. Two golden blurs dashed towards each other and clashed releasing a burst of golden laced wind and electricity that shook the land. Naruto and Y Naruto's fists collided from the impact and they continued with the assault. Why? Naruto managed to deliver a kick into his opponent's torso but Naruto stood tall from the vicious move and countered with a skull-splitting headbutt before vanishing again and zipping across the battlefield simultaneously. They appeared once again unleashing a series of punches and kicks but Naruto was doing more defending as Yami didn't let down in his attack. The darker half grins in triumph as he broke through Naruto's defense and assaulted his face with countless punches as well as his chest and torso in order not to give Naruto a chance to counter or gain distance. You see, you emotions can't beat me, a weakling can't beat me. You can't, you can, you can't. He laughs gleefully as his victory was at hand. He stopped the barrage of punches, brings his leg back, and swings it sideways to Naruto's torso. The Saiyan on the other hand dodges the swing catches the appendage and twists it with enough force to nearly rip the hole off from the knee. 
Why, Naruto cries out in agony as his lighter side twisted his leg harder and reacts by using his other leg and strikes him with a boot to the face and then delivers a right hook to the jaw, sending Naruto flying backwards and crashing through several rock textures. Why Naruto takes off after him, intent on wiping him out but from the dust an energy blast shoots towards him. He moves to the left as the blast bypasses his face, only for Naruto to appear over him with his elbow raised and brings it down in his darker half spinal column. Why Naruto cries out as he descends towards the ground and crashes, creating a 20-foot wide crater with him face first into it. Naruto appeared hovering over his opponent's down form and watches him slowly get up and snarl. Gah, you're so annoying. Why won't you just give up and accept I'm better than you? He questioned. Naruto tilted his head to spit out some saliva mixed with blood and stares down at his foe. Why Naruto's key flares to life and takes off like a rocket towards the blonde. Once he got close enough he swung his fist at Naruto's face and the lighter half caught it in his bomb. Why Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as his hand was caught with little effort. What's this? He caught my punch? But how? We should be evenly matched considering we both exerted a lot of power. He growls and attempts to strike him in the face with his left fist but Naruto caught that one too. Again he Naruto was shocked beyond belief and attempted to pull his hands from his other half's grip but couldn't. GRRR. Let go fool. Why Naruto demanded as he tried to free himself. Naruto kept a calm expression on his face as he increased his grip and their auras flared to life. The struggle continued until Why Naruto broke one hand free and attempts to deliver a haymaker but Naruto blurs away. Huh? He vanished? Why Naruto looked around in every direction for his opponent. A whistle was heard and he turned to the source to see Naruto standing on a platform with his arms folded. Looking for me? Naruto called out with a hint of amusement in his eyes. Why Naruto's brow twitched and he fires a key blast in Naruto's direction and smirks when it explodes. When the dust cleared it revealed Naruto standing there not the least bit affected by the attack. And theme. Naruto yawns and tilts his head to the side, cracking his neck a little, much to Yami's annoyance. Is that all you've got? Once again. Why Naruto snarled in anger and charges towards Naruto with the intent to destroy him. He threw a right hook at Naruto and growled when he tilted his head to the side and attempted to swing a kick at his side but his other half stopped it by using his knee to block it. He then started to unleash a series of punches and kicks Naruto easily evades or weaves around, smirking as the mixed attacks missed him and pissing his darker half off. Hold still damn it. Why Naruto yells as he increases the speed of his assault and Naruto simply avoided all of them before using a series of blocks with his arms as they move downwards. Why Naruto backs off and fires another key blast which Naruto bats away with a knife backhand and then descends to the ground as his darker half goes after him. The dark Saiyan swings his fist forward but his foe vanishes, causing him to yell out in frustration. Stop running away and fight me coward. Why Naruto bellowed as he looked for his opponent but feels something tap him on the shoulder so he turns around only to be met with a fist to the face and sent sailing across the land and crashing into the wall of a cliff. He cries out in pain before pulling himself out. Sneaky little bastard. His key flares up and he starts to unleash a barrage of energy blast around the area, destroying several rock textures and scorching the land. The entire area lit up like the 4th of July as he continued with his onslaught hoping to catch Naruto in the blasts. After a few minutes the attack receded and the sky cleared up, leaving Y Naruto to pant heavily as he wasted too much energy in the attack. Wow nice light show. A voice said behind him. Naruto was behind his darker half, hovering in the sky with his arms folded. Y Naruto turned around shocked beyond imagination. How? How did you avoid that? The dark Saiyan question with anger laced in his voice. Well for one thing your aim of way off. Why Naruto growled at the jab and two during the fight I realized something. And what would that be? The whole time I've been fighting you in my mindscape we were fighting on even grounds but then something came to me, a grin that unnerved why Naruto formed on his face and before the other half knew it, Naruto's injuries healed up and his clothes returned back to normal. This is my mindscape and my power varies on my imagination. You're just manifestation of my negative energy, my dark side, and the Saiyan part of me. Get to the point. Why Naruto yells out. Sure but first an outline of red aura takes form around his body before flaring up into a crimson red energy that turned his skin red and darkened his clothes super kaiken. The blazing aura's flare increased and red lighting arched around it just like his Super Saiyan 2 form. Veins pulsed around his biceps, fists, neck and around his temple as the power output grew stronger. Why Naruto trembled in disbelief as he felt his other half's power increase to unbelievable proportions. Th this can't be. It can because in my mind my abilities have no limits, and now it's time for me to end this. 
He vanished in a burst of crimson and white. Naruto cried out in pain as Naruto struck him in the ribs with an elbow strike and sent him flying over the landscape. As he sailed downwards Naruto appears underneath him with his arm curled up to his chest and his fist clenched and performs a key enhanced uppercut into his foe's spin. Why Naruto goes flying upwards into the sky with Naruto following behind. The Dark Saiyan spin around and throws a punch, only to hit an after image and look up to see Naruto soaring upwards across the sky. He throws a key blast in hopes of hitting him, but Naruto vanishes and appears once again, knocking him backwards with a flying kick across the face. Yami goes flying backwards once again and this time crashes into a small mountain, leaving a human-sized hole into it. Naruto deactivates the technique and looks into the area his other half landed. The ground started to rumble and the mountain starts to crack until it exploded into a flash of light, revealing the beaten form of Y. Naruto roaring in absolute fury while remains of the mountain fell around him. He snarls in rage, glaring at his foe with every ounce of hatred in his body. Blood leaked down from his forehead and around the opposite sides of his nose. I'll kill you. I swear if it's the last thing I do, I will kill you. Naruto charges up the Super Kaioken again and dashes towards Yami who swung a right hook at him but Naruto blurs past his and delivers a reversal roundhouse kick to his back. He flies forward but Yami stops in his tracks and dashes towards him, channeling violet colored key around his fist and swings it at Naruto's skull, but he ducks and delivers a left uppercut right into Yami's torso. The blow echoes around the area as Yami stood there trembling in pain as the fist buried into his gut. He then clutched his stomach in pain hunched forward and walking backwards before vomiting out blood and falling to his knees. A blue light hits his vision and he slowly look up to see Naruto in the Kamehameha stance. No. Not like this. Ka. Me. Ha. Me. His Super Saiyan Tuora flares to life as he channels more power into the attack and then thrusts his cupped hands forward ha. Yami Naruto sported horrified expression as the light blue beam engulfed him and was sent sailing across the mountains, demolishing anything in its path before a blue dome of energy formed outwards and exploded, rocking the entire area and releasing a powerful shockwave. It died down, revealing an extremely wide and deep trench that traveled to where a mountain once was. He senses his other half's life force weakening and heads over there. When he gets there he finds Yami in it. He was sprawled out under some rubble, beaten, bloody, and down for the count, in his basic form. Naruto descended down towards him and plants his feet firmly on the ground. Yami opened his good eye and stares at his lighter and supposedly weaker half in contempt but still smiled weakly. Looks. Like. You. Win, he mumbled before coughing out weakly as Naruto continued to stare down at him. Don't. Look. At. Me. Like that. Just finish me off. I accept my fate. He closed his eyes waiting for the inevitable. No. Yami's eyes snapped open as he heard this. By destroying you I deny who I am and that would be an insult to my master and the other scions. Why? Was all the darker half could say. You fight for self-preservation. I fight for the sake of others. My reasons were stronger than yours and that is why you lost. Yami continued to stare at him wondering what Naruto was thinking. Why do you go so far for others knowing they won't do the same for you? Why are you willing to give others a second chance, knowing when the opportunity arises they'll get back at you and if not, then those you love. You can't save everyone from themselves, they choose to be who they want to be and will crush anyone who get in their way. This world is nothing but chaos caused by power hungry fools. You should know that better than anyone after what happened years ago. What makes you think you can change them? Naruto pondered on his darker half's words for a bit before speaking up. I can't. They must be willing to do so on their own and if not, if not what? Then I'll put an end to them right then and there without hesitation. Naruto finishes with determination. Yami looks into his eyes to see any doubt and simply smirks. Spoken like a true warrior, now then, it's time. Yami struggles to bring his bloody right arm up and held it out towards Naruto. He glances at the hand and back at Yami who nods in agreement and he brings his hand forward. Once he grips it, Yami's body glows wide and starts to merge with Naruto until a flash of bright light enveloped the area. Waterfall of Truth Naruto's meditative form returns to the basic transformation, resulting in the thundering sky clearing, the violent winds receding, and the ravaging ocean to come. The sun shines down on the desolated island and Naruto slowly opens his eyes. Man that was wild. He mumbled but then sweat dropped to see the condition of his surroundings before realized that Yugito and B were in the area during his fight with his darker half. Oh no I hope they're all right. With that he took off and began to search the area for his two friends, hoping that they weren't hurt too badly. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.